Welcome, everybody. My name is Jan Pomnishi, former World Chess Champion. Are starting a new course here for Chessable. A very special Chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. Namaste, welcome everybody for round six of the 44th Chess Olympiad in Chennai, India. We had quite a few interesting happenings already today and the tension is just escalating higher and higher. I'm Judith Polgar and uh, please welcome Mikhail Marin, Grandmaster, who will be with me to think and share your views about the games. Namaste, hello everybody. So actually, we have quite a few interesting things. Of course, everybody's talking about Gukesh, board number one of India, two team, the young guy who is only 16, and by five out of five, he raised to the spot in the world ranking to the 27th spot and being number one on the live rating in India, just passing with a few rating points with it, who is, of course, everybody knows that he's already in the top circuit in tournaments. And we have also another very interesting, strong player who is not that young as 16, but he's uh, 18 years old, I think. Abdus Satoru from Uzbekistan and their team, they are doing extremely well, both of them. So probably we're going to see a matchup later on in a later stage if both teams are doing so well as for now. But uh, let's see the standings, what we have after round five, because it's getting already uh, very tight. We have only two teams who have a full score, India 2 and Armenia. What do you think about the Indian team, the young team, that they are passing uh, everybody, but also India 1? Well, uh, they, are, uh, they had a remarkable performance so far, and we can see that they scored well on all boards. Actually, there was a moment when they had 100% uh, after... Uh, uh, round three. three. Round three, I believe, yes. So, um, when everybody is in good shape, uh, there was one exception, Prague uh, lost yesterday, but that was one game. So, uh, when everybody, I, I was mentioning earlier that with two players in big form, you are, uh, you, you are sure that you get a good result. When four or five players are playing like that, uh, what can you expect? Well, we'll see if they can keep the energy level of that strength. We have on number third spot tying until uh, sevens great countries like uzbekistan india united states which is always a surprise as they are so much ahead in average rating cuba is there iran so iran seems to be giving a great fight also to the to the teams right well the f their first board is uh, already known she's 2700 I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing uh, correctly, Mac, Mac should, Lou, uh, should be. So uh, I don't feel it uh, as a big surprise. And I'm sure that, okay, it's, it's the country where uh, Ali Reza comes from now, so they have potential. Uh, uh, and then we will find uh, the classical old teams who are always coming for a medal, like England, Spain. Okay, they are not uh, getting medal too often, that's true. But Holland, of course, with the leading board with Anish Giri. Israel is playing very well. France, Czech Republic, Italy. We'll see how Italy is going to be coming back. But as you see the, time, uh, the cross table, you see that who lost one match point, so who are having eight points, they're just there. And if they win another few matches, they can be definitely there for the medal. Let's see now the women's section. How is it standing over there? They have more teams, but only one more. So India is 
full score because Tanya Sachev is the leading lady there. She won the last uh, two games of hers, and uh, so they are having 10 points. Georgia, the famous Georgian team, 10 points as well, and Romania. What do you think so, about your team? Of course, I'm glad to see Romania. They, they are not among the favorites, but they played quite okay. Uh, they won against uh, two teams which were supposed to be stronger. Uh, and uh, they are there. It's up to them to to keep uh, the play, the good play going. We can see that actually Romania is a little surprised if we look at the rating average because the top two leading team is over 2400, near to 25, while Romania is only 2280. And also after that, Ukraine, of course, came here to get a medal. They are also 2478, nearly how India is. Azerbaijan is also 2400. So rating points in Olympiad, as we see, it does not matter that much because somehow it has a completely different spirit when you play as a team. We're also going to be talking about one example, which I will like to highlight on that. So maybe we can also show this example of what happened, because there was a game played between the Mongolian team and the Norway team. So I'm going to be showing an example, a chess position, which we're going to have on the board. Because uh, this match was played round four. Of course, Norway is here with the leadership of Magnus Carlsen, the world champion. And on board two, this game was played. So what happened, that in move 35, after g4, up to this point, it was more or less balanced game, but many of the parts of the game, like previously, back had, Black had a better position. So he felt that little bit he ruined the game, I believe. He went rook e5, which was a mistake, because allowed white to go with the rook all the way to this point, and now Black made a decisive mistake. I believe it was a time trouble. Doesn't matter, he played queen c7. Move 38, there was a check given by the white player, Gundava, king e7, this is move 39. I'm highlighting the number of moves because I believe it has a very big value and information to the story. So white played queen f8 check, king f6, queen h6, king e7, 40 movies completed. After that, white gave back check on f8, king f6, and white played queen h6. And what happened here in move 42 is that Tari claimed the draw for three repetition because he thought that after king e7, it's a threefold repetition. And this is the rule that before you're making the move the third time, you have to claim from the arbiter. So the arbiters came, then they went away to check it, and they came back, they approved it that it's a draw by threefold repetition. The score sheet was signed. After that, the players disappeared. Five minutes later, the white player, Gundava, came back and said, no, 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 this was not a threefold repetition. And now there is a, not a scandal about it, but it's a debate, and I see many places talking about this case. And I wanted to give my opinion on this because I believe that at this point, the arbiters made a mistake. That's clear, because it is not a threefold repetition. But then you can ask, how is it possible that Tari was claiming a threefold repetition? He's such a strong grandmaster. Did he make it on purpose? No way, he did not do it on purpose, I believe, because he had a good position all the way. He's a higher rated player by 150 points, and he thought it's a draw. Moreover, the person who was playing in the white side, he thought probably they were just repeating moves, and then he just wanted to say king e7 and it's a draw. The reason is it's not a draw because the first time when the king was on e7, the white queen was on g7, not on h6. So I believe White wanted to make a draw in this situation because if you don't want to make a draw and if you're realizing that you have a winning position or moreover just you want to consider if you have more options in this position, move 41, you sit down, you think what is really going on. Actually g5 in this position is just winning on the spot. It's not such an obvious move, but you have to consider it. But also after king, queen f8, king f6, also for example rook c8 before giving the check is a winning move. So I would say that if white really considered that he's playing for a win, 
he would consider it in move 41 or latest in move 42. So probably this is what happened, that they are simply made some moves very quickly. Tari claimed that it's a draw because he got confused. And the arbiters got completely confused and they did the wrong decision. So what do you think, Mihail, about this? What could be the emotional part of this game? Well, first of all, uh, if we talk about the position, we analyze this position briefly. And of course, uh, you, you can feel that White should win. It's uh, this uh, uh, heavy um, major piece uh, position with the blacking exposed. But uh, of course, you want to to make it uh, simple because if the king starts running to a 44, uh, then it's not so easy to calculate. So we gave the variation uh, queen h8, king g4. Now you said something about h4, but I I said okay, why not uh, king f3? We had some king f some, such a move earlier, and then uh, I convinced you that this is uh, winning because of h4 mate. Actually, this is not true. This would be a very simple win. But uh, actually, rook f5 uh, here uh, um, reaches a draw by uh, perpetual. So this we didn't notice. So it's not so easy in practical. Of course, the engine is, uh, say, plus 12. I don't know how much. Uh, doesn't matter. Plus a lot. But uh, with queens and rooks, it's not so easy to calculate, especially after the time trouble. And now um, I would mention uh, some uh, some post some unseen uh, elements. I also believe that this is such a situation in which White had just resigned himself, or maybe he was just happy that uh, he has a forced draw, he was worse earlier, and probably he wanted, when he played Queen h6, he probably wanted to, to play Queen f8, and there can be some telepathy when uh, Tari claimed a draw by repetition, he, he might have had this thought, because I, I can't testify myself about a very embarrassing situation. I was defending in a very unpleasant position about against a player rated 3 or 400 points below me. And after he made some move, I, I was 80% 80, 80 sure that I heard him whispering a draw offer. But I was not so sure and asked him, did you offer a draw? And he said no, but I was going to offer it on the next move. So somehow I, I heard something which, was, which had been almost said. So these things, of course, um, uh, can happen. You cannot prove. I, I felt very badly, but uh, actually he, he agreed to a draw. He was uh, honest. So it, there can be such uh, sort of um, hypnosis, uh, uh, I must say. So, um, but uh, you did said it uh, very simply. I mean, if the player with white signed the score sheet, um, then the rest is history. Okay, Tari made a mistake of, um, okay, he didn't count well. The opponent, uh, we don't know what he thought, but he signed the score sheet. Uh, that's all. Uh, you cannot change it. Well, of course, this is the story of what I wanted to only share because you have to understand that it is very stressful with a lot of emotions also in the playing hall around the game. And it happens that simply what you want to believe, you also act that way. So this was the reason why Tari said, and the opponent probably just was ready to make a perpetual check. But let's see, round six has just started. Great matches out there. We have the matchup between India, Armenia, Uzbekistan, India. Well, India two on board one because they are doing so well. Uzbekistan, India on the second. USA, Iran, we have on board three. We have Cuba, yeah, we, you see it also on the screen, the Armenian team, then we have Uzbekistan, India, Abdus Satarov is playing against Hare Krishna, extremely tough game, USA, Iran, which is also going to be a great clash, and let's see how Fabiano is going to be able to win his first game, will he be able to do that? Cuba, Spain, this is also a great clash, Shirov is playing his uh, six game, I believe. Poland against Serbia. On board six, we have the Netherlands against Georgia. Also, very tough game. Giri against Jobava. For sure, we're going Fantastic to see some game. entertaining me. game over there. Uh, Matchup seven: Germany, Italy. Italy is back there on the sevens board. And uh, well, Vocaturo is not playing today. It seems. Game uh, match eight, England is playing against Austria. England is always there. David Havel is playing the tournament of his life. I think he dropped only half a point. He has uh, four and a half out of five. 
And then uh, board number nine, Switzerland plays against France, so they are back there with eight match points. So just to clarify how the match points are going, two points is received for a team for winning the match. If they draw the match 2-2, two -two, it's only one point. And if someone losing, they don't progress on the cross table. So let's see the women's section, how it's Just to there. confirm, Howell had won his first four games and drew yesterday. So you're right. Let's see the women's section. India plays against Georgia on board one. Konaru Hampi is on board one and Tanya, of course, playing on board four. She seems to be the key person for the moment, but it's a team competition so they can help her out. And the important thing is just win one more game than the opponent and then you win the match. Actually, match Tanya, Tanya was the only one who won. She, her score is uh, fantastic. She only dropped one half a point after five games. But in the last two, two rounds, it was essential because her wins won the match. India, Georgia, then we have on board two, Romania, Ukraine. Tough, tough opponents for Romania, what can I say? Very tough match, but of course, if you want to be there in the front, you have to cross all the, the big... Sky, the sky is the limit, if you... Exactly. So, Muzicuk's sisters are playing there, board three. We have Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Abdul Malik is playing, leading the... Uh, team of Kazakhstan, very tough match also. Let's see the next two matches. What is up there? Serbia against Poland. Poland was uh, unfortunate yesterday. It seemed they could not win. Actually, they, no, lost. they, they lost to Romania. They lost to Romania. And uh, board number five, Netherlands, France. Okay, so let's see the matchups between the players because I have it on the board. Let's uh, get our board out and see. Just the first few moves are out there yet. So this is Gukesh Sargisyan. Sargisyan is not playing so huge uh, number of points. He doesn't. He made, have. Only, he made only draws, but okay on the first on the top first, board. First board is something special, but, right? But still, it's it's interesting. We have these two players, uh, uh, Abdul Satorov and and Gukesh, who on the first board, they have the best results of the team five out of five, and of the Olympiad. There is uh, one more player with 50% uh, on the first board uh, from Monaco, uh, Bagheri, with four out of four. But of course, he had some different uh, op Level opponents. Of yes, yes, yes. But just, just, to, just to show that, I mean, uh, some two of the leading teams, they, they, uh, the leaders made five out of five. It's, it's no joke. Uh, Absolutely, and the uh, India two team definitely can improve on Prague's uh, results and play because so far it seems that uh, Pragnananda is not finding his form yet, so that is uh, still to be seen. So on board one we have uh, Gukes Sargisyan, then on board two we have uh, Malkomian against uh, Nihal Sarin. Board three we have already a Nimzo in the end with Naji two. Adiban playing against Tershahakian and board four we have already some interesting position strangely oh, very it, strange kind of <laughs> idea was played against Hofha Queen D2 I never saw this move because of course the classical is to exchange the queen on the H, right yes. in this uh, Berlin Okay they also defense. tried queen queen e2 sometimes but then knight d4 I mean uh, queen e2 trying to keep the black queen uh, passive because uh, it doesn't seem to have good squares But it's a very strange decision but, but queen, queen d2 But queen d2 I, I don't know queen because d2 Because even I think black could play king queen just, d2 just which means this. that after this black could even castle in this game, which is not very common in this yes, Berlin. But, but then he would have to deal with a very important problem. What to do with those uh, two extra tempis or uh, four? Maybe he would get into Tsungzwang, I don't know. For me it was joke, very unex unexpected, but Queen D5 also seems to be a pretty nice move because after White took yes. Queen D5, which C is, takes D5. Which is the problem for, no, for Black. No, actually, there is a mistake. I'm sorry. It, it must have been a mistake, no? no? because it's Queen... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, <laughs> it must have been a mistake. There is something Queen D2 happening. doesn't exist. No, actually, Queen D8, King D8 is on the board. I didn't want to players. say anything, but uh, it looked... Yeah, uh, I, I got also <laughs> somehow very suspicious. And really, this is what's going on? Okay, so this is the match between India to 
and Armenia, very tough clash. Then we have the next match is Uzbekistan, India 1. We have the, the Italian system, Bishop C5, Hare Krishna is playing this all the time. He's a very big E5 player. And Abdul Sattar of Nodirbek, can he win again and lead the team to a victory and stay up there? They have a very strong and very good grandmaster as a captain and coach is Ivan Sokolov, who was before the coach of the Iranian team for, and the youngsters for quite some years. And now they have him as a trainer. And it seems so far so good. On board two, we see Vidit playing with the white pieces against Yakuboyev. It's uh, King's Indian, Bishop G4. Then we have on the third board, is only one move was made, Shindarov against Erigaisi. And then we have on board four, Bishop A4. Bishop A4. Did you see this move ever? Mm. Not without a6 or... Well, a probably a6 will happen and the c3, oh. bishop c2, right? This is no, but okay, black, option, black unless but, uh, knight f6. Why not knight f6? Which is actually on the board, so it, black does not want to allow white to have enough time to regroup his bishop to c2. Then we have on match three, we have already very sharp things happening on USA against Iran on board one. It's a sharp knight of Sicilian... Fabiano playing with the white pieces, Max Lu with black pieces on board one. He's a strong player, and uh, let's see what is going to be in this battle, because it's an opening challenge as well already. This used to play with both colors, no? That's almost everybody in the... Yeah, I was playing in, with in both elite, colors, no? but I still rather uh, played it more with the white side of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there were some period of time when it was a huge uh, fashion about this uh, line. Whoever played Nidorf, of course, we were playing. This G takes F6 on the board. So, of course, Fabiano is one of the best prepared grandmaster in the world. He played the World Championship match in 2018 against Magnus. And anyway, he's there already for uh, more than a decade on the top and uh, his preparation is really amazing let's see what he is going to be showing us in his preparation talking about the english attack bishop e3 it is called right is because somewhere in the mid 80s uh, john nan uh, nigel short uh, some other uh, english players started playing it it was not so analyzed i mean all these things bishop e3 was known but not f3 and g4 uh, and uh, uh, now, of course, it's almost the main line. And I read a comment by a Short. Uh, he plays something like Queen F3 in the Nidorf on move 6. And he said, Some time ago, I used to play Bishop E3 to avoid theory. So that was quite an ironic comment. Yes. Now, now this is almost the main line. Well, it's, a, it's always a question on the high level how to choose an opening where you can make your own preparation and plan something while still you don't want to end up in the opening preparation of your opponent and you want to give surprises also. Yes. So white played knight a5, the plan is to go knight c6 eventually and capture the bishop on e7 which makes the d6 pawn a little bit weak. But I'm sure sooner or later we're going to see also rook on g1. Rook c8. Maybe we can check whether... There, uh, uh, I have here three games in the database but the ratings are not... Okay, there is Andreev against the Polster, Andreev 2400. It was played in May uh, 2020. So three games played in um, this year with uh, this position. Let me check if Knight A5 was something. It seems no. like the players know it very well, as Fabiano has more time than he started. He has one hour and 35 minutes on the clock. The players get 90 minutes on the clock at the start of the game, both of them 90-90 minutes, and after move 40 they receive another extra 30 minutes, while after every move from move 1 they receive 30 seconds per move. Knight c6 is on the board, so Fabiano is going after the e7 bishop. Apparently g5 is not as popular as uh, queen f2 earlier when, when white provoked all these uh, exchanges. We have queen e8, knight e7, 
So it's uh, an original position, no? Mm. Seven. Both sides have some reasons to be happy. I mean, Black uh, has got rid of his uh, bad bishop, let's call it. He has a compact structure. Uh, he has some open files uh, on the queen side. But okay, without the dark squared bishop, he also may have problems on g7, for instance. Sometimes rook, g, rook g1, rook takes g7 may just uh, win somehow. Because the knight on f6 uh, does not, if the queen moves away, for instance, or... Um, so, well, uh, I think that's still far away, but at some uh, point it is he, possible. He has, I mean, he has the, to, the rook has to be on g1, right? Yeah, I mean, okay, for instance, if rook g1, uh, okay, white moves, then he plays rook g1, the black queens goes away, then then uh, rook takes g7 is already an issue. No, I mean, okay, but uh, in principle he has some vulnerability, uh, vulnerability on the uh, king side. Queen a5. I thought white is going to play somehow queen a3 looks, looks more natural, yes. to stop d5. But because this is, a, I think, the main question, whether will black be able to play d5 at some point or he stopped? Because if black cannot go d5, then positionally also he may He may go uh, worse, a little bit worse. Well, uh, the problem is that uh, after d5, uh, if they exchange some pieces, in the end game, the white uh, majority could be very dangerous. I mean, Absolutely. it would be it would be two connected past ones uh, always. With the pawn on d6, still it's less uh, less obvious. We have rook c6, rook g1 on the board. Of course, the ha the rook has to be on g1 because it belongs there. If you don't have a g pawn already, that has to be there, being ready for playing bishop h6, for example. But I think it's pretty obvious that black is going to bring his rook and double it on the c file. And then maybe, I don't know, but rook, rook g2 allows bishop h3, no? <coughs> I wouldn't use my rook for defending uh, I there. Understand. Either rook d2 or bishop d3, but also maybe white can consider to give up the pawn on c2, I think, and play king b1. But if black takes, so do you want to go bishop if takes black a6? If takes, then bishop takes a6, exactly. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, if white would be able to exchange all the rooks, then it's practically well, winning. Yeah, the end game would be very dangerous for black. I the mean, two pass pawns? Yeah, sustained by two bishops. Mm. So let's see if uh, and black, black should lose still in his preparation and going to be fast, or it's about time to start thinking. Black, black does, uh, even after d5, black will not have uh, obvious candidates to promotion. So... Uh, and games can be very one-sided. Well, if something black has to avoid, it's end games, right? But for yes. example, he might be playing queen b7. Yeah, just to, to, use to, the files, to use the files for... And then uh, let's see and wait whether the rook will be best on c8 or on b8. At the same time, also defending the a6. Mm -hmm. And let's say after bishop h6, uh, black can go maybe knight h5. Knight h5. And nothing happens, but rook g5, no? If g6, I, um, he, clear, might, he might so take, no? Maybe I would go this first, rook c8, uh -huh. because now there is this Set of action. Yes. And let's say after bishop d3, for maybe knight f4 is possible. I'm not sure about this. But maybe, okay, maybe then rook d2 prevents that, no? Of course, this is also very... Um, Maybe c3 here, Sorry. but I don't know. It is complicated, but it seems like it's the first moment when black starts thinking after rook g1. I wonder for how long more moves Fabiano has his preparation. Okay, let's go on to the other game. This is definitely a game where we will come back, but there are fun games going on also between Tabata Bay against Aronyan on board two. The pawn is already standing on, on h6. h6. How did this happen? Let's see what happened here. It was an English. g6, h4. Nowadays, moves h4, g4 happens practically in every game. This is, if you don't play g4, h4 in a game, you're not uh, up to date with the uh, Yes, but H H4 is typical, um, okay, since yes. against the Grunfeld. Yeah, setups, this uh, is uh, not an something... Anti-Grunfeld, anti let's say. So original. G4, right? of course, is more uh, specific, but H4 against G6? Uh, no, but I, uh, what is a bit more surprising than that, okay, H5 is natural, I think he played. Uh, 
Bishop f5. And now h6 is uh, the remarkable move. I mean, I know that uh, sometimes uh, in my anti Grunfeld lines uh, I played h6. I analyzed h6 a long time ago. But it was um, mainly, for instance, if I had the pawns on d4 and d5, and if h6 uh, forced the bishop to go to h8 and stay there forever, or to go to f8 and release the, uh, the pressure against the center. But here, uh, h6, f6, um, of course, uh, it is a bit speculative. I mean, White hopes to get some, some quick some quick uh, benefit from it. Let's see what he has in knight mind. A, ah, okay. Castle, castle, and knight h2. Still not obvious because, okay, if the knight will eventually land on g4, which is not simple to well, see. Well, okay, for the moment, e6 is not possible yes. because no, of g4. No. Okay, right? okay, yes, yes. And so after knight h2, e6 is not possible. Black has to do something to move away to c7 or maybe to b4. Let's say. But I, I want to understand why is h6 so good well, in, the, in this whole plan. Probably wanted to be forcing the black bishop to f6, maybe knight e4, for example. Yeah, to expose it a bit. Uh -huh. Okay, because c5 is hanging. Okay, now it makes sense. Uh, Though I don't know if after knight b4 maybe a3 is possible and after knight c2 e4. Mm -hmm. But okay, knight c7 is the more... Uh, the more uh, Natural uh, okay, reaction. Now, this is how they. Uh, well, I guess knight c7. It's about time to develop properly, right? But you don't want to go knight e4, no. Knight e4 is this, possible. This would. Mm, okay, he can also keep it in reserve because it's not clear how. Uh, this is hanging. I don't know if black, if white wants to capture on f6. Well, Let's say if black goes c4. Mm -hmm. Then take and f6, and, and b3 maybe, no? b3, queen, d4 is not so dangerous, bishop a3. Well, this game is going to be some fun, mm -hmm. I have the feeling. Knight h, after knight h2, black is hesitating. Probably you're, you're right. The idea is, uh, okay, knight h2, just clear the long diagonal, and um, uh, now the thread knight e4 is... Uh, Yes, after knight c7, even d3 is good, because I don't see how uh, black would be in time to 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 arrange b6 and uh, or bishop. Well, I guess uh, queen d7, but, but knight e4 now. Knight e4 now. Yes, this is what I mean. Uh, even our move uh, or later, uh, and I mean if if um, black takes on e4, which looks like a reasonable answer, then uh, it's better to have d3 on board to have some development. Because of course it's nice to have that bishop, but um, you also have to to think of developing the queen side. Rook b1 b or bishop Let's b3. Let's see what's on board three. Vasily so is playing with the white pieces. It was a Karokan and white Some. played bishop d3. Somehow okay. people this we had the invocator are solid. Invocator Magnus. Uh, Magnus, yes. But something. Okay, knight f6, bishop g4, which Magnus didn't do. Yes, Magnus played e6 in this position. With, with the knight on c6, yeah, well, he, his knight on c6, the, the knight went yes. the, other, the other way, yes. But uh, he immediately closed. Uh, okay, bishop so bishop g4, g4, knight e2, and he took probably. Bishop, no. uh -huh. queen, queen b3, b3, queen c7. And now I saw white bishop on e2, probably knight e2, bishop knight e2. Knight e2, was he played, played no. and black captured, takes e6, which is a very healthy setup for black. Comes bishop to d6, knight to c6, castles. And then maybe rook b8, b5, b4, the minority yes. attack. Of course, um, uh, this looks like, uh, like a reversed uh, Queen's Gambit exchange variation, where white plays c takes d5, he takes d5. We have the same structure with uh, reversed colors. Uh, white's def development is a bit better here, but um, maybe doesn't change that much. I mean, he has two bishops, uh, he has this plan of knight e2, knight f3, knight e5, but black is also quite solid. I mean, okay, in the Karokan, if you exchange the c8 bishop for a knight uh, and then place your pawns on light squares, you are uh, thinking that things are fine. Can white play bishop f4? I don't think so, but just Take. takes queen b7. 
1977 or uh, 1940? No, I don't know because after that I think Castle is possible. Okay, so we Sivan have, we have to attempt, yes, I know, but you have to attempt to, why to take at once on eight. Maybe it's not possible, no? Unfortunately, that's not possible. Because this is a principal question, right? If bishop f4 is possible or not. Well, queen c8 uh, can stay away of, uh, from troubles. But... Um, of course, it's possible that white is, black is moving away, yes, but yes, that's yes, already yes. something that white gains something because black will not uh, be able yes, to put no the bishop, bishop on d6. Six. Yes, of course. So I believe this should be somehow yes, yes. good for black. I, I couldn't agree more. Queen b7. Um, Maybe knight g4. If knight g4, bishop takes, takes g4. And takes. Takes and castle. But no, no castle, now I'm really losing. I'm sorry? Uh, now I'm really lost with, with black, no? Okay, I did it very well. Yes. So after queen b7... I don't know if we had any games on this position. Maybe. So let, let me check. Uh, this is... Um, we can check with so. c th this c3. Okay. Bishop f4. I have a feeling that black has something in the storage. Let's see if, if we have something in the storage here. Bishop f4 was played. Let's see. Bishop f4. Queen what? takes queen takes f4. Okay, queen b7. Queen takes b7. Okay. Queen c1 check. Bishop d1. Bishop d1. We don't have to ask. And now uh, there was a game bishop d6 or knight fd7. And after knight fd7, the problem is if castle then knight b6 is the plan. No, black, it cannot be. Black, after castle? Uh, black won both uh, games. So uh, after knight fd7, Knight fd7, yes, white castled. I think bishop d6 is possible. Bishop d6, maybe transposes, no? And simply after queen a8, queen b2, G I believe. g3, yes, uh, that can be a problem, no? g3 okay. was played. Doesn't seem so serious, but... Well, g3, uh, I guess black just castles. h5. h5. Okay, if if uh, queen takes a8 is not such a big threat. Um, but yeah, okay, but white can take the other rook, but it also seems to be not helping white mm -hmm. because queen b2 and the a1 rook. But what, what if now bishop f3 or something? When? Actually, this seems to be completely winning. No, uh, after h5, bishop a4 for no, not not to take with the queen on b7, not to take. Uh, I mean, just bishop a4 or something. I mean, just. Uh, Back and just capture it, right? Or bishop because d7. Because yeah, maybe like that. No, these are just uh, uh, low-rated players who played this uh, thing. Okay, so I think this must be the situation that this is why Wesley is thinking for the moment, because but he is apparently bishop d d6 is stronger. Okay, because if you castle, then even bishop takes h2 may be possible, but okay, castling. Uh, instead of knight fd7, so take on f4, take on f4, queen b7, check, and bishop d6. Now if castling... Castle, bishop h2. Yes, uh, if, if castling, uh, no, uh, black can also castle. But, and now if g3, let's see that, because it threatens to move away with the bishop. Yeah, but knight d7. The knight b, okay, the, the knight b7, okay. Bishop a4, queen goes back. Ah, so he has to castle, no, knight fd7 wastes a tempo. That's, yes. No, bishop takes h2 was also possible, but uh, he can just castle okay, and this I is better. I believe that white is considering bishop f4 right now, and he will not play bishop f4. He will just kind of play probably knight d2, knight f3. At the same time, I have the feeling that it can be a very easy play for black also. 
After no. let's say knight d2, black goes bishop yes. d6, knight f3. knight f3, black can castle, play knight e4 next, play Yes, because d6. if you play bishop g5 to play bishop h4 and then bishop g3, then knight e4 is uh, quite uh, satisfactory, no? I played actually for, the, for uh, bishop d3 myself, but I was never too happy. Because it is a very, very slow game, and and, and you, you don't feel where you're going to have the initiative. You know what? Uh, I can get a similar position if you go a few moves back. Um, uh, instead of bishop d3. Just go before bishop d3. Yes, I, I can get it uh, via the move order d4, knight f6, knight f3, c5, e3 and c, d, e, d, d5. So now I would go knight f3 here. But it's not considered good because uh, of bishop g4. Yes, I know, but then, then I can play like, you know, there is this variation, uh, the, the Vienna for black. It's an extra tempo, knight bd2. If knight c6, bishop b5 and c4. This is, uh, okay, if so, then check. If knight c6, then c4. c4. Really? And, and it's an extra tempo for, uh, for white in this... Uh, you know the the structure. Queen a4. I always had, of course, my knight on c3. I understand, but it's. Um, I it's, understand. It's with, with, with knight f3 and knight bd2, you are getting ready to play a reversed queen's gambit, some some system. And if allowed, you go bishop b5. And the next tempo here can be because okay, the, this Vienna variation uh, is quite sharp. Actually, black uh, black sometimes plays c4, and then white tries to play f3 and d4. But but Wesley had no yes. any idea of this kind. <laughs> he wanted to go the classical because most of the time the players play bishop d3 in yes, this no, line. I can understand that, but I just mentioned it that it has some consistency, uh, this knight f3 and the knight b2. We have some players, have some extra food, having extra energy in the right moment that they take a little bite. Interesting that uh, Wesley is spending quite some time in this position, how to continue. Let's go on to move forward, four, where Danashwar plays with the white color, and Dominguez, who is the best scorer for now in the US. Yesterday, he won and uh, against Max Maxim Rochstein, and with this, they won the match. So that was a very important game, what they had. And uh, Dominguez, I think he dropped only half a point. He has three and a half out of four games. After bishop f5, here he's playing with the black pieces. Very healthy position for black, right? It is after yes. bishop f5. <coughs> white, uh, I don't know, knight e2 or knight f3 he's up to. But Dominguez is also an extremely well prepared. Yeah, well, it's this player. kind of... Queen b4. Aha, uh -huh, so she wants, because if uh, black takes, he's not in time uh, to stop the people. Well, the little pawn wants to be pushed to b5, I believe. Yes, yes. Did we uh, have any game on queen b4? It looks like such a strange idea, interesting, but uh, unusual idea. May maybe queen b6 now? Um, there are not many games here, but none of them. Uh, it was rook c1, knight e2, knight f3. Yeah, because queen b4 looks a very unusual idea. I, I'm not even sure if it's really so good for white. Maybe queen b6, no? I would just uh, like you, to you talk to and take? see a little bit about this pawn structure, because uh, I've never seen uh, that... Uh, well, actually, it's not true. Of course, from b3 exchange and then b4 is possible. But still, in this structure, this way to play queen b4, it is something very new to me. So if black, uh, black has not enough time, you say, what happens after c6? b5, right? She can even wait one move, because a6 doesn't stop the pawn. I mean, can, can go possible, knight maybe after a takes b4, I go knight d7. Well, probably b5, no. Or knight f3, I would develop first, no. Mm, why hurry? After knight f3... A 
it's a question how how good is it with white i mean is it really anything let's say c6 maybe king e7 no mm -hmm. i don't know whether c6 first or king e7 i just want to go with rook here and then later on you may go c5 at once if i go if b5 if go, c5 if you, was yes, my plan if you go rook f8 so my development is not so good no If b5, let's say... Maybe I shouldn't hurry. No, but uh, why not first rook fc8? Ah, but even c5 at once. Mm. It's just it as an option. Though, I don't know, after d c5 it's possible to take and play knight d4. Knight d4 and uh, at least white... Uh, and little pressure. Think. Yeah, that's a bit annoying, no? White has to go f3, king d2, bishop e2. Yeah, White will be improving his position. So this a7 pawn can be a little uh, trouble. I mean, I see that this queen before uh, makes sense. Um, interesting idea. Very interesting idea. What happens if Black goes knight c6, let's say? Okay, I would take on d6. I don't want to take d6, the pawn. he takes d6. And... Well, king d2 or... Uh, no, king d2 runs into knight, knight a5. Knight a5 can be... Mm -hmm. Okay, problem. so this this can be tricky, you know? How do I develop? Well, maybe white can go b4, I don't know, but... Uh, <sighs> probably okay. I would want to go rook c8 and somehow be quick on the c5. Also, I considered maybe not knight c6, but to go knight, B d knight d7. And uh, another question, what is this? If Take I take and then I go king, but you are still quick, no? Well, still rook c8, I believe, and king yes. e7. Bishop d3, I have to go. Okay, takes, takes. Takes. My question is whether how bad are these pawns? Oh, Probably okay, after knight e2, not so good, yeah? Well, okay, but here you doom yourself to, to a position where you it's either hold or not, yes. Yeah. Knight okay. c6 was more. Uh, so, what uh, about after queen b4? You said queen b6, which is very sensible. At the same time, I will you, not you be able castle. to castle. Yeah, that's a problem. So, let's say white goes continue knight f3. Mm, knight c6, maybe. Queen c3 back. So, you tricked me a bit, no? Because my mm. pieces. Yeah, and the queen is suddenly is out of play on b6. <laughs> and the queen has already moved twice and uh, still needs uh, it looks kind of strange this queen on b6 yeah mm -hmm. okay queen b4 let uh, lenier think in this position how is he going to be reacting but i think queen b4 is an interesting move no yeah it's definitely it's a it's a challenging uh, move and uh, white is playing for a little little very little uh, just to press if black takes on. Because with queens on, on board, the queen on d6 stands very well. It keeps the whole position and the bishop already reached f5, which in the exchange uh, systems uh, is quite important. Sometimes the bishop is passive on c8 for a long time. The most advanced square it can get is e6, which uh, is not a bad square, but it's not f5. For instance, yeah. from f5 it prevents rook b1 before b5. A minority is attacked, for instance. Uh, so, um, with the queens on board, I don't feel that black has uh, big problems. But queen b4, of course, can induce some, um, some issues. Actually, I like your knight c6. I think we should go on for other games, yes. because we'll see what he's going to be up to. We see here Alexei playing with the black pieces, Spain against Cuba. So, after bishop d3, look what we have here, another... Italian c3, knight f6, d4, takes, takes, oops, e5, d5. Yes, this, um, yeah, this is, is this fashionable nowadays because, okay, what can I do in the Spanish opening? Queen c2, bishop g6, queen b3. Quesada is very much in the book because he has more time. He practically was not spending uh, time. And uh, Alexei Shirov has already spent uh, nearly 30 minutes up to this point. Well, these positions are quite uh, quite consistent. White has this uh, space advantage, but of course, like in the, the open Spanish, 
The Black Knight is only four. And now, okay, uh, Black has to, to find a way to, to get counterplay because otherwise uh, the space advantage may count in the long term. I mean, it looks nice, nice for Black now, but it has to look nice in 10 minutes too, in 10 uh, moves uh, uh, too. So um, I'm pretty sure it should be still theory, don't you think Yes, so? I think so. I don't think it's the, the absolute main line. There, who, who went uh, differently? Because many times bishop c6, b takes c6 is taken. So I'm not sure about bishop g6. Uh, no, bishop g6 is... is uh, On queen c2, uh, bishop g6, and queen b3. It's actually one of the... Okay. So he, here, let me check. Queen b3, knight e7. Castle. Okay, let me c6, bishop d3. Yes, that seems very comfortable. He's very much in his preparation, I believe. That's why he's so happy. I'm sure that there are games here, but for some reason so these uh, three shows me... I don't know that f5 is possible. F5 is a, but, uh, is a permanent thing, but okay, with the knight away from c6, uh, the question is what about if e takes f6? E takes f6, knight, knight takes f6, because now immediately there is an exchange uh -huh. offer. And you also hope to control e5? Yes, and after bishop g6, knight g6, and black seems to have nice knights mm -hmm. over there, controlling yeah. the e5 square. Yeah, the knight may later go to f4 somehow, knight h5, knight f4, knight e4, later, knight knight f4, f4 and knight, f4, yes. knight h5, knight f4, also bishop c7 is ready to get into attack. Yes, okay, maybe the... So after f5 probably. If uh, if white doesn't take, then uh, he has to, to come but up with something. There, maybe there, what about takes, takes and knight g5, threatening knight e6. Okay, so we have and to go quick, uh, and, and to take a pawn on e4. And also knight e4 is a threat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, that can be a problem. Maybe this can cause trouble for mm -hmm. black. No, this looks bad. Well, there is bishop f7, no? The only defense, I think. Well, after bishop f7, maybe... Well, I know, f3, it looks... Uh, knight f5. f3, knight f5 would be the move. Yes. Yeah, this seems to be okay. I see that Yasser was awarded the FIDE Grandmaster Norm in 2017. So F5 is something, of course, in such a position you consider. What else black can do in this position? One of the questions is what about knight D2? This can be considered definitely. Knight D2, knight D2 yes, I think D2. Th there are actually, but maybe knight, maybe knight D2, no? And uh, why is it going to be better? Takes takes. Rook E1, I think. Yes, I think there, there are some. Bishop can be in trouble. Yes, yes, there are some games. There is some knight takes D5 uh, sometimes. Uh, yeah, and actually the, the pawns uh, can be ready to advance, you know, f4 maybe, no. Yeah, bishop goes back to e6 and But the, blo the blockade is, um, yeah, maybe f5 then, no? f5 should be the next move of black. Maybe knight f3, no? Knight f3, so yes. Uh, yes, because if f5, then there can be some micro problems, some combination of knight a4 and knight g5. I mean, it looks it looks very solid for black, but um, the knight is not on e6, which is the perfect uh, blocking square for the knight. The bishop on b6 um, is not playing for anything. Okay, it attacks d4, but that's not such a big problem. Uh, and it also it's also hanging a bit. So um, when white plays this, then uh, he has to be specul speculative a bit. Uh, because he doesn't have anything that uh, uh, 
outstanding in the position. But uh, uh, and we have knight d2 knight on two, the yes. board. Okay. Knight takes d2, bishop d3. And I think that rook e1 is. Uh, yeah, that's the most logical. Is the move. move. And it is on the board. Because they also played rook fd1, and I remember that rook fd1, uh, there is something with bishop e2 sometimes. Mm -hmm. Some intermediate but rook move. on e1 looks yes, much yes. better. Uh, and, for and if anything, rook ad1, yes. Yes. Yes, so. Um, yeah. So the question is whether white will be able to go f4 and g4 and take the initiative, but of course... Because these pawns are not so easy to... to I mean, okay, you can go h5 after yes. f4, h5, but you don't stop them forever. And you have to be there. It's, it's uh, a long uh, game. Yes, yes, yes. Let's see board two, how Anton is doing. What was that? Some sort of queen's gambit accepted or...? Um? Uh, no, it was the... Ragozin with bishop b4, mm -hmm. knight c6, e3, mm -hmm. castle, queen c2. I was playing this some time ago. Is rook e8 a, some sort of uh, rare move? After queen c2? Yeah, usually bishop c3 is taken, right? Um, At some point, especially when white is playing. No, or d takes c4 and the bishop can go to d6 to prepare yeah, e5. Yeah, that, that's how I play. Uh, Okay, rook e8 is an idea which is typical um, in the long um, variations of the queen's gambit. With knight bd7, bishop g5, knight b7, c6, and rook e8 is somehow useful for many things. Okay, it's, uh, but it's known for more than 100 years, uh, but here rook e8... Um, well, it's preparing against uh, c takes d5, but why does not want to play c takes d5? And it also prepares bishop f8. And of course, this we'll, is the next move. We'll, we'll see how good it is because uh, now black doesn't play e5 quickly, probably. Or maybe he does. White so. played bishop e2, d takes c4, bishop c4, and, and he anyway. went completely different. He went knight b4 fast and c5. Uh huh. So, this classical kind of pawn structure. Mm -hmm. Which is symmetrical, but of course can um, lead to. To some interesting things. Okay, this is going to be an interesting game. Board three. Wow. Wow, what is happening over here? There was a peace sacrifice. So let's see what is this, because this seems to be... Quesada played something uh -huh. interesting. Knight f3, English, e6, d3, knight g7, h4, h6, h5, knight g5. Took. Yes, uh, there has been some game, I don't know, but Mamejaro or Ivan Chuk, I don't remember, uh, played something similar. I don't think that in this position. And Can I believe this it was, be good? It was rapid or something. Well, of course... Uh, Let's I, see on this I, what games do we have, because I'm very curious that uh, were there any serious top players I uh, I have this, uh, this uh, in repertoire with White, but I never took this seriously. Uh, the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I never considered it to be serious. Well, it looks very strange because it seems like Black did not make such a huge mistake that this would be the realistic punishment already at such an early stage of the game. Apparently there were a few games. So Bishop Well, G5 we hardly can make moves which was never played. Yes. <laughs> so it's logical. The question is only that how seriously is it taken, this sacrifice? So Pavlovich uh, played with White Torfinson and the slightly lower rated Schreiner. I have so how was it? Here. F6, H6? Now they tried all kind of moves. Uh, uh, F6, uh, Queen A5 and F5. F6 seems to be the most popular. Yeah, most natural reaction. F6, bishop f4 or bishop e3 they played. H6. May, is, is h6 uh, a new move? It seems that h6 is a new move. So h6 takes on g5, takes on h g7, takes, takes, king f7, white went e3, opening up the diagonal for the queen. Very natural continuation. And after e3, queen h5, d5. So let's see what is really this position. d5, he but okay, g5? now he, he can take, no? 
If he was, he can't have three poles for... Um... I don't know if black wants to go knight g6, let's say, but isn't it too many pawns for Yes, yeah, it's, it's three already and uh, the structure looks nice. Okay. Mm. No, generally speaking... Uh, it looks nice for white, it, isn't no, it? No, no, this is already okay. This is already something. Okay, so after queen g5, what else can white, uh, black have in mind? Did, but did, no did he take on g5 already? No, d5 was played. Mm. I'm just asking whether after queen g5... No, the question what is whether, else? whether we want to take. Because maybe we can also castle. After d5, to go castle. I mean, if we don't want to exchange queens. Because black uh, has some problems of uh, developing, no? Bishop d7, maybe. Bishop d7, then also already c takes d5. Maybe we this can, is an we can take already, also. no? No, this is what I mean. I mean, I ha still have moves. I have uh, bishop. Okay, after c takes d5, takes. And if, let's say, you take this, then I bishop think, e8, uh, no? Bishop, uh, bishop e8. Bishop e8 also. I wanted because, queen f6. Uh -huh. On bishop e8, queen f3. And now queen f6, right? Yeah, and uh, okay, it's uh, just two pawns. So, no, yeah, no. Now, now it seems like it's okay. So after bishop d7, white should look for something else. Because if uh, bishop uh, g2, I think then black is... Uh, black should be quite okay. Maybe bishop e8. And takes and knight g6. And it's already different to exchange now on d8. Because rook is going. No, to no, no. This is uh, so black no. Is kind this of looks pretty active already. He, he improved his position. Okay, if I may suggest, uh, just as I saw the corner of my eye, Bishop D7, is Bishop E4 really possible here? Bishop Like E4? in Fisher. Uh, Very nice, but what but, is oh, the but, uh, <laughs> That is my question. Okay, ah, queen, one? But Queen. Uh -huh. Ah, no, Queen doesn't work. Okay. Aha, but so I think uh, queen g8 maybe. Queen g8. And should I go knight e4 first? Knight e4. How um, awful is this? If king f8, knight, this, knight f6 is unpleasant. Yeah, yeah this, this there, there are some things. After rook h1. Interesting. Actually, they reach this. The, the line goes uh, this way. Bishop e4. He wants to go queen g8 first, but he transposes. Uh, so now queen g8, knight e4, and knight g6. Uh, okay, the online engine claims uh, this is a little bit better for white. Queen wow. h6, king f7. Ah, he retrieves the bishop and keeps uh, some queen h7. Well, it's. Uh, it's better. He'll probably get three pawns now. Ah, so the suggestion uh, is castle? Yeah. Uh, Queen, takes, Queen takes g5 and castle are... are uh, Similar. Are, uh, okay, very slightly better for, um, for white. No, but I was curious about the castle because uh, uh, this bishop e4... Uh, no, first castle I suggested, but then I saw bishop e7, bishop e4, and I said, okay. Uh, Well, if you haven't analyzed the position, then of course queen takes g5 is um, well, it's simple, no? White is not worse. Uh, yeah, but I think it's a matter of style also. I mean, when I was a teenager, I'm pretty sure I would most likely go for long castle and bishop e4. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The question is, what is his concept, right? Yes. If he started out already this peace sacrifice, he has his queen on h5, and uh, probably sh he should have uh, checked this, to be honest, because it, is, it came out very forced. I mean, after f6, h6, takes, 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 king f7, most natural, e3, king captures the pawn, queen h5, d5, so... But you know how preparation nowadays uh, goes? So we we have so many lines, tak, 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 and we reach this position and say, ah, okay, the computer says queen g5 is interesting, also long castle and bishop e4. Maybe. Ma maybe you didn't repeat the variations before the game, because, okay, who 
could say that uh, the opponent, uh, you know, nowadays you you don't get uh, you don't get this so easily. And then you reach this position, and you know that uh, we analyze that both queen g5 and uh, long castle are good. But then uh, you don't remember exactly why. And I mean, queen g5 is obvious why. Okay. And it's also possible that uh, he just thought, okay, queen g5 is this little more pleasant end game, but long castle is interesting. And then I will decide it at the board because I and cannot be so lucky that I will have this board, on the board. You are angry at yourself that you didn't decide it uh, at home. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Okay, we'll see how he's going to be continuing. But the game is interesting anyway. The game is definitely yes. very interesting. And on board four, this is the position we have hmm. between Spain and Cuba. So it was some modern defense, no? It was uh, g6, c4, e4, well, e5. Is yes, the modern knight f3 or what did he play? d5. Ah, d5, a5 is also my favorite. Bishop e2 first, h5. Mm -hmm. But here also white is very straightforward, going c5. Yeah, I think that uh, black should have played uh, knight d7. Instead of bishop h6. Maybe even instead of uh, h5, but okay, yes. Well, it looks uh, very uh, suspicious at first for me to play. h5 is quite okay, playing a5 and bishop h6. c5 is possible at, at right yes, now, because yes. the e5 pawn is uh, left yes, yes. unguarded, only the... The pawn is defending on it. It's yes, yes, fine. it's a bit uh, too much. No, okay, knight a6 uh, may also be possible instead of bishop a6. Of course, there is the the question whether um, black has compensation after. Okay, knight a6 is more flexible. Queen a4 check, bishop d7, queen uh, takes uh, a5, and maybe now knight c5, queen b4, and f5. But probably black has fantastic compensation here. The queen doesn't stand so well. The extra pawn is not worth for much, and there are some things uh, happening in the center. But let's okay, see. knight d7 is simpler, let's say, if you don't want to sacrifice the let's pawn. Let's see what we have in the board, because he played knight d7 right here, after c5. It looks no, like white has a beautiful position after takes. But takes... Uh, takes and mm -hmm. have this beautiful square. Yeah, but you know, sometimes in these structures, uh, black plays c6 himself and then takes on d5. So let's go I was, I was. A, Okay, knight c5, I guess, no? Knight c5. So, so you have to be quick somehow. Na takes a knight d2 or knight d2 at once? I don't know if I can go queen c2 if you want to play c5 very fast, right? Aha, uh -huh, you want to take on e5. Knight e5 is a threat indeed. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have to play b6, but then you may prepare a3 and b4. With starting with b3, maybe no. Well, b6. You can also castle, of course. Well, maybe eventually I should be taking here, going knight f2. So after f5, I have move f3. But white uh, is threatening very heavily with knight c4. Okay, then I do knight go f7. to f7. No, but no, f4 first. Let's uh, let's make things sure on that wing. Knight c4, knight f7. Knight c4, knight f7. And now b3, maybe, to start. Uh, yeah, question whether you yeah. can even take bishop a6. And g4, okay. g5 is coming quickly. It's not easy at but, all. But c6 is also a challenging move, no? c6 provokes... Uh, After c6. Probably you have to move. It probably you cannot take, no? Well, order. actually, white has two options, right? It's either to play c6 or capture on yes, c6. Yes. Yes. There's not much uh, more of an option. Black played uh, relatively quickly, so maybe he knows a bit about this variation. Maybe well, he most uh, players are thinking quite a bit, because black played uh, spent like uh, nearly 20 minutes up to this point. Uh -huh. Ah, but, uh, yeah, okay. White a bit more, no? White a bit more. He spent more than half an hour by mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is board four. Let's see the match between Poland and oh, Serbia. Benoni. We have some Benoni on board one. Duda versus uh, Indic. Okay, it's going to be a fun game. Board number two, Markus we have. Alechian was it or what? The opening? This was a Petrov. Oh, oh, Petrov but Good old Petrov. 
with Bishop D3, Bishop D3. Mm -hmm. and uh, this line. Oh. A very reasonable opening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On board three, we have this position. Some French. Some French. Yeah. Perunovic playing with the white pieces from Serbia and Bartel on the other side. Well, still very much in the opening. I prefer it with white, generally speaking. Yes, also black. I go um, e1, queen g3. Okay, black played this black b6 and bishop b7, yeah, and he hopes that at some point knight e4 will, uh, will do the trick, no? Knight d4 at some point, maybe queen d7, rook d8 is also possible. Provoking. And the break with f6. f6 is always there. Yes, because the knight oh, after b6, instead of a6 and b5, the knight on c5 is stable. So if f6, yeah. e takes f6, bishop takes f6 is good. Controlling e5 and d4. Yeah, this are. is the main uh, yeah, yes, issue what yes. white has to be look, looking yes, after. Yes, yes. So let's see the Netherlands-Georgia game between Anish Giri and Jobava on board Some one. Some sort of Hromatka, no? Well, we have also this Benoni kind ah, of story. Yeah, with, with uh, delayed, delayed uh, e6, as I used to play. Yes, takes, takes, knight d7. Ac actually, I used to, in a slightly different position, I used to, to play this regrouping, knight e8. Now what, uh, okay, bishop takes e3 was a threat, after which uh, wise bishops should not be so so strong. To make double pawns. And yeah, and then f5, five. knight g7, uh, knight e5, or knight f6. What are the bishops doing? It's, um, Queen d2, knight e5. I made a draw with Seravan like this with black. It was slightly different, the system, but uh, knight e5. Bishop e2, f5. f5. Rook f1, knight f7, back. He yeah, white cannot make uh, g5 and the four. Probably. Or bishop e5, which, and to take with the pawn, if anything. And then he would have some nice blockade on, on d6. The question is whether the e6 square can be yes. exploited yes. somehow by white. I assume that if bishop f1, then bishop e5 is uh, his plan. If bishop f1? To occupy, to straighten something or on maybe e6. first g5 and after bishop e5 is also possible. It's, it's also possible, yes. Mm -hmm. Though I'm not sure. And then knight g7, maybe. The question is... But now, f, now f4, yes, I, I'm not... But f4 is possible uh, well. if you go knight f7, bishop f1, you go bishop e5 here. Then bishop h6, no? What about taking? And d takes. You would take with the pawn and have your knight on these. Mm, yes, yes, that that looks nice for uh, for white, for black, no? In order to put the bishop to work, you have to play g4, but I don't think this is. G5 what, uh, is on the board. <coughs> so after Sorry. rook a b1, no, rook a b1 was G5. okay. Because white wants to be extremely fast with yes. playing b4, opening up the position. Even though the moves a6 and a4 are not on board as so many times in this structure. Bishop h2. Bishop h2, okay. This we could guess. Yes, because this way that the bishop stands on e2, it can if be f4. unpleasant on h5. And after a 4 uh, okay. Bishop well, g4. Yes, yes. This is why I was not so happy with the idea of going g4 and a4, but okay. Uh, for the time being, uh, white is a piece down, the bishop on h2. Well, after f4 for the moment, yes, yes. but of course I, later on white can go f3. I know, I know g, how relative it is, I understand. King g1, bishop g1, and later on also covering the d4 square. But at the same time, okay, this f3 thing, um, okay, uh, it also offers black some play, you know? Um, his weaknesses on dark squares. Actually, I would be more worried about um, some other things. Uh, that white gets such a strong pressure with the other pieces that black would need to defend, and then at some point G3 would be difficult to control. Yes, uh, after F4. I, I would be more afraid of that. Uh, because so what can black play instead of F4? 
if he wants to. Well, bishop, bishop e5, that, but then maybe bishop a four. Bishop e5, but then maybe a four is, uh, this is what he played. Aha. Uh -huh. Now g3 does not make that much sense, I believe. Mm, preparing a four, but... G3? Yeah, to prepare a four. I, I mean, keeping the bishops, because in principle, black wants to exchange the dark squared bishops. It would help but his... probably uh, af well, after g3, really, white can have some problem in the long uh, run or in the short I, run. I said Knight that it's F6? not serious, but I mentioned it because... Okay, so f4, you have to go... f4, bishop d4, bishop d4. Check. also King bishop to c3 the... can be something to be considered. Aha, and knight e4, no? Takes knight e4, queen goes away, queen f6. Because uh, black is quick now. Also, instead of queen f6, uh, b takes f4, g and takes queen f4, h, and, and queen, queen h4 can be. Mm -hmm. So maybe queen c2 is not a good move. But mm -hmm. okay, after f4, black can capture it immediately. Takes and then, and then, uh, then the same thing, yes. And then knight e4. Yes. So maybe we should look no, for uh, something else. No, g3 is not serious. No, I just mentioned it. Uh, Bishop so f5, f4. f4 looks uh, principal. Yes, that's no? the most principled reaction. And what about taking? Sorry for mentioning stupid moves, but uh, I mean, no, okay. G3 white, is also some white, sensible, white would like interesting. To avoid course. the exchange of bishops, but then suddenly the black bishop would be so active, so. Queen h4. Queen h4, okay. So maybe rook f1 back, no? To start play against the f5 pawn. Rook f1, trying to put pressure there. Bishop d3, maybe mm, the, the next, next move. The point is that um, the knight on e8, um, Probably if it go, go but, but then, then knight b5 maybe, you didn't play a6. So knight c7 is a threat. Um, I know there are such, uh, such details. It's not easy to combine them with white, but uh, okay, with black you have to be careful. You can see that uh, Anish is taking it extremely seriously. He knows completely, very well, that uh, how dangerous uh, Badur can be. Yes, because there can be dynamic uh, ideas here, no? In this position. I mean, okay, strategy, strategy, dark squares, dark squares, but uh, things can also happen. Yeah, of course, it's not an easy game with either color. This. After bishop e5, f4 is a, well, it's a provocation also, bishop e5. It's not that I would see that uh, there are many options for black, right? Well, bishop d4, king h1, and I don't see what... Uh, if bishop d4, king h1, and, and still knight b5 is there. What it's is, 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 g, is, bishop. G4, is g4 working or what? It looks too, too futuristic. Well, the question is also what is the threat, the, right? Mm, bishop f2 and g3, okay. Let's say that... Okay. then I take it. <laughs> I knew it. Yes, yeah, somehow bishop f2 followed by queen h4 looks... Um, I don't know. I think it's over-optimistic. I know, no. I have the uh, feeling. This is, you could even take. Probably rook f2. Yeah, and g takes f5. g takes f5, knight f6. No, I, I cannot agree more. I just mentioned it as uh, an alternative which I don't believe in. Yeah, rook f1, g4, f1. for example, is a nice option. And the bishop will come out, of course. Well, white has two pawns for the exchange, so it's uh, yeah. very difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll see what will happen, what uh, Anish is up to. Definitely now he goes into deep thinking and uh, think whether should he play f4, maybe bishop d3, or considering something else before. Let's see board number two. Michidashvili against Van Forest, Jordan with the black pieces. This looked, uh, you remember we had this um, bank uh, with the blocked uh, queen side. It was a ladies game. Yeah, Koneru had a game and uh, this like is, that. And this is uh, somehow the mirrored position. White has the pawns. Can you see the opening, actually? Because well, it, it was, uh, well, kind of a bank, oh, yeah. bank okay. or gambit. Okay. okay. So it was the same. Why. It was the same, okay. 
this is what the game was e4 and then we have this kind of structure well if we talk about the position well in principle white doesn't have such clear plans the only pawn break is f4 which is not obviously really you would want to go f4 no it's the only possible pawn break yeah which is not so yes appealing. that's not appealing yeah but so I, I'm talking about the plans, uh, but uh, at the same time, white uh, has this space advantage, so there is no knight on c6 uh, to to jump to d4. So I believe that play will be more subtle. Play will well, start a little bit later somehow. White the, the has real. a great bishop on g2, great knight, uh, what, so the d5 square is there. But the question is, what are they doing? You know, it's also it's not so easy for white to formulate a concrete plan. Yeah how this f5 uh, this h4 knight will mm, serve white yes maybe knight e4 but black also has some idea to play h6 and knight b6 and then the d5 square is uh, very well defended i wonder if but b6 at one point will be possible from white side it makes part of of course uh, but you have to find the moment you have to feel well, sometimes even i would uh, maybe just no. give it up and well black to move now after queen c2 uh -huh, and rook uh -huh. b1 and have the knight on b5. Just an option that Maybe the black should be considering. Maybe knight b6 now, no? Well, the question is whether you want to block it or, or you to want to move your rook and try to play b6. Or but play b6 at once, no? To give up the exchange? Well, uh, if white doesn't have pawn... Uh, I'm not pawn sure. Play. Probably it's not enough. Do you think you have enough for compensation? Pawns are equal. If f3, knight g2, position, f3, true. knight g2, knight e4, no? And uh, black, white is just winning, no? Mm. No need to, no pawn attack for black. Well, uh, yeah. I'm not sure it's a good idea just no, to no, no. be so, rook a so somewhere. good hearted. Rook a somewhere, but then uh, maybe b6, no? Let's say rook e d8 or rook e8. And then I would consider this. six. So you take with the knight, pro if to be the queen, then rook b1. And, and anyway, I believe rook b1, and then some uh, uh -huh. unpleasantness. All kind of things you be threaten, no? There. Because also knight b5, also capturing. So this can be maybe an idea for. The pawn on a5 can be. Uh, yeah, rook b5 also, exactly, double the rook. Abstractly, you know, which is the only thing I don't like to start such play with a knight on a4. The knight on uh, h4. I mean, it, it, mm, if the knight, the knight doesn't join the battle with knight f5, then somehow okay, you understand. Okay, but that's kind of I understand your it's principle. It's very abs abstract, abstract, no. But okay, he wanted to open up the the know, know. bishop, we and have for this. now it's not possible to attack it. It's also true, but it doesn't participate in the fight. But okay. I don't mind uh, my knight on h4 now. Mm -hmm. For now, I'm okay with that. It's like knight h2 in uh, the Aronian game, you know? The position with the pawn on h6. Yes. Uh, knight yes. h2, which yes. threatens knight e4. No, because I think the main idea is that on h4, it's nothing special now. But I really believe that white has this idea to mm -hmm. play b6. Yes. And for this, it's something concrete, what he has in mind. Yes, yes. Let's see board three, where uh, Bob Benjamin is playing with the white pieces. Was this a Bogolubov, Queen's yeah. Indian? Queen's Indian. Mm -hmm. And a Bogolubov at the same time. Six, castle, <laughs> knight c3, d6, d5. But this is considered just slightly better for white, isn't it? Queen d3 was also possible to play e4, not d5, but okay. Knight c2, knight c5, b3, queen e7. No, well, it's. It's, it's of course uh, a bog of Indian where the bishop doesn't stand so well on b7. I mean, first of all, b6. Um, okay, b6 can be useful to to slow down the pawns, but you don't have the breaks with c6 uh, in such good uh, conditions. So uh, I'm not so delighted. Let's go. Well, this is going to be a long game, right? White wants to play a3, p4, yes. then also at some point f4 is possible. Very long game. Let's see board four of this match, which is also a very close position. 
So there are big clashes going on. The Georgian uh, players seem to to be heading for such uh, lost position. Uh, I mean, keeping structures uh, a bit a bit uh, away from theory, but uh, yeah. very static. Uh, okay, before we move on, with but which some was is it something with before early? Before move. Uh, it was a very early move three. Okay, <laughs> this, this, was, this was what so I wanted early, to see. So this, early. this was what I wanted to see. <laughs> yeah. So let's go on to the women's section. But before that, let's see the highlights of yesterday. Just a little fragment of that. Welcome everybody. My name is Yanni Pomnishi, former World Chess Champion. Are starting a new course here for Chessable. A very special Chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. Welcome back to round six of the 44th Chess Olympiad in Chennai, India. It is something uh, special round because we have already some very exciting games. We were following in the open section quite a bit. But let's move on to the women's section because there are things heating up over there also. And let's dive in to one of the most interesting games so far as I see it with the Romania against Ukraine and on the board we're going to see Bulmaga playing with the white pieces against Muzichuk Maria. And it seems so that there is some uh, home preparation, home cooked line by the Romanian player representing Romania. It was a very typical structure in the opening, the Sicilian, but now we see something where, look at the clock, white spent less than uh, about 15 minutes so far, and we are already moved 26. 
very strange position now. Um, yes, we recognized uh, the opening because we had some, uh, even though the structure now completely, there is no structure actually. <laughs> yeah, I don't see not any much. Structure. Pawns left on the king's <laughs> side. Uh, no, but uh, the position, uh, I think that from practical point of view, is not very clear. There are not, uh, I mean, both kings are in some uh, danger. Um, but I don't see immediate threats for any of the sides. So both players need to to prepare their, their actions still. Of course, if with White uh, she analyzed this, uh, then uh, for her it would be easier. But in principle, yes, Black seems under, uh, under pressure. Uh, overall, uh, maybe White. Well, if we go back just for the last few moves, let's say, what has happened, it was uh, move 17 something, there was a big storm by playing g4 and g5, very aggressive way of playing. As you mentioned, uh, everybody plays g4 now. <laughs> maybe, maybe g4, h4, if you don't play, it's like... Uh, maybe the group, uh, the group variation, group opening will become popular, one g4 very soon. Well, that will be shocking stuff. King yes. d8, g6, and somehow it seems that, well, g takes h7 <laughs> is a promising move because the queen is attacked, but white can pick yes. up a new queen. And actually, these chess sets, what they are playing with, every chess set has next to it an extra queen just to be prepared for something like this. And even you can have four queens on the board without any problem. And you can even take it uh, with you home uh, if you win the game. Well, <laughs> after the last round, I believe. So queen b6, rook g6, and black played rook c7. White has two extra pawns, but I believe that this is not the most important thing right now. I, in I this didn't position. notice it, to, to, to tell the truth. Well, there is no pawns <laughs> yes, left yes. on the king's side for black. Yes. So black has this extremely powerful knight on e4 and rook on e8 but for a moment how to defend b2 that's a question nothing really happens yes the b2 is attacked by the queen but the queen from g7 is defended so this is why but i you, believe you have to take on d6 so no it's the only otherwise you lose no well let's see what are the options yes this is how mm. it looks like but the question yeah. is that after takes takes queen f6 check what happens if black just goes uh, not rook e7, no. but let's say to go king c8, rook d6. No, but I think that otherwise uh, it's uh, lost for white, no? Is there anything else for white? Because, uh, well, if queen h6, queen then b2, you go queen no? b2, king e1, queen c3, I believe, yes. king e2. Knight g3? Oh no, knight g3 knight doesn't g3, work. Knight g3, rook takes g3. Knight but okay, f6 black maybe, has no? knight f6, and also I would suggest after king e1, queen b4 check moreover. Uh -huh. So after king uh, e2, already knight c3. Knight e2, okay. It reduces the pressure on d6 and, and uh, uh, takes some material. Well, with the with check. check. With check. With, with the check. So that's the most mm -hmm. important that after this bishop e4 and after that uh -huh. check. Yes. So it seems queen h6 indeed is not possible and it would be very surprising if white would spend too much time right now. Mm -hmm. Though there is a question whether should she be taking with the g rook or should he be she taking with the d d rook. Takes this. But this is less obvious because now you have to exchange queens, no? Yeah, the question is whether after rook e7, what is this position? Takes, takes, takes. King c7, rook d3, mm -hmm. and it seems like white is doing fine. Still a lot of pawns. Mm -hmm. Right? So let's say rook d6, knight d6, queen f6, and let's say black goes king, king. c8. Because now if white goes here, then Can queen check. b2. So if you take with the other rook, now you would have uh, rook d2. Let's go uh, back and let's take with the other rook. This was what, what I liked in the first variation you showed. Yeah, let's see. Rook g d6, knight d6, queen f6. And now... There is all, there also is king c8, no? Not, but okay, rook e7 makes some sense, no? Sorry? No, also king c8, but okay, um, rook c7 makes sense because... But rook d6 wins. Ah, uh, no, 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 rook... king c8 no, is no, the no. only move. King c8 is forced now, okay, okay, yes. That's the story. So, uh, so let's say rook d6. Rook d6, let's say, no. And there is no check on b2. Ah, now there is no check at all. There is okay. no check okay. at all. Okay. 
Okay. Only if Queen takes d6, then after... Well, we have this position on the board, and Queen f6 is played as well. Mm -hmm. And White is still playing practically without thinking. Mm -hmm. She spent very little time, while Maria Muzichuk has spent quite a bit of time, and she has 43 minutes on her clock. No, so I assume that there will be... not much of a choice for Black. Yeah. King C8 only moves, so it's strange that she's thinking, because there is not... King D7 or Bishop uh, H3? D7, no? Bishop H3, mate in the next move. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's not not a good... Uh... So after Queen F6, King C8, Rook D6, let's see what black can do. Rook C6 is possible. Because actually, maybe it's the only move, because if Queen A5, then white gives a check, and king goes out, check, Rook D8. Yeah. And if rook d8, uh, rook bishop d8? c8 will be we lose the material, yes. It's because of the pin. so yes, yes. black cannot capture it back. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, it would be already dangerous. Instead of queen a5, maybe there is another move of queen b4, and it looks a much better oh, one because it also threatens, actually, with queen mm -hmm. takes c4. Also possibly with rook e3 and queen e1 check. So white has to be precise how to continue the game. Maybe b3 is uh, a simple solution, oh, and then the rook can retreat. Can black take this, take. give it is, check, is it some bishop force? e2, and it seems like black does not have anything more than one more check. One more check, yes. And then it's over. So after b3, yeah, it's a, this queen is incredibly powerful. Mm -hmm. It's not only attacking, but it's defending as well. But after b3, rook e7. Mm -hmm. Rook e7 can be a problem for white this time. Check. King goes to b8, then, maybe then rook d8, d8 maybe is an no. option. Mm -hmm. And also bishop King. e6 uh -huh. is, uh, looks quite painful. Or rook e6, if for instance, a king c7 is played. Instead of... Um, King yeah, D8. after bishop h3, king c7. So then rook e6. Rook e6. Probably. Well, it looks very, very promising yeah, for white diamonds. Yeah, it's dom say. domination, no? And, uh, and, uh, and three a pawns, lot of three pawns. pawns. And a lot of pawns for yeah. the exchange. So this position, this is what we have on the board. We mm. stick to this game because things are heating up here and uh, actually it can be a quick win for white. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not sure if quick because in the end game it would it could take a while, but yeah. no, but it it can happen that she goes queen a5 for instance, and then it's so uh, let's see if she has uh, what else can black do. Can what about playing? You said rook, rook c6. c6 was your first. Uh, yes, but it doesn't change that much. I mean, um, the take S, bishop take. h3, Check. king goes to d b8, rook takes, bishop takes. Black is looking for some counter chances on the e5. Yes. Maybe now B3. queen d6 is not necessarily so good. Yeah, I was thinking that the queen, uh, you just said that, that the queen Now there is a threat of ah, bishop that, f3. There is a threat, okay. So white if cannot play threat, b3 because that would okay. be a blunder. But queen d6 maybe doesn't solve it. If queen d6, king b7, well, white can come back, but that's not the way white should be doing, I believe. Mm -hmm. So after bishop c6, now actually black is suddenly seems to be quite reasonable. King f2 maybe. King f2 I was thinking, no? Rook d6 we have on the board. And now it seems like rook c6 is the only chance. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it would be good for black to eliminate mm -hmm. the active rook on d6 and leave some... Play yeah, for this, other uh, this red bishop f3 is a bit annoying. Uh, you have to spoil your stability. Well, I don't know if white can do something better than exchanging the rooks. <coughs> Give a check on f5, but it's not necessarily. A yeah, it's not necessarily going to be an improvement mm -hmm. on white's position. So now rook c6 is the only chance for black. It's not going to be easy for white, by the way, after this, I think. Yeah, well, takes, takes. <coughs> there is also a psychological um, aspect. Unless she's still in the book. For a long time. No, the point is, because okay... Because it's all pretty forced. Yes. 
But okay, you play with a strong opponent, you get her into your um, preparation, which is not easy, because she might play many things. So she goes wrong somewhere, she gets into some trouble, and of course you are happy. You are playing quickly, life, life is fine, life is nice, but there comes a moment when uh, your analysis ends, or she deviates a bit from your analysis, and then you have to, to, to be careful in this moment, I mean, to just readjust yourself. You are not now in the thinking mode. There is no more euphoria, there is nothing. You have to, to just play the game. To win it or whatever, to make uh, the best out of... Uh, so the, the uh, uh, Bishop C6 is your analysis, no? There's it's our analysis. We okay. still have on okay. the board Rook D6. Okay. So let's wait until she's going to be making her mm -hmm. next move. And then maybe we look around what's going on on the other chess boards of this match. I know because and it, some of the it other. happened to me that uh, I got such fantastic opening analysis and then uh, somehow uh, I start playing uh, badly after the analysis uh, ended, even though the position was winning. Because you have to, it's another game. It's a memory game in the beginning. Okay, maybe also your creative game during the preparation, I don't think anything. But it's, it's easy somehow. I just have to remember the things and uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy life. But then, you know, it there comes a moment when you... You really have to be there. You, you are not allowed to spoil things. I mean, um, such presents you don't get every day. To well, it's a I mean, move, question. 29, move 29 or what is it? And you are uh, still on your preparation. But it's incredible if she's still in her preparation because it's quite amazing that it's, we are at move 29. It's, you could offer a draw in, in, two, in two moves, no? Yes, because up to move 30, the players are not allowed to offer a draw. Yes. They can make a draw only if they have a repetition of moves or perpetual checks. I don't, I don't mean that she will offer a draw, but just that of it's, it's the, yes. you know, when you say move 30, it's something, you know, far, <laughs> far away. <laughs> so actually, what is this in reality after rook, e, rook c6? Let's say bishop check, king b8, takes on c6, bishop c6. Is it so bad for black? I'm not sure if I, I want to go bishop h3. I liked your suggestion to take and king f2. Because the bishop... Okay, yes, the, but uh, if we don't give bishop h3 check, yes. you take, take yes. king f2. Yes. If once bishop h3, I will straight away go to b7, probably. Mm -hmm. but, but I was, let's see. Uh -huh. I was thinking that it's good to, to keep the king uh, exposed, because um, I may have... Uh, if the king goes by itself to b7, okay, I have an, another tempo or something. Let's see what... Now, for instance... But no, queen f5 is no threat. Well, b3 followed by queen f5 could be to attack the pawn on c5, no? I think black has to be extremely accurate in this position, but yes. she has chances. Mm -hmm. The she position is not, not one-sided, I think. Well, then the bishop could be useful on e2, on, on okay. e2 to play h4, h5. So after all, I do play king, king b7. b7 no? I want to go to safer area. Because if b3, then you can try queen a5. Well, it's either queen a5 or want to go queen c7, queen b7, queen h7, but maybe. But queen c7 may lose the pawn on c5, that was my... But I'm not sure it's so important if I have some counter chances. I mean queen a5. If b3, queen c7, queen c so then queen a5. b3, queen a5 is possible. But queen a5 is more, no? Yeah, queen a5 more, is possible. Uh, and uh, what is the now? Check maybe on... Uh, Well, a4 is possible. a4 just like that. And if queen b4? Queen b4. Well, right now, maybe bishop c2, even in the, in the uh, yeah, in here it's possible, because but, uh, queen f7 check. Uh, I wanted to give first queen f7. Uh, my idea was to give it first a check, but probably bishop g2 uh, is better. Well, after bishop g2, probably black should be playing rook c8 then. Now queen e7. Queen e7, rook c7. Ah, rook c7. Yeah, or king b6. Mm -hmm. king b6. Yes, yes, yes. King b6 is Doesn't better. Doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So why it has to be extremely precise? She's an exchange down. Pawns are good, but uh, pieces count too. I'm surprised actually that she's thinking so long. 
because uh, we thought there is not uh, well it's losing immediately no? to play queen a5 or queen b4 was the other move queen b4 you wanted to go b3 yeah basically the big question is whether we agree on that that uh, the exchange of the rooks it favors black this is it frees it frees a bit uh, his position her position no this is what i believe it's not also. only the threat bishop h3 but uh, but okay maybe she thinks that okay maybe let's say uh, queen b4 what do you do bishop h3 hmm. king b8 and now we discuss rook e6 or bishop e6 right uh, no there is first b3 that we should uh, think oh ah, yeah bishop e6 maybe, is possible maybe, maybe but b3. b3 at once maybe okay but yeah but after b3 well rook h7 is not possible because rook d8 is still in the air we actually said b3 at once without bishop h3 which may be a bit more flexible no why to b4 b3 and then if rook e7 then check and rook e6 Ah, yeah, this was the position. Yes, bishop, rook e7, <coughs> Which was a bit bishop, check. King c7, and or, yeah, okay. Yes, rook e6. Okay, here too we exchange rooks, but at least uh, now there is a full domination. The bishop on e6 and the pawn on f5, this looks. Uh, yeah, because it's pity for black that he's, uh, he cannot make rook h7 mm -hmm. work anywhere. But if he takes and queen a3, takes, takes. just just a stupid question because um, queen a3, yeah, it's not so easy to control everything. No, with absolutely. White. Now there is a great counter chance. Oh, oh, oh. That's uh, and now even white has to be careful. Mm -hmm. It doesn't end so quickly. There, there is no vari variation with a quick end. So what do we say? Queen b4 is the other option. Maybe b3, we are wasting time. What about playing uh, what we discussed also, bishop h3, h3 and, and rook h3 and rook d8, yes, to, to do it like this. Ah, bishop e6, not rook d8. Well, if if rook d8, then it means that after takes takes bishop c8 b3. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right has to be doing right. At least now the bishop is uh, passive. The king can go to to f3. Also, black can play queen c3, for example, or queen a3. So we should take on c8, maybe no. Now we have more checks. The king is open, the pawn on c5. I don't know, can black you can take, take on yes. a2? King f3, I assume. I don't know, I was considering that uh, maybe queen d2 is a, is uh -huh. a good decision, because takes, takes, uh -huh. And this can be takes, dangerous, no? And, uh, h4 or something. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, somehow these two pawns. But rook b7. That's true. <laughs> That's true, it can cause some problems. Mm -hmm. I was thinking to play with the queens on board, because the black uh, king is... Um, Queen a2, king f3. So takes, takes. and uh, now queen d6 and... Uh, Check. But okay, if take on c5, then... Uh, well, if b3. I take this and take uh, this, you, then... Uh, you are happy, I know. Black is surviving. Uh, you are happy. So maybe this is just uh, perpetual, no? Yeah, so maybe after all, rook c6 is not the only move at all. Rook d6? This is the position we have, and she decided she to rook go to c6. c6 after mm -hmm. all, mm -hmm. to have one rook off. So let's see what's going on on the other boards, because this is only one. So here Anna, her sister, Maria's sister, is playing, and uh, she's playing with the white pieces against Sandu. What is this? position after knight c6. White bishop is quite powerful. I'm not so impressed by the bishop on g6. Yes, it can get um, in trouble in the long run. Or simply out of play, no? Yeah. yeah. Mm, yes, I'm not sure this was a, a happy combination of elements. But okay, the position is still white blocked. White seems to be nice yeah, position. Yeah, in principle, um, white should be slightly better, yes. Okay, let's see board three. Romania is white in this position. And Cosma has five out of five. 
on the... Sorry, uh, Romana is black in this position. No, Cosma is white. Yes. Cosma yes, is playing with white. Yeah. She, she yeah. has a fight out of five. She's board number four, but uh, now wow. to, today she plays on board three. So she probably played on both uh, boards. Okay, black wants to get some blockade on uh, Tar Squares. The question is whether... Uh, but white has a beautiful position. White is better developed, no? Wow, this D6 pawn will back for Mercy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It can be extremely weak. But huge if, if knight b6, for instance, is black to move? It's black to move. Knight b6. That's my only my only question. Because okay, if white gets to play a3 and b4, uh, then um, well, maybe this is the momentum for black, and he has to be, she has to be extremely uh, fast in eliminating some mm -hmm. of the pieces because otherwise if white can double yes, the rook yes. and attack the d6 then it just it will be impossible to defend it so probably takes no i'm C not sure i'm uh, wondering if uh, is there any possibility because i would uh -huh. wonder also to play rook d1 because if knight a4 then queen a3 mm -hmm. but after rook d1 maybe knight c4 would be the move I think she played knight b6 now. She made a move to that direction. Or knight c5. Ah, or knight c... Knight c5 is on the board. Aha. Uh -huh. Which is more surprising <coughs> at first, <coughs> but let's see. Well, now rook d1 is definitely an option. Mm -hmm. Let's say I go rook d1. Takes on a4, right? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Queen a3, let's say queen c5, Yes. queen a4. <coughs> well, and she has to run, ah, before is a threat, no, before queen, well, she has to run with the king, I believe, no? King e7, you no, mean? No, uh, ah, um, or to castle. Uh, maybe king but e7 castle is also. Is, uh, maybe worse. Maybe king e7. Also rook b8 is possible. Mm -hmm. Rook b8 is a very sensible continuation with rook b4 ideas, apart from threatening. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is not good at all. Mm -hmm. My suggestion after knight c5. But maybe after knight c5, I just, I just go back knight c3, just to go to safety. And then I start to put pressure on the d6. Yeah, because now well, I can try knight uh, e6. A3 may be some sort of threat too, so maybe knight e6 is necessary. Okay, knight e6, knight e2, queen c5, right? Mm, okay, yes, makes sense. Okay, queen c3. A5, let's say. A5. Rook d1. So you don't want anything with f4. It seems to me it's going to be slow to play f4. To play king h1 and then f4. Yeah, not so com Somehow it seems. Maybe, but okay, no? maybe after a5, let's say. I know I can go rook d1. Yeah, rook a d this rook uh, I would have. Though the queen stands extremely well on c5. I, I, I like that. I know. Maybe at first I was too negative with Black's position. Okay, maybe uh, White should take on c5. Yeah, I just wanted to consider because if d, c5. She has to, because if d, d takes c5, yeah, then queen, queen g3. g3. Yeah, so, so queen takes c5, and now um, maybe to try doing the same things without knights, no? Okay, if takes on c5, then uh, Black doesn't Well, this problems. is nothing, right? No. Black is going to be just fine. Yeah. Going king e7, rook d8, rook d4. And yeah. yeah, that's completely fine. So let's say queen c3 then, no? a5 maybe? Or rook b8, I don't know. Yeah, a5 is completely fine, I believe. Because after a3, but without a4 knights, is uh, yes, yes. It's, uh, the position is dying <coughs> out, kind of, right? Yeah, but without knights, uh, I don't feel that white is in big danger. Because uh, uh, when you say that you I like it... I have one more big question. Yes. What about Queen A3 now? 
And if takes queen d6, you want to go, yes? Either queen d6, also bishop uh, a4. Aha. And suddenly everything is hanging. And king d7, bishop c6. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. But... Uh, also? But which is the threat of... Uh, well, if you castle bishop takes c6, uh, it's still some sort of uh, pawn. But no? I'm not sure I would like to go there. I, for me, somehow, it seems that it's not enough for white. Then b4 you can go. Yeah, probably b4 I would like to go, or rook d1. Mm -hmm. And uh, start attacking. Mm -hmm. No, this is uh, okay. This is pleasant for white. So queen a3. b4 is my threat. Uh -huh. What so about nice. rook b8? Rook b8 has to be the move. And then rook d1. And rook d1, rook b4. Rook d6, knight a4, b3 doesn't look that inspiring now, not too much, not too much. So after knight c5 is, things are not so easy for white. Yes, I was, uh, well, when I saw the position, I was thought that uh, I would be a bit worried with white. And because the long, the yeah. long uh, term tendency. Mm -hmm. But of course, there are some dynamic nuances, um, which you spotted, but maybe they are not enough. Okay, so interesting. Black yes. is doing uh, interesting in this position. Board four, Ukraine plays with the white pieces, Osmak. What is this? It's not obvious at all. Which color would you be playing with? I don't think that this is a, a kind of Benoni where black has problems, no? She's well regrouped, d6 is defended. Yes, because after knight b5, bishop, bishop a6, a6 yes, the I wanted to mention that uh, bishop, well, f4 is also, but okay, then takes and rook takes e8, uh, okay, but this bishop is useful. And let's say a4, how does black play? What if takes and rook b7, okay, just, just to analyze. Takes, takes. Without a threat, maybe, no? Rook b7. Well, still, that night there is no threat. Four. Yeah, there is no black, threat. Right? Yes, this is what I'm. Yeah. Well, with a knight on c4, I, I'm afraid that uh, so maybe rook c2, trying to go to a2. Mm -hmm. With a knight on c4 and uh, with a static position. Um, I mean, white has a beautiful yes, knight yes, on yes, c4, yes. right? <clears throat> and this is the philosophy behind the system with bishop f4 to keep the pawn on e3. So that black uh, doesn't yes. have um, counterplay on concrete uh, play. She has a beautiful uh, space advantage, f5, g5, okay, but uh, how is she going to use it? And from practical point of view, and not only, this is uh, a bit more complicated. So let's see the next match between Azerbaijan and Abdul Malik. But before that, let's go to the first match. Sorry. Let's go to the first match, uh, Koneru against... We John have the same Zen. opening, no? It seems like everybody is playing Benoni today. <laughs> yes, Indic <laughs> also played it, no? <laughs> we have so many Benonis. Yes. Well, also Jobava is playing the completely Ah, Benoni. it was, yes, Benoni with a delayed uh, the Yeah, cast, but it's completely it, yes. Benoni structure, yes, right? Yes, yes. Uh, this move order was indeed played by Karel Chromatka uh, with a delayed E6, which is a hybrid between the King's Indian and the Benoni, actually. Okay, but here black is a bit uh, more advanced with her plan on the queen side. There the is no. It has a very nice uh, pawn structure. And right? there is no knight on c4. This is. Um, uh, Looks pretty nice for black. Let's see Harika's yes. game on board two. Well, black, black is attacking well. 
Yeah, it's a result only where the opponent is three is uh, also a bit weak. Actually, it's weaker than the opponent d5 almost. Yeah, the queen d5 bishop though is very nice. Yes, yeah, certainly Less bishop take d7 if everything is all right on e3. Well, if let's say rook e1, the rook e1, no, no. probably black should be going somewhere and threat knight e5, knight c4. <coughs> black has a nice piece play, no? Okay, so black is doing fine here. Board number three. Board number three. India is playing with the white side. Knight fianchetto can This usually they have is out a little bit. Usually they have bishop b7 and knight a6. Yes. It's it almost yes, looks it's like, like if she forgot how to. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. No, of course yeah, it was something like easy. this on b6. This is still theory, I believe. Ah. Played bishop b7. This is Berlin, yes. And, and here, the... yes. And played bishop a6, c6. And after bishop b f4, knight b7. Looks a little bit scary from black side, this regroupment. What about uh, can white go to d1? Uh -huh, well, d1. okay, this is hanging. That's true. And black wants to go knight c5 in the next move. And then a4 will be also hanging. Yeah, so after, let's say, rook so, b1, knight c5, and suddenly... So before, before it's not possible that... Uh, uh, well, let's see if it's possible. Ah, okay. No, 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 <laughs> before, after rook b1, uh, knight c5. Ah, no, but I thought maybe uh, we can maybe check this no. one. Because after all, this bishop on a6 can get in trouble. <coughs> and the knight doesn't have squares, no? Well, the bishop does not have squares either. <laughs> Nobody has squares. So maybe b4 is a strong b4, move. That's, that's funny, no? Well, I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if this yes, bishop a6, yes. knight b7 plan should pay its price. Mm -hmm. But it's, we can see that the black knight has no free square. So to free the road for the bishop. And after c d5, b5. Anyway, yes. It looks promising for white, isn't it? <coughs> <coughs> yes, the bishop on f1 defends the back rank. Will, have, will black uh, have enough compensation? Maybe d4, no? d4. d4. Takes so to, to okay ninety six to just um, exchange this. Uh, but I'm queen. afraid that for black after knight yeah, b five yeah. it can be big problem. That's the problem. You, if yeah. queen c eight. Uh -huh. Well, probably you try to get rid of this pawn, right? Mm -hmm. No, if she, she achieves that, then maybe the position is not so clear. Rook and the pawn versus two minor pieces. Well, even knight, here I knight think. B5, knight b5 and, and knight, knight c6. Ah, knight, uh, uh, knight, uh, knight c7. c7. Oh, okay, okay. No, then this is just. Mm -hmm. No, no, then it's, uh, it's no. Very much. Ah, knight d6, you had it. I wanted uh, knight, knight c3. Yeah. But knight c3 is also yeah. it's stable, okay, and we play. Yeah. We play. So h4, before, h5. Are we missing anything? Takes. So probably this is what uh, Vice Charlie is thinking about mm -hmm. to play b4, and this can be dangerous. And let's see the last board with uh, Tanya, who won two of her games in the last two rounds, game four and game five. To decide the match. Yes. She won. She had won earlier, but uh, that was not so important because. because others uh, won too. Well, she struggled for 100 uh, moves to, to beat uh, her young opponent. Yeah, 100, uh, yeah. Something, yes. yes. It was not that important for the team. But the last two games, yes, uh, they decided uh, the match. Well, she plays the Rai Lopez in her games, and uh, she is playing this energetically. So now c4, yes, and there is some tension. E4 it's is black to move now. Bishop g4 uh, four uh -huh. was the last move. Actually, it's logical, no? Because c4 puts some pressure on e4 some lines that pawn could be lost. Uh, bishop g5 pins the knight and maybe even exchanges the knight uh, which puts with one of the pieces putting pressure on e4. So we can see already some dialogue of... Um, but at the same time um, 
Then I turn A5, I like it a lot. You like it? Yes, because it keeps the bishop on A2. It controls B3. Well, for now, I guess white wants to go knight E3 next, to, or knight to force, E3. To force white, uh, black to release the tension somehow, no? Well, yeah, this gives up something already. Yes, but especially with the knight on A3, and after in, in exchange on F6. So if, let's say, black goes H6? Then I would Bishop take H4. and... You would take? Ah. I was thinking to play at knight e3. I would try to, to show your idea. But it's not uh, provoking me to take anything on d3 yeah. yet. I can insist with knight d2 if anything. <coughs> <coughs> and it's still nothing. Well, I don't know if knight d2 will be. Knight d2, bishop g5. Yes. So you are still... Um, yes, it's not so simple. Black uh, may be able to... Um, Maybe rook d8. This. Rook d8, rook c8, yes. I'm thinking even to play d5, play d5. at some point. Mm -hmm. so that's strong. why I was uh, not sure whether after... The question is after h6, if white is just keeping it with bishop h4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also a possibility. What happens? Although only after c takes d3, which is not very probable, to to take on f6 and uh, queen d3, knight d3, maybe. Sorry? Only if black, for some reason, takes on d3. Yes, that's another f6, story. Uh, queen d3, knight d3, yeah, maybe. I'm not even sure that white has to be rushing to, so much yeah. but to take and on f5. And if g5 is sacrificed, uh, ah, but it's defended, no? Well. Mm, yeah, it's defended. I would think that uh, I, I would You would even take it. Yeah. No. I mean, okay, if you okay. go g5, I believe you have to try it uh, earlier. Uh, yes, yes. Already immediately. Yes, yes. And uh, probably this is what she's uh, calculating also and thinking about whether is g h6 g5 something that she wants to allow white yes, to sacrifice. Yes, but, but also, okay, the question is whether black can control the whole board. Because, okay, to have the knight on a5 and this, uh, this tension is one thing, but to expand, to, to extend the conflict to the other room, I mean, playing g5 even if white doesn't take. It yes. It's a weakness on a5. Yes. And you have to, to control all these things. You may have... Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe bishop g3 is just a simple. You may need another two knights to... to Okay, so let her think. Let's go back for a moment to Bumag again because that was interesting. But I believe that the spe uh, spectacle is ensured in this game of Tanya. I mean, yeah, the, the well, plot is there, the strategic plot is there, and uh, concrete things may happen. Wow, we have oh. a simplification. Uh -huh. So, okay, it's, it's clear that it's one-sided. Because, you know why? Because this we were not even thinking. We yes. were, after rook c6, rook c6, we were just checking bishop takes c6. And but she exchanged the queens, but, but who does it favor? It seems I like I think this is one-sided and close to losing, no? Well, I guess bishop h3 is a logical one, and then go bishop e6 and f5. I mean, uh, white cannot lose this, for sure. Because earlier uh, there were some double-edged uh, issues. After bishop takes choice. Six. Uh, white cannot lose, and most likely uh, she's close to winning, no? Interesting choice by her. Okay, so what we can uh, make a summary that in uh, the Romania Ukrainian game, in board one, white is better, clearly. Board two, we have a nice bishop on g6, you see? Yes, that's. Anna is having a good position. Yes. Because, F4 uh, may be coming, yes. Oh, maybe even F4. She played bishop, bishop d5, d5 okay. now, mm -hmm. but white is pressing for clearly. Mm -hmm. Then board three, we have an exchange on c5. I would think it's going to be a draw. And on board four, black did play f4 mm -hmm. and trying to block the bishop on h2. But I'm afraid that black is going to be losing this pawn eventually. Yes, and the knight on e8 uh, does not come out quickly. Okay. So let's go back to the open section. But before that, let's see some pictures or uh, pictures of today, what was happening in the playing hall.
We see Koneru here, concentrating. Wow. From which country is she in this uniform? Mm, interesting, <laughs> yes. From the army, it seems. I feel safer. <laughs> yeah. The players are always focused. And uh, sometimes you can see, wow, there is a surprising move over there. <laughs> nice picture, actually. Yeah, they are nice pictures. Taking the momentum. What a calculation. The angle is... Uh, yes, very special. And yes. uh, you see the calculation. It's Pragnananda, if I recognize it well, even though he's in a mask. It he had a different him, yes. game, difficult game yesterday. And... Here we see also some player from Latvia, probably. Is this an oh my god reaction or? Uh? <laughs> this is a very classical setup. Yeah. That you're focusing, concentrating. Elegant, elegant, yes, uh, holding your head. Actually, players are elegantly dressed yes. up. Yes. And they also yes. have special uniforms. As we discussed it in a few rounds before, that there is going to be a special prize given for the uniforms. Here, what can she be thinking about? Maybe she is just blundered something? Maybe dropped something under the. Just looking table. for something. Yes. Yeah, these are the pictures what we have for today. Let's go back to the big clash between. India 2 and Armenia. On board 1 we have some uh, excitement. I must say that it's, uh, it's going fire on the board already because oh. there is a great attack by Gokesh and uh, it will be hard to stop him. He has 5 out of 5 so far in the Olympiad which is an incredible score on board one. But he's not the only one who has five points on board one, but it's for the Uzbekistan's first board player, Nodir Bak Abdusatarov. So in this position, what do we really have? It's funny because this kind of pawn structure, Gukesh had exactly with the other uh -huh. Side yesterday against Shirov. Uh -huh, yes, he had yes, d6, yes. e5, d4. It, yes, it was double mirrored, double mirrored somehow, yes. Yeah, so it seems like he really likes to control the center. No, talking about uh, Gukesh and uh, uh, the center of, uh, who has this uh, 5 out of 5, the way I understood their games, I looked at them briefly, um, they are positional players in principle, but uh, it's how Podvini call it, uh, called it. Uh, uh, positional ambitious. I mean, they are going for space. Look at just these pawns. So they use um, positional elements, but in a very active way. And of course, they can calculate and uh, deliver combinations if necessary. Yesterday, I was impressed by the way he played against Shirov uh, because we thought that, okay, 95, if 95, then why takes and he probably makes a draw. But he didn't go for 95, even though it was the thematic move. He first prepared it and when he played it was... Uh, so yes, he, he knows a bit about space and uh, structures. Well, let's talk about the structure now because it is absolutely not an everyday structure, I must say. No, the only question is if whether black can get some quick counterplay. I don't know if A4 or B or even B3. Well, Something for now, why to move? Why to move? Okay, this uh, makes to move. things more complicated. It makes a difference in such a position, <laughs> yes. who is on move. So the question is probably for White whether is he going to be playing bishop f3 or bishop, bishop d3 or bishop having c4. it on c4 just in case for a later uh, attack. What about bishop d3? This comes to mind at first yes. because it would be nice to make some weaknesses for the black side. And I'm not sure which uh, pawn should black touch. The thing is, I have some uh, nasty idea behind bishop d3. Let's say if black goes h6, which probably he will not because it looks extremely dangerous. Yes. No. no. Even strategically. I had some crazy idea like bishop b4, and I wanted to have queen g2 attacking on g7 uh -huh. and a8 at the same time. Mm -hmm. But I'm afraid that this e3 pawn is hanging and it's not going mm -hmm. to be good. Uh -huh. But I would go maybe king b1. That seems to be quite a safe place. I want to go rook, rook c1, attacking the bishop. I was wondering whether... Um, yeah, yeah, in principle, the 
Position with H6, I don't know, looks... Uh, and with G6, is not by, by much safer. So let's say after Bishop what if, D3, what, what else? B3, G6? B3, B3. You just want to give up. No, I, I... Okay. Okay, and A4, just to see what happens. Maybe nothing happens, but uh, okay, it's, it's not our pawn, uh, so... Um, Because I'm afraid that black is, is very slow okay. if, if he doesn't do something. I completely understand, but I'm going to be grabbing that. Uh, yeah, and that was my fear too. So if bishop d7. It's incredible though what the, that uh, the Armenian team can play in such a great team spirit. They've won already three times the Olympiads. Three times. It's not at all, yes. And, uh, well, indeed, uh, Aronian was playing in the team at that time. And I'm sure it was a very upsetting news for them to know that Aronian is going to be playing for a USA team. But still, I think they are even more motivated now to show that even with Lavon, we can do it. We can have a medal. So they do have this incredible fighting spirit in them. And that's why they play on board number one. And they are one of the leaders of the Olympiad together with India too. Actually, but I played twice against Armenia, I believe, at the Olympiads. And uh, if I noticed one thing, this was the uh, team spirit. Uh, okay, it was before uh, Aronian uh, got into the team, so it was a different generation. Very strong team, of course. Uh, we, we won both times, uh, Romania. But this I could see it, how, how, how they were suffering for, the, for uh, each other. I mean, they would finish the game and would not go away. Exactly. In, in those times, you were not forced to to leave the playing hall exactly, after exactly. finishing. No. Yeah, they won the Olympiad the first time, it was 2006, if I'm correct, and then repeated one year, uh, two years later, 2008 in Dresden, and then in 2012, it was in Istanbul, they won. And uh, yeah, this was something uh, very special, the team and their captain, Arshak Petrosyan, he was always there, I know him uh, pretty well, and uh, he was always nervous, he was always nervous, but he was always so proud of his captain, and somehow he could motivate the team, he could prepare them, and whatever happened, he was extremely uh, uh, cheering up the team, he was... Uh, Somehow he always knew what to say, what to do, and calm them down. If they made a mistake, no problem, fine, don't worry, just look ahead and be in the presence. And this family spirit, because I remember in 94, so this was two years before day one, uh, I was playing with Takopian, my position was winning, but I was the last uh, player uh, from the match, that was the last game. My uh, fellows uh, had disappeared some hours earlier. Uh, it was equal match in that moment. But the Armenians were there, and it was, you know, uh, uh, it's not an easy thing. I mean, uh, Ivar Vaganian, who did, who stepped out in that uh, in that uh, match, uh, was there. So I understood that uh, nobody was on my side. I eventually won in in uh, relatively easily, but uh, the feeling was that uh, you know um, I'm alone, and these guys uh, want want the same thing. Want, want to save the games. It and happened with me also, I remember, played in 2000, also in Istanbul, and I had uh, one of the best uh, Olympiad, I made plus five or plus six, and I was playing against Anastasia from Armenia, and it was the same thing exactly, that the, all the teammates will, were there and were rooting for him, it was an end game. I won at the end, but uh, you could see and you could feel the energy that the others were given to, to him and how much they wanted him to save the game. And this you feel all the time. And here I think you, we are seeing that also, that the team spirit and how much they want to be successful, it is there. So what do we have here? Do we have a move? No because Gukash is still hesitating how to react, because King B1 is also an idea to make, but yes, probably but there, there knowing... There may be A4, there may be A4. Knowing yeah. Sargisyan, I believe that probably he wants to make your move. There is another option also, and I think white should be fast, so this is a momentum of a game. Maybe what about Queen E4? Mm -hmm. Attacking the rook and preparing Bishop D3 already, to attack with the queen. More concretely, yes. Does it make uh, any sense? Because I'm not sure it's going to be good. 
that uh, to have the battery with the bishop this way than the other way. So where, front or behind the bishop, the queen is back. Can I try b3 again? You don't care that your rook is hanging and stuff I, like I, that. I was hoping that that is, uh, would be working, but maybe it's not. Well, it is working, it because seems, because uh, queen takes a5. a5. Queen takes a5, you have. Queen a5. I only saw so king c2. Yeah. So queen a5, and maybe it's not working, no? So it means it does not work. So after queen e4, you will have to play... Maybe bishop a6, no? Bishop a6. Because if you take, then suddenly I'm uh, doing fine. Yes, the, then the, the, the rook, rook can comes, uh, come on the six. It's, uh, it oh, can well, be a great it's defender. it's still uh, some pressure, but... Um, we see the move done. Let's see what white has done in the position. Rook g5. I oh, like oh. this move, rook g5. Wants to double and also so possibly to attack. He thinks that the bishop uh, should maintain its flexibility for the time being, maybe. Well, actually, a e6 can be a threat as uh -huh. well. So okay, the c5 okay. bishop can get uh, vulnerability there. Okay. Rook g5. So what can he have in mind on a4, let's say? Is it really e6? Is no? f5 is possible, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, this game can be decided in five moves also. Oh, because it, it is either, so either, dangerous. Either, either way, no? Either, either way. way, yeah. But uh, somehow I like it better with white. But I'm not sure I'm right. Let's say on a4. Queen e4 Queen is e4 possible. Now, yes. Yeah. B3 is still not working, probably. So, so let's say bishop, bishop e6. Bishop or a, a6, bishop a6, like a6. earlier, no? Yeah, and then maybe b3, because a3 doesn't really work. Bishop, or bishop takes a3, I don't know. So on a4, what does white want? Well, e6 was a question, right? It's a question. But is f5, f5 is yeah. the only move? Rook g1. g6. And maybe now rook f5. So if takes and bishop e6, do you have some... Uh, takes, bishop e6. Funny ideas with rook g6. Queen e4. Mm -hmm. Rook d8. Rook d8. Yes, f8 yeah. is also quite sensible. One of yeah. those squares. One of those squares. Yes. Here it seems like black is taking over, right? Mm, suddenly the king is safer, no? So what Gukesh has in mind? I'm sure he has something he wants to do here on a4. Okay, so let's see. Sit and wait. What uh, Sargisian is going to be playing after rook g5 because he has several options. A4. But also he can go bishop e6, for example. Mm -hmm. But that probably looks dangerous. f5, bishop takes a2, but it's uh, kind of... The rook is hanging on g5, ah, ah, so ah, probably... Ah, so, ah, so bishop. After okay, rook g5, okay. bishop e6, white would yes. be going rook g1 first, but here already f5 is there. Okay, okay. That looks... Uh, Let's say bishop a2 takes or f6 or, is, is, or e6 it, maybe have many f6 and the bishop is ah, gone just like this okay you want to be pragmatic bishop a6 very fast uh -huh. fast decision bishop a6 with your idea that after if there is an exchange the black rook can defend over there yeah or even g6 it can defend if forced to yes yes ah if takes and rook g1 then rook g6 is uh, simply I'm not sure. Safe, uh, let's uh, say. No? Safe, but maybe uh, maybe white can be good. Takes, takes, rook g1, and after rook, uh, H, rook g6, hmm. maybe just to play, uh, because then there is no attack on the queen side. So what about playing h4 and trying to put pressure over the black? No, white uh, cannot be bad here. Mm, I mean, only if something concrete happens. But, but now it's changed, right? Uh -huh. Without the white square bishop, things uh, are changing. Yes, yes. Well, the bishop on d2 is still um, a problem. Well, it's not a killer. <laughs> <It's> not <laughs> That's for sure. 
<laughs> it's not a killer there. But okay. So Bishop A6, we'll get back to this. So it's a very complicated game. Let's see what's going on on board two because there is some simplification what already. That? We had some, uh, I don't know, we, we checked it in the very beginning. In the very, uh -huh, very uh -huh. beginning. Okay. So it got like this, rook c6, rook c8. And black is fighting for a draw, which most likely he's going to be. There is only one yeah, thing exactly. which I don't like in black's position is the pawn on f5. With, well, the, with the pawn on f7 and it would uh, be much on g6, better. I would think that he has no problems making a draw, but maybe this is okay, the case. Okay, let's here, say so. white takes, takes, and rook c1. Is there any chance for white? Which is the next move, no? For instance, king. Hmm, not simple. The b pawn cannot move, 92 loses the pawn. The king has to come somewhere. I mean, rook c2 and then king f1, king e2, king d3 is the only. But okay, the, the black king can also advance. There are these pawns on f2 and uh, h2. Yeah, maybe rook c6. So to have some uh, options there too. Some access, no? Yeah, so if whenever white wants to go, then yes. you can go rook h6. Yes. Well, black has very good activity, of course. White took on c8, and uh, Nihal is taking back. So this game, I'm expecting to be a draw. What about board three? Because there we have Hanging huge com complications. Hanging yeah, points. Yes. So let's say it's how not the first time I see hanging points in this Olympiad, which is um, interesting. It's not such a big pressure on the pawns themselves, but uh, White tries to do something on the king side. No, Bishop c3 coming. So we well, just moved to the third hour of play, mm -hmm. and within an hour we start to have the extra complications because we end up in time troubles. We see still that the playing hall is quiet, a lot of space for the players, good air conditioned as uh, yes. I saw a short interview with Anand and uh, he was saying that uh, well it's very nice uh, air-conditioned place which is very special in Chennai at this time of the year to have such a weather in the playing <laughs> Well, for such a big uh, space, yes. especially, no? Yes, yeah. I also see some um, air circulation here in the position. Somehow, the knight's placement is not so typical for either side. The knight on g6 uh, looks like from another opening, but also the knights on e2 and the 4 they... Actually, these, these three knights are connected somehow, logically, because the knight on f4 attacks d5 and, uh, in combination with bishop c3, uh, can put some pressure on, on d5, some real pressure. So maybe white has something. No, I, I prefer it with white. Maybe black doesn't have such clear activity here, no? Well, maybe the question is whether can he ever play d4 or somehow to get a little more active. I would think of playing queen b6. Yeah. And if bishop c3, then rook a d8. At least we get our pieces out. And uh, there is no real threat on uh, d5 yet. And then, of course, we can think of... Um, okay, there are still moves to do. a5, a4, if allowed. I think queen b6 we see on the board. Exactly, in this position. And, and that's, that's a good square for the yes. queen. Uh, uh, there are these squares b6 and e6, which are, uh, are important. For instance, a knight stands well on e6, and also on b6. These are good squares for the, for the pieces because they ensure some connection between the different groups, pawn groups. Because black actually has three island, pawn islands and white has only two. But those um, from the center, those pawns are, have some dynamism. But uh, a piece like this, queen b6 or queen e6, uh, can keep the structure together. It is very abstract, but uh, concretely it works. Concretely, these are good squares for... Uh, 
So, um, yes, Bishop C3, Rook A, D8, and then maybe even Knight E4, Black is prepared for. <coughs> so maybe Black's position is not that bad. If you can pre pre uh, prepare uh, Knight E4, then... Um, Because, for instance, bishop c3, rook a d8, and now a3, preparing uh, bishop a2. Okay, that can be an idea, actually. Knight e4, bishop. Bishop a2, anyway. So, queen b6. Yeah, I was following the line bishop c3, rook a d8, a3, thinking of bishop a2. If knight a knight e4, then anyway bishop a2. Also, sometimes bishop c8 can be bothering yes, the queen. Yes, we on H3. have seen a major piece on h3 in uh, a in match of Hungary, game. you know. Um, but of course, the queen is more mobile, so it's not such a big problem, but okay. Bishop c8, and you mean uh, it's not clear where to go with the queen. Three. Well, maybe knight e4 at some point. Or yes, knight e4, e4 was, and now bishop a2. That was uh, my question. But maybe black can take and they play d4. Uh -huh, d4 is already possible, no? Yeah. Okay, if d4 is possible, oh, this, is, this is very dangerous. Sudden, suddenly, yes. And there are no bishop takes h7. I was hoping for those things, but they don't seem to work. Yeah, actually, queen b6, rook d8. Easy way of going for black. This is why and this position. Uh, no, d4 once. Yes. Once he does it, then. Uh, and it happens all of a sudden, you know. It can it be happened. very, very painful for white. It happens suddenly, usually, and uh, you don't even see it coming. Okay, so, so. this is uh, quite a match going on, and let's see what is bought for. Ah, we have something already. Endgame. Black plays extremely fast, the Indian player, mm -hmm. Sadwani. Rook D2 was the last move, threatening with D7. So what is this position? How much chance white have to win this game? Let's say rook d8 is played. Can white go d7 anyway? And if rook c7? Rook c7. Check. King goes mm. back. But I think here white is uh, black is doing fine. So after rook d8, let's see what white is up to. Rook e3, probably. It can be very dangerous for black. With four rooks, yes. H5. H5, maybe rook e7. No? Rook e7, rook d7. Well, rook d7, uh, you know, if you take on e7, I'm not so sure that uh, you save the game. I'm not planning to take on I know, I know, E7. I know, but uh, there will be a permanent uh, tension. This is what I mean. Yes, but otherwise, uh, I think E7 yes, is a very yes. strong threat. I, I was not criticizing you. I was just saying that uh, things are moving for white. Though I'm not sure it's a threat uh, yet, but probably it is. It is actually, because let's say black goes here, white can go D7, and because after rook D6, black has to be pushed back bishop a5. and already bishop can take the c7 or after the other yeah, rook is you take, taking you take only seven sorry but after bishop is seven rook is ah, seven. Yeah. seven oh yeah oh. oh then uh, then it it's still possible yeah it to looks save. nice but uh, yeah. yeah too many rooks <laughs> yes too many rooks okay so rook d2 was played but it seems like black should be playing rook d8 with one of the rooks, but mm. it seems to me that the e8 rook is better yes. there. Unless there is an also an option to give it check, but I believe king would be going out here. There is another option after uh, 
uh, in this position after rook d2 maybe rook e4 Suddenly the white rook doesn't have good squares to return to the game, no? And also white shouldn't forget that this can be taken one day. Well, so, not for some, now, but... Yeah, but uh, it's a possibility. Yes. Probably not with the king on a6. The king should optimally... This is not a very yes. well-placed king, right? Yes, it yes. would be much more happy on d7, yes. but that's a dream. Well, so rook f3 probably, but then h5. Actually, why is... It's uh, not nice that if I, if I really have to defend this pawn... Why should black? Um, yeah, if black can worse, stay active. No? I mean, I understand that the pawns are hold. The pawns say four and b five. H five, right? Yes, yeah, so, so h five. But yeah, but I mean, the queen said pawns are not mobile. But um, well, as you said, uh, rook takes before uh, yields them some some dynamism, no? No, of course, there is play left, but uh, I would say that black is uh, is doing fine. It's not so easy to to see how white can make progress. First of all, organizing g4 is not easy. Maybe h4 uh, showed shown uh, earlier is uh, simple because uh, for white it's not easy to attack the pawn on h4 which blocks the king side because the bishop is needed on b4 otherwise if the bishop goes to f2 somehow black can break with b4 and suddenly his a pawn would be uh, quite uh, dangerous so i'm not sure um, what is white uh, doing here to Okay, so this is, uh, let's just evaluate the situation. Bishop a6, this is double edge position, board number one. Board number two is going to be a draw. Board maybe, three, maybe. black is doing fine. Bishop c3, rook d8. Ah, he played this, he played this, yes. Okay. Yes, this is the position, so this goes either way. And then fourth board is pretty drawish. So it's a very balanced match. Let's see Abdul Sattar of board one against Hare Krishna. Uzbekistan, India. Look how aggressive Hari is today. And very attacking. Yes, I I know that Bishop G five is um, Bishop G five is a popular uh, idea in the, the Joko Pianissimo. Yeah. But I have never understood why, because uh, it provokes uh, Black to do something he would gladly do anyway. G5 and 97, so yes. he was, uh, and then he started to move with his pawns. G4, very typical, right? Yes, G4, Queen G5, H5, H4. Double pawns, uh, part of their weakness is that they can be exchanged. Because if you have pawns H2, G3, F2, then H4 is not such a big threat. Well, exchange but and to open files, right? Y yes, I mean, they're more vulnerable to exchanges, to, yes. to losing to losing the control of the important squares. This is what yeah, I mean. now of course this pawn is controlling the f4, which is very important. Rook d3, black to move. It looks extremely dangerous for white with this bishop on a7. Of course white is well regrouped, but but his, you know, the cannons are there, and uh, I mean this bishop on a7. They, they're just, you know, keeping it's you like this. <coughs> Of course, black is not fully developed. Yes, of course. If the rook would be on e8, yes. the black would be more happy over there. So, but, uh, um, before giving... Mm, but what about just rook taking? Rook takes, no? You also take I with the rook, I, s I assume, no? Well, what about knight f4? But that was coming anyway, no? Well, I rook. had to exchange for that, right? Uh, yes, yes. No, no, but I mean, I mean, uh, even if I take with the knight. Yes, it's, it's, yes. Uh, That's coming so after rook, h takes g3. Rook d2, I guess, no? Or not? Rook d2. Nothing hanging yet. Yeah, the question is if black, when he will exchange on g3. Because now and I have queen d1. Can. And what is it going to be? You want to attack there. I can simulate some activity. <coughs> If rook h8, then maybe I take the pawn, H8. I don't know. Can I take the pawn? On f7? On f7? 
It doesn't look so tasty, no? Well, uh, I don't know, an F2 but no, 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 be no, one day. But I don't like Bishop F7, it doesn't. No, Queen D1 anyway. I, I, um, I, I, don't, I don't like Bishop F7. Because if Rook H4, I have uh, Knight F3, and I hope you don't have any tactics. Well, Black can go Queen H5, or I can also mm -hmm. go, I don't know if Rook H4, Rook H4, Knight H3, F3, Knight F3, that, that, was, that was my uh, Yeah, but it idea. seems like that's the only trick which I can fall into, right? <laughs> yeah, and so you did that. So let's say Queen H5. The question is how rook can D8, white... Rook D8, maybe. After Rook D8, I'm going to be... Of course, white is a bit on the edge, but okay, the bishop on c4 is good because it controls c2. Yeah, maybe black has to be more careful. I mean, white is better developed, so this is makes the game interesting. Okay, Otherwise, so what about rook h8 immediately? Then I go okay. and give you the f7 pawn, because now queen d1 doesn't make much sense yet. Mm hmm Okay, but if I take it on f7, extremely then, challenging then for white. no, rook, rook h8, I think it's better. Yes, because if bishop f7, only then I'm going to be taking on g3. No, I mean, black has to be careful, too. So, what if queen d1 anyway, just to see what uh, you are doing. d1. I don't know, knight f4 is probably exaggerated, no? Well, I don't know if it will make uh, sense to take it with the pawn. Yes, yes, but rook d5, I start... Um, yes, yeah, some counter chances. I start, it, I start kicking back, no? No, somehow it's, uh, it's uh, slow. Okay, it was just, uh, just a try. To see how the well, position probably is. there is no need to sacrifice this. Yes, knife. yes. <coughs> so let's say now takes. But then it's a transposition, no? Takes. But at this point, uh, maybe black can. Uh, I can go rook uh, h5, let's say, first. Mm -hmm. So I have time. Though still, why didn't I, why did I take it, right? Okay, so yes, yes. After rook d1, I go, let's say, rook h, rook h5. And maybe rook e d2. Or rook d8. Or rook d8 at once, can I do that? No, I'm afraid of hg. Yeah, it's not so easy to improve on black's position. Yes, hg, knight g3. It rook looks takes. awful for white though. Yes. I kind of show the variation if. Um, yes. Rook there, queen d1, rook, let's say rook h5 or what you wanted. And now if rook d8. You take on g3, knight g3, rook takes h2, I think, no? King h2, queen and h4 uh, check, queen and queen g3. takes g3, yes, so... Yes. Yeah, that bishop is, and mate is not far, probably, knight h4, h4. Yeah. But, okay, no, this is why I don't want to, to go rook d8, but, okay, if I cannot go rook d8, then I can still play rook e d2, and still not set on anything. Well, it seems like rook d3 is the best defense with this idea in mind to play queen d1 and to look for counter chances on d8. And hope that black doesn't have any possibility of strengthening the pressure anymore because... I would be very surprised though. Because, okay... so uh, dangerous. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. With black I would think that, uh, okay that I'm close to, to winning. But it's not so easy how to win. What about f5? What about f5? hg3 on the board, rook g3. hg, rook g3. Knight f4. 
Does he have something false now? I don't see uh, Hare Krishna's face, but somehow the the way he he moves um, makes me on. think I have, that uh, I have a question that yes. he's happy after Rukdi two. Yes, unless he goes clean. Even after Rukdi two, night H five. Ah, just night H five. What about night H five? I mean, the Rukdi G three. And wins no. Mm. Okay, it was that simple. Yes. So Abdul Saturov is in danger right now. Let's see what he wants to do. But it seems like he he may have to give up an exchange. Rook Maybe three. queen d1. Rook is three or queen d1. Maybe queen d1 and looking for counter chances already. Yes. Though still knight h5 is possible, not taking on e2. So helping white to go bishop e2 and capture the g4, but he can go knight h5 anyway. And rook e3 doesn't really work, I think, no? Well, it's not the bishop, but the knight will capture the knight, the rook. Okay, so rook e3, knight g3, rook g3. I'm not sure if you have to take, but okay. Well, maybe I was threatening knight g4. I mean, okay, black should be kicking somehow, kicking back, otherwise... Um... It seems white has some counter chances. Well, no deer back has to be very tough here. Yes. Very tough. So queen d1 is maybe the only move, we think? Or rook e3, no? With the same uh, idea, knight h5 rook. Immediately. Yeah, maybe it transposes. But I'm not sure exactly that rook e3 immediately. After that, yeah, I think... You, you, can, you can take, no, no, it's better to go queen d1 first, yes, to invite you. Mm. Okay, takes a knight h5, then the knight have to go. Yeah, because rook here takes knight, g4. after knight, then knight, f, knight h5. And then for to play rook takes g4, which is the second exchange already. So knight f4, queen d1. Difficult story. Actually, rook d8 is possible here, but then rook d2, right? Mm-hmm. Let's see the other boards, how Vidit is doing on board yes. two. Well, White has these double pawns, but at the same time he's pressing. Yeah, but then uh, the Black Knights are very grouped, so... Of course, White uh, has done everything right, he, he's active, he has... Uh, but Black is also compact. You cannot improve the... Um, the regrouping easily for either uh, player. Yeah, it seems like uh, it's it's hard to crack Black's position. Yes, of course, Black. Okay, Black could think of a six b five maybe to. What about playing uh, Queen g three? So you let them take a pawn, no? After all, to put pressure and after, try to take. After the whole uh, abstract discourse, no, about. Uh, Queen e5, maybe, no? If Queen e5, I think knight g4. Oi, had not easy to. Not easy to. Oh, you, 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 yes. I take it back. <coughs> I don't want to go c5. So well, maybe, maybe. That is understandable, but maybe black has to do uh, to, it. No, but maybe I have to, to live without the pawn. Let's say knight e6. Yes. But after knight e6, knight f5. Ah, so you don't take the... Take no, 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 the no, 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 then, then I don't like it. So I have to wait to... Well, knight h5 is possible. Knight h5, okay. Knight h5, so if I have to go back and he goes... The knight f4, so. the knight f4, even. To go to e6 and c5. Actually, he went back. 
Uh, he had his knights just to see how he was maneuvering. He went knight e6, knight f3, f6. And here black went knight f7, queen f2, and now black went knight g7. Hmm. And what about b rook d3? Rook d3 and then trying to go rook d2, queen d2? Or of rook d2 and the queen to d1? Yeah. Okay, but maybe then, queen uh, d2 and the knight g4. An edge for to to be also to have it also in in the picture. Well, I'm focusing on the yeah. d6 pawn. If is it possible? Is there any way that I could uh, take that? Of course, White would be much more happy to have this pawn on b3. Well, then, then you would not then focus on the d6 <laughs> pawn. You will play bishop b2 and focus and on the f6 no. pawn. <laughs> but uh, not an easy position. Let's look what board on board three with Erika is playing with the black pieces. Rook A1. Black is trying to equalize. So white is. But white is better. Better a bit, no? White is better a bit. Half, half a pawn up, no? Yeah. And then board four, we see a very complex position. Looks like English. It was a Sicilian, though. Okay. With three bishop b5, but... Uh, ah, the bishop this, a4 yeah, thing. Yeah, yes. this, this was the bishop a4 thing. Right. And now we have this. Yeah, it could be English, Which easily. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, the system c4, e5, all the knights out, e4. White is going down e4. in time, only 13 minutes. It's not a position where you ha you need it so much to calculate and so on, but eventually it can open up. Yes. Well, so one question is, how is the bishop on c6? Is he strong or um, just a spectator? <laughs> well, once it's going to be opening up, it will be very good. Then it's going to go Because open. Because I'm not sure who is to move here. Uh, why just move b4, no? It's uh, knight f3. <coughs> no, knight just, th just now knight f3 was played by the black. Uh -huh. Yes, because the threat was knight xc5. And then the position would become static and uh, maybe the bishop would be not that good. So this is why, this is why I asked. So uh, he took on f3, I assume, I assume queen f3. Queen f3. And well, the same question. I think my black will go somewhere d7, let's say, and he will really look for... d5 or b5? Both b, are nice, but eventually this bishop on c6 will be very powerful. Strong, no? Because but white then, will not be able to stop opening yes. up. Because if d5, then okay, maybe white can arrange e5. I'm still not clear what he has achieved, no? I just move back with the bishop. Yes, yes. I like it with black, actually. Yes. No, the, uh, my question about the bishop was because I saw that white threatens to take twice on e5. And then the bishop, mm, f3 just consolidated everything. Yeah. And then no, white has no problems. But uh, now, of course, white could have some problems. Okay. So he went bishop e5, then bishop a4. And then he still gave the bishop for the knight, no? It's that game. Well, I don't know, it was something like this, e6, d3, c4, knight c3, yeah, and somehow later on, much later on, he just uh, did not put bishop on c2 and d4, but eventually, he... Aha, uh -huh. so black brought his knight he to... took see. it only now, a few moves ago. So this is somehow logical to control, uh, yes. Queen e3, rook d8. Mm -hmm. H1. Knight d7 probably, no? H6, A3, knight d7. Now he wants to go something like knight d5 to get the other knight on c6 and... Uh, yeah, to get to the d4 the knight. Yes. Knight d2, bishop f6, and queen f3. Bishop f6, queen f3, bishop f6. And basically here he decided to take, which was mm -hmm. quite logical, because if once black uh, occupies the d4, mm -hmm. what is this a4 bishop doing there? Mm -hmm. So he took on c6 and now... And he didn't no, take on e5. He didn't take on e5. He played before, okay. 
He did not play a take on e5. Well, black is uh, not worse at all after knight e5. Either. No, no, but I, I'm thinking I of mean, safety. In such, a, such a position. Yeah, things but can go wrong. F3, yeah, but I'm uh, I'm, think, I'm trying to play it safely with white. Yeah, but still, probably it's very not not pleasant. I believe. Bishop g3 or no well, rook g rook d6. Rook d8, queen d7. Somehow yeah, I, white I agree. Has to I be agree. No, black is out of play. It's black who is who is playing, right? But now uh, there are uh, pawn uh, breaks inside. Right now, knight f3, queen f3, queen d7, and black is having a very nice position, I believe. So how we are standing there by position wise? On board one uh, after knight, knight f4, still. Right still thinking, thinking, no? Yeah. And I think maybe now we have a move. Knight, knight g4. g4. So he wanted to do things at once. Okay, because if bishop g4, he has knight h2. Knight e2. Takes. Win. C1, for example. Let's see, knight g4. We did not see this move, knight g4. No, we're trying to prepare it. Well, knight h5 is possible. And knight e3. Isn't it the only move? Knight g3, no? Yes. Yes, but it's the only move, no? Maybe. Takes. Takes with the knight. Takes. Okay, and at least white has some stability. Well, Actually. material down, but of course if he reaches out to f5, mm -hmm. it seems like can be some compensation. If you take right? on e3, then okay, what can uh, make me happier than that? Only an exchange <laughs> down, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I, I compare with uh, the given circumstances. So what happens if, let's say, rook h8? Would white go for bishop f7, capturing but the let's, pawn? Let's say check, just knight e5, no? Yeah, knight I five. thought uh, check, then takes, takes, king f6. Ah, the king can go to f6, I didn't see that square. I know queen takes b7, maybe I also threaten some checks. But then mate on but c1. I think some, some... Some mate on c1, no? Mate is happening, yeah. Uh-huh, okay. I mean, this bishop... I know. Is something that uh, I know. I'm happy to work with. I know. So now knight f5. Okay. So in rook h8, I'm wondering how. Because there is no threat yet, right? Yes. So queen h4, queen h6 is not possible. That's why I was wondering what happens Just if I can no. uh, take here. Maybe uh, Pantella blundered this opportunity for white? Because black cannot take on e2, right? Because bishop takes e2. And that looks a bit dangerous, no? But okay, if bishop g4... Yeah, bishop g4, knight h2. I'm surprised if white can escape. What about f5? Maybe f5. And if e takes f5, I want to go queen f5. So to look around on the first on rank. Yes. And on f2, exactly. So rook g4. Ah, you also want a um, back rank mate, yes. Rook g4. But the thing is that if I have to go to f6, it's not nice. You can also take rook f4 mm -hmm. and try to save the game. Mm -hmm. So knight g4, knight g4, bishop g4. Are you promoting already? <laughs> knight, knight f2, knight h2.
Well, it seems like uh, White is doing fine here. What about... 92, Queen C1, Knight G6, 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 okay. If Knight G6, Rook G4, check here, and Rook H8. What about this? Thirteen Queen takes F1, as far as I yeah. understand. Good eye. Yes. So if Rook D2. Okay. White is very much on the edge, no? Uh, yeah, yeah. Throw a pawn up now. I was thinking to play rook h6 and... Yeah, I go rook h6. Bishop f7. Bishop f7. But then queen f1. Ah, no, queen f1 doesn't work, okay. Check. Aha, you do it this queen way. F1. But I still don't see the mate because okay. check and king, G, king g3. And it seems like uh, I'm going too far. Yeah, a bit, no? What a look it was by another wreck. <laughs> 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 Focusing how he's going to be saving this game. Yeah, rook d2 it seems. But after rook d2, hold on. Rook d2... It seems like white is just uh, surviving this, right? Probably, you know, among all this variation, uh, there, are, there is some win for black, but uh, uh, Harry has to, to find it. So Maybe you can black. check, and now we check with the computer. What does it say? Okay, so apparently bishop yeah, takes we g4. Yeah, we gave up. What is the evaluation? Bishop takes g4, black wins. Black wins. Bishop takes g4. Okay, knight h2. Knight h2, but okay, let's see if it's like this. Knight takes e2. Yeah, bishop e2. Bishop e2. Queen c1. Let him stabilize, let it stabilize a bit. Queen c1 or queen d2 have the same result, queen d1 apparently. If queen c1, why not? Ah, if bishop f1, f5. We have moves on the board. Bishop g4 is on the board. Knight h2. Sorry, queen c1? Queen c1, if bishop f1, then f5. Seems to be winning. Ah, because bishop f2 after that. Yes, so... Takes bishop uh, f2? If... Uh, but why is it good? f5, if takes, yes, we have to understand that. Bishop f2 is the clearest. King f2. Queen f4, knight f3, of course the variation continues. At least now the bishop is safe on g4 and, and e4. he has e4, yes. E4. Queen e6, I don't know, okay, maybe uh, um, maybe white has some with queen e6. Knight e3, not knight h2. Knight e3 Knight e3 was white. Knight e3. Queen e6. So knight e3 he went. But bishop is then the bishop on uh, g4 is just alive. Bishop is 3 Yeah, bishop e3, rook e3. Knight h5. And knight h5. And uh, bishop e2. Yes. Aha, aha. Bishop e2 takes, 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 takes. He wants to go rook h8. Well. Actually, uh, after uh, taking only 3 takes takes and now rook h8 uh, no it's not the only winning move but but uh, why is it winning rook g4 if rook g3 rook g4 rook g4 rook g3 g3 but it's just a moment if rook no it uh, it's a misunderstanding of course but still he thinks so uh, probably it's a, a problem with the engine again rook h8 no, he first claims that rook h8 is winning and then... Winning uh, for white after rook g4. Yeah, but here, here it, it gives uh, rook h8 as one of the moves winning for black. Mm -hmm. That's... Uh, okay, it's uh, the online uh, version. Okay. 
So maybe uh, not so reliable. It's strange. He, he, still keep, uh, he keeps still saying that Rook H8 is so the best move. So if Rook H8, what else is possible? He mentions Rook A D8, King H8. Okay, I don't buy King H8. Well, King H8, maybe it works because it goes out from this bishop Rook mm -hmm. G4. Maybe. But it's a question. If King H8 is the only winning move, then it's not going to be easy, so easy to find it. That's also Rook A D8 uh, makes some sense, actually. But after Rook D8, again, uh, Rook G4, Rook G4 no? takes Rook G3. No, mm, this is a problem with the uh, program. He gives rook eighty eight as uh, rook eighty eight as one of the winning moves, and then if you play it, then uh, rook takes g four. Uh. Rook g four takes. Okay, rook the G4. only the only move which doesn't lose from the winning ones is king h eight. <laughs> okay, so ninety three. Ninety three right now. Let's think. What is he it's going? It's funny. To do? We this one of the rare occasions we want to use the engine, and it gives. Uh, as such uh, problems. So after knight uh, e2, bishop e2, f5. And but after, maybe yeah. F5, maybe knight f5. Sorry? Maybe knight f5 even. Bishop g4 would lose to bishop e3. Okay, nice. But okay, white can just take ef. Also knight takes e5, maybe maybe that's dangerous, no? There is there is some mate without the queen, no? If knight f5, maybe knight f5, rook f5. But he can go ef. Well, I'm not sure rook g4 is not Rook g4, possible. bishop f2, that, that was um, and the question. King f1. King f1 and the rook is hanging, okay. Everything is hanging. Okay. Well, queen g4 is possible, but it's still not winning. So let's see knight e3. Knight e3, both players have 15 minutes only on the clock. Move 24. Wow. Well, um, Nodir Beck uh, is not going to sell his uh, skin. Uh, uh, not easy. Cheaply, no? About takes, takes, knight h5, bishop e2, right? <coughs> this is the case. What do we have on the board? Bishop takes e3. Bishop takes e3 was done. Rook e3 on the board. Now the question is how Hari wants to win this game. Can he go king f6? Well, king h8 was suggested, which is, uh, which is actually maybe the best. Uh, yeah, king f6, I was... Queen b7 or something, right? Mm -hmm. But maybe king h8 is just king really the safe. Though. Safe way to do it. And apparently, and f3 uh, is not possible to knight, knight h3. h3. Yes, so this is uh, actually against all these moves: uh, rook h8, rook d8, the so-called winning moves. Uh, the computer gives the main line uh, f3, knight h3. Yes. To prove that rook d8 and rook h8 are winning. Uh, but of course, um, oh, it is not forced to do that. So probably king well, after h8, king no? h8, I don't know what he's going to be doing. Yeah. Because it's only one pawn for the piece. Yes, if king f6, queen takes b7 is not clear. Mm. Yeah, we, we I take mean, it's second. much better to have the king on safety, We take a right? second pawn, uh, we have some threats, okay. Life is not that bad. Let's see what happens. But maybe before the big time trouble, we're going to go for a very short break and we'll be back in a few minutes.
Welcome, everybody. My name is Yanni Pomnishi, former World Chess Champion. Are starting a new course here for Chessable. A very special Chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. Inspiring safety record. Strong balance sheet. World class resource assets. Groundbreaking innovation. Steady and sustainable contribution to nation's social, economical, and environmental development. NLCIL Navaratna CPSE under the administrative control of Ministry of Coal, Government of India. A corporate with a human nature, creating wealth for the well being.
We are back with round six of the Olympiad, 44th Olympiad here in China. In India, and we are very exciting things. So let's see, jump into Gukesh game because right now he's going to be queening just in a second. So let's see the board, what has happened over there. Because there are really action is going on as in many other boards as well. So let's see what has happened just now. Gukesh is queening. Black goes king g7. What happened with white structure? Well, when you have a piece. <coughs> well, that's less important, no? Yeah. So let's see how is it. Isn't uh, how is it winning? Is it winning? Well, if black manages to go rook e6 and bishop b6, it looks like a fortress, no? No. And the pawn on e4 is not important. Well, let's say maybe queen e5 and queen taking e5. on h7 and c7. Yes, that sounds... Uh, let's say rook f6, no, or what? Rook f6, rook f6, f6. Side. But then also the a5 pawn is going to be possible to take. It's true, but uh, yeah. Thanks. You'll get a pawn on uh, a pass pawn on the queen side, yes. So let's say something different, king g8 or what? I, I don't have good moves after queen e5. If now bishop b6, then okay, uh, queen e5, and b4, a4, a5. Or check, I don't know, yes. Check. Queen e5. Check. F6 is not something I was happy with. Uh, no, but yes. I think they should be winning, right? Yes, a4, a4, b, yes. Okay, so queen e5, check. So let's see again the position itself. Queen e5 was played. The point, if king g8, then queen takes e7, and the, the bishop, 
the rook cannot move and there is also the threat queen c8 or queen b7 king g6 maybe but then queen takes e4 rook check. f6 is on the board rook f6 looks like the only move yes After rook f6, I imagine queen takes a5, but the royal bishop b6 in, and it looks like a draw. What about taking on taking e3? Taking on e3, yes. <laughs> okay. There is queen e1. Queen e1, rook f3. Rook f3 and f5 after that. Exactly. Oh. So actually maybe Who is black better? is playing Who is for better, us. yes. So rook f6, what white is going to be playing? What about queen takes e7? Because right now bishop cannot take because of queen e Aha. g3. Okay, then he can, he has to go bishop b6 probably, no? So, queen c7, bishop b6, queen e5, let's say. Of course, it's, uh, it's not funny for black, but maybe he has some better chances to defend the... But, the one second, I go queen g3, let's say, and then go back to queen e5. Okay, so you win a tempo, no? Okay, rook g6. Sometimes tempos yeah. count, then yes, pawns yes, even yes. more. Yes, rook, rook f6. In e4. Yeah, so probably go h6 just to have... Um, you'll get that pawn to b5, maybe. And the question is uh, if you can win. But wh why, why h6? No, I have to go uh, rook e6 to forget about the uh, pins. Queen g5 check. Okay. Queen g5, rook g6 will be the only move. And now he took on a5 because if bishop is 3 then... It was essential to take the pawn on a5 because if he only takes c5 uh, it may be a fortress. Queen e5. Now if bishop is 3 then there is queen e5. Queen c3 is a little better. Oh, it's the same <laughs> thing. Okay, okay, okay. Queen a5. No, with uh, a pawn missed, with a pawn missing... Um, I, I think believe. this was missed. Some, somehow Sargisian blundered that uh, it can be taken this way and that he cannot capture the e3 pawn. Queen a5, so black has to play bishop b6. b6 looks like. Then queen e5 check. King, let's say, goes mm, g8, somewhere. Okay. Okay, so okay, let's say rook, rook. We have rook g1 check, I believe. Mm. On the board. So he tries to do something. King c2. Is it going to be the victory of Gukesh number 6? Or uh, draw number five for Sargisian. This is what I wanted to say. One thing will be clear: none of they, they will be not able to keep both the previous uh, pace. King. Queen e five. We stay with this game because this is, can be crucial in this match. We have a draw already on board too. Sarin Niha made a draw, which we looked before against Malkumian. And bishop b6, which is the only move in this position, not to lose the bishop. Bishop b6, so let's see whether queen is going to e5, b4, c3. There is black going to, or b5 maybe, queen e5 check. 
Actually, next movie is going to be A4 and A5. And I think it's Bishop, uh, game over. Bishop takes history, it doesn't look like a big And threat. it's going to be a sensation that mm-hmm. Gukesh wins his sixth victory mm-hmm. in this Olympiad. Maybe he shouldn't have given those checks. Well, I think after the A5 pawn is uh, gone from the possession of black. No, yeah, no, I was thinking, but there is no fortress. So, I mean, if I take on A5 after it, first of all, you can go B4, A4, A5 to forget about anything. But even so, that is no fortress. With the rook on e6, let's say, and pawn on e6. Well, Sargisian understands that uh, there are huge problems for him. He has under uh, five minutes, but this is not the main issue of this game and in his position. We had, uh, well, by later the way, Hare Krishna, By the way, Hare Krishna found uh, uh, a clearer win. Let's go there for one knight, moment. Knight g6 he had because uh, after bishop e2 there was bishop e6. In this moment, after bishop e2, he there was bishop, go bishop e6. e6. What a nice idea! Yes, only uh, because white had played a4. Yes, <laughs> never it's play, possible. never play a4 in this opening. Well, this is what happens when your pieces are unprotected, right? Yes, yes. Bishop e6, queen b5, queen f4, queen c5. So Hare Krishna is also going to be winning. Look at Sargisyan's expression. He's very unhappy. We are going to go back and see how the game went because uh, when we had a short break, we have very uh, seldomly break, but I had time to go out to the playing hall and just to look a little bit, a few minutes, the players, it's silent. I had a little nostalgic feeling. <laughs> Not here from the commentary room, but that I went there just for a few minutes. It uh, was nice to see the people. Of course, it's full of silence. People are walking, playing, and they are happy, some of them with their positions, some of them. You see the frustration now. Some of them busy with their thoughts, some others are trying to get some strength or inspiration by looking at others, smiling, chatting uh, about weather or whatever. What about moves sometimes? Okay. Well, Maybe. of course it's illegal <laughs> to speak with anybody with each other. Uh, no, but uh, at that time uh, this was not illegal. I think that the first time, uh, the first time it was in... Um, my, my first tournament was in Tilburg, 93 or 94, when they announced uh, that whoever will be seen saying a single word uh, to his opponent, uh, to, to, to anybody, would be eliminated from the tournament. And I think there had been some incident in a big tournament. I believe it was, uh, that was the incident. It was Shirov who st- won a brilliant game against Seravan. And he was, he sacrificed the rook, so he was so happy and that he told to somebody, I sacrificed the rook and went out to, to relax. And somebody heard him and complained that, uh, okay, look, uh, Shirov is, uh, Shirov was still very young. And after that, uh, there was some scandal and so on. And um, after that, they decided no more talking. No, no, Shirov was just, you know, he was a boy uh, happy yes. with his combination. He said, just go and look at my position or something like that it was. And um, nothing happened to him. He won the game. But after that, they decided it was not allowed to... Well, we can see the players here that they are focusing, sitting almost all the time. We see Gukash also. I would love to talk with him after this game and have his thoughts on uh, the Olympiad and how he's taking the, this incredible success up to this point because of course they knew this young team and uh, Anand emphasized it that he's very curious about what the B team will be doing and uh, of course it's always a great pleasure to see those youngsters see their talent be unfolded going over 2700 and uh, 
to see them grow from one day to another and uh, well I have feeling for them that as for me it was also something very special my first Olympiad playing a huge score but as far as we see that Gukesh is going to be still having a full score after round six but I believe um, on this, okay of course for you it was something uh, unheard of before uh, your performance in uh, in 88. I mean, three sisters, uh, two of them very young, uh, and so on. But I don't think that uh, uh, the result of uh, India too is uh, uh, surprising anybody. I think it, uh, it's some sort of uh, expected result. Okay, maybe they did even better than than uh, in their best dreams, but uh, still, I don't think it's uh, such a big surprise. I mean. Uh, well, it's clear that uh, people were expecting that they are going to be playing very well, but the fact is that from the very start, Gukesh uh, shows also a very good uh, convincing play to start with. He won against Shirov and yes. some other games also. So you can see the power in his play, while, for example, with Pragnananda, you, you don't see it yet. But they, they have, okay, the, Pragnananda, who actually has achieved some results uh, earlier. But okay, one out of five. And he won his game, and yes. the first game is finished. In the, no, the second game, because now India is leading one and a half, half. And uh, yeah, Tambi says the truth, white one. And Sargisian lost, which is a very upsetting story. I'm a for future winner. <laughs> for Armenia, let's see on board three what is going on. Because right here on board three, actually, Armenia can equalize because they have a pawn up. <coughs> We've just seen the playing hole. You always see it below us. Uh -huh. So here, Black has a pawn up, and they know. They are fighters. They know. He knows that he has to equalize this match. Let's see on board four what's going on. And on board four, Armenia is pressing. So still, there is nothing lost for Armenia even though that India too is leading one and a half. But of course it's going White to be... White made some progress in this game, no? With opposite colored bishops. Well, it seems like uh, there was an exchange of pawns. White had a pawn on mm -hmm. f4 previously, mm -hmm. black had a pawn on b5. And, and the pawn on a4 is in some danger, no? Absolutely, I think. Uh, well, White can capture it right now after we rook check, a5 we check. Yes, with a yes. check and take yes. on a4. So... But still, I think White is uh, probably may consider also, and we have a huge time trouble from Black side. Rook, ah, rook C2 is not possible, but okay. Rook D4, rook D4 maybe he wants. Well, Rook D4 is possible, but also we shouldn't forget that this there is, this, there is uh, a pawn. Yeah. pawn, so maybe White mm -hmm. is also considering to regroup his bishop to C5 and C7, mm -hmm. for example, because the two rooks can uh, give checkmate in mm -hmm. such positions, right? Mm -hmm. Also, bishop c3 is possible. It's move 37, mm -hmm. where we see the black rook is controlling the fifth rank for the moment, but what about bishop c3? Let's see. Can white go bishop c3 and put more pressure? Or black is going to be playing defend rook e6? The, defend but the, then no. I think white may be winning on the spot with d7, Let and nothing bishop can a7. stop bishop a5. But uh, and rook e7? After rook e7, I'm afraid there is something bishop uh, f6 and check, and something will happen. Bishop I f6. Bishop f6, and then. Uh, take how? Like rook this? Rook b2, and after that, white gives a check and captures the rook. Mm -hmm. And if, this is if not take possible. with the other rook, it's, uh, it's also the same, no? If it's the same story. It's, it's the same, it's the the same, same mechanism. So mm -hmm. after bishop c3, maybe rook e6 is not possible. If not rook e6, then maybe rook c5. Black can try to save himself, but then bishop takes f6. Why not to rook capture d7. the pawn? Rook d7. Yes, black is trying to hold on, and this is the only possible move for black. But wouldn't it be the... Wouldn't be the uh, the pawn on a4 be tastier than that on f6? Well, I'm just wondering that if uh, which pawn to to bite. If rook a5, king c4, let's say white takes on a4, and after that going back to a7. And starting all over again, and um, well, what did black achieve in, in the meantime? 
Well, he can control on d7, I think. He, he can blockade. Maybe it's not going to be enough. Let's say rook d7. Rook a8, let's say. Uh, just... Just slowly. Mm, yes. Graining. The rook will get to c7 anyway. Mm. So... Well, white uh, is going to be winning this game, I mm. think. And this it's game is very close, very close. Let's see what's going on. King f1 was played. Because after g5, knight h3, bishop c3, this, these are the moves happened. Mm -hmm. It's only move 33, 32 bishop c2. So why is it not possible to take? Because if takes, then bishop a4 and the pawn will be queening. So maybe Sargisian will not have to be upset for too long because he's watching the other games going. Mm -hmm. And he sees that there is a good chance that they may even this way that he lost they can win the match, which would be very important so for Armenia. Could, Take the lead. She could call it a gambit in that... Uh, we gambited one point to, to win the well, match, but of course it's far from it. We talked about it, how difficult it is to, ble to play on board one, and it happens in many teams that uh, someone is kind of suffering on board one, and now Sargisian has minus one. At the same time, of course, everybody is playing on a upper board and yes, they are collecting yes, the yes, points so yes. this is really a team competition so just because someone is losing it may mean that you have a bad day but it can compensate you quite a bit if your team is winning and if here armenia wins both of these games which is still running it means that they are going to be the sole leaders before the free day it's very exciting, but for now, white played king f1, there was an exchange, bishop takes takes, black is going to be capturing on h3, and it should be very much winning, isn't uh, it? Yes, but okay, the pawn on a6 is still is a tempo. under attack is a tempo. right now, both of the pawns are attacked, g5 uh, okay. and a6, so black has, has to, to make... take, play f5, no? Let's see if it's okay and winning for black, a5, a5 king, king d2, d2. knight... Maybe knight d7. Ah, you or don't knight want to on f4, on f4, 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 no? Exactly. Ah, maybe the fortress is better with the knight on c5, so that the queen, uh, queen side is also safe. Maybe you are well, right, maybe knight d7 is the move. possible knight d7 simply going to c5 and or to e5, then play h6, then bring the king, and oh, life I, is I like it on c5 right. because the pawn on a5 is safe. After my knight f4, there could be some Well, play. I'm afraid for white that uh, this is not the only win for black. Yes, Probably but if, there are if, several ways. if you see the knight on c5, you resign. I mean, okay. This is the position we see right okay. now on the position. Okay. So probably white bishop has B5 to play maybe, no? bishop or b5 or, or bishop f5. Yes. Either way, and then let's say, so it's very important for white to not make black allowing to stop knight d7, knight c5, or knight e5. Black can go knight d5, let's go king d2, going knight f4, white has king to go c2. king c2, trying to reach out to look for counter chances from his perspective, let's say king g7, king b3, not clear who is going to be faster, h5, king a4, king f6, white goes let's say bishop c2 or bishop c8, it's not clear because in that no, case this, this and, uh, d3 is coming. Okay. So if let's say white is going back to c2, this I only. have a feeling it should be a win for black even this way in some way or another. But still, there are some well, chances there is, for there white. Is, there is knight takes h3 simple, no? Very quick. Knight takes h3. b3, bishop d1, probably knight, knight takes h3, h3, king it's goes too quick. king a5, knight f2. Bishop goes away. This is not possible to g4. Mm -hmm. So white has to be going bishop b3, d2. King comes back, probably g4. What, what? Ah, ah, you, g4. Ah, you want to win like this, okay. I think it's, uh, this is the simplest. Uh, I was, I was thinking d3, win. which may be also enough, no? d3 and the knight probably. Mm. Probably, but, but if you can push yes, the yes, pawns, probably yeah. it's easier to. <laughs> I can to, understand you, yes. <laughs> to have the pass pawn. Yes. So a5, this seems to be winning. Let's see what's going on in the meantime in this game. They reached move 40. And uh, he didn't take the pawn. And uh, no pawn was taken in this situation because let's go back after rook e5. White played rook b2. Somehow he wanted to chase the king. 
as much as possible. Now we see that king e6 would lead to win, to a checkmate. Sudden, a sudden, uh, so after rook d2, white got this position after king e4. Let's see if he can give checkmate because it's still not there because after king, rook c4, still black king can be moving up to e3 and it's not checkmate there. But I remember uh, that you quoted um, uh, your former trader, as, as my Parashvili, who said that, uh, well, mate may well not uh, be there, but a pawn is a pawn. <laughs> okay, I think uh, it was about middle game, but here also, if uh, he doesn't deliver mate, well, the there is, is an central. option, for example, let's go g4, for example, bishop e6 and play king g3 with an idea to go rook c1 and rook e1 checkmate. Okay. Can black do anything against it? Okay, so your attacking spirit is back completely. Well, and the, con the counter attacking F5. also. F5. Rook C1. Well, maybe anyway, Rook C1. F4, you're right. King, King F2, F3, King G3. Exactly. And we had a very interesting exchange of um, ideas, but. Uh, um, well, this can be decisive. Let's uh -huh. see if this works all the way. If, let's say, G4 black goes to D7, maybe. Anyway, King By the way, is, is Rook C1 a move? Ah, but no, no, you need to, to control F4, okay. Oh, that's also possible. No, 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 but you, you need to control F4, okay, okay, understand. Well, if, if she saw this, then uh, okay, then bravo. If you had this in mind. Well, Armenian team, they are extremely, extremely tough. Incredible team spirit, and you can see the board uh, balance in rating actually because uh, by the way, seeded number 12 and uh, India to seeded number 11 according to rating mm -hmm. points, both overperforming exactly. Both but if you want to win a medal, you, you have anyway to have to overperform <laughs> unless yes. you're USA <laughs> and you're just <laughs> you can still underperform and win, no? <laughs> yeah. But uh, underperform just a bit, not no, too much. No, you have to overperform when you ha you want yeah, to yes. win your uh, medal. That's very clear that yes. it happens all the time because the the challenge and the competition is so hard and so tense. But let's see. After King E4, I think uh, White of Hanisian, he's calculating very sharply how he can win. He knows it. I'm pretty sure that he knows it that he has to win. Because, of course, the players are noticing it, what is happening on the other boards. But it's also important that you're the kind of player that knows that, okay, one, what is going on on the other boards in, by any mean. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you need the draw only to win and secure the victory for the team. And then you have yes. to know that and you have to be aware of that. Actually, why I found... Um Olympia is more stressful than, for instance, the Romanian team championship, especially in the times we played on 10 boards. We had two lady women boards, two junior boards and six. Uh, uh, when there are two boards or even six, you cannot follow the whole match. It was not that I, I didn't care, but when you are playing in, on four boards like at the Olympiad, you follow everything and you, you leave the emotions of, of uh, every game of your colleagues. And that can be very, you know, it, it's beautiful, it's nice, it, it also gives some, some energy because it, it's that we all do this, the same. We give to each other, we change some things. But all in all, it's, it's really, you know, um, uh, exhausting. And uh, When I was not playing in the team, uh, uh, well, which was not very often because most of the time <laughs> I played almost all yes. the games. When I played in the ladies, I played. 13 games and out of 14 and later on also I played at least 12 games usually in my Olympiads, 11, 12. I, I was playing really a lot. But in those days I was not going into the playing hall. I was staying in the hotel, watching of course the games online. But uh, I, I thought it's just uh, very energy consuming to go no, there. No, if you're not playing, yes. I believe that some of my captains even in one of the rare, very rare days, I mean, once in two years, when I had a free day, uh, he would prohibit me to come to the playing. Yes. So let's see some other games, because here we understand that objectively, 
Uh, actually, we have a few moves there in the other game. King went all the way to g4 and trying to look for some counter chances, but we understand that in both of these games, the Armenians should be winning. Let's see, we have, we see something. Let's go for the ladies section just quickly to see what has happened because also Tanya's game was finished. We see it was a draw. Vashali won on board three. I see that uh, after all, I believe what we were watching in this point, she did play she, before she, she the winning that. move mm, and then yes. she collected some material advantage over there. That was an important part. So India woman team is leading 2-1 and there is still one game to go. There seems to be that Koneru is having a better position. Yes, it, this, was, this was the relatively good Benoni, which now is not such a good Benoni. Because so, the bishop on d5 is dominating. So the lady is going to be winning over there. Let's see what has happened in this very interesting game between Bulmaga from Romanian side against Muzichuk. We see it also. The camera is there on this game. It seems that it's extremely difficult for black. It yes. was expected that something like this will end up mm -hmm. in, on the board. Mm -hmm. But still there are some small chances, don't you think you so? You still have to win. The, the king is uh, cut somehow. But in the, uh, in the other hand, it's important for white that uh, there she no, has yes. very powerful bishops oh, yes. in the center. Because not only the knights, but the bishops are also extremely powerful. So the question is, let's say after king b6, how white starts to be able to push the pawns, right? Because the king is, um, would be, if it would be on b4, then it would be an easy work. Yes, yes. But she's still far away from there with her king. And for example, after b4. Oh, how is uh, rook d3 check? Rook d3 check, for example. King, king goes to c1, I think, and I can reach out if, to b2. If you take on d5, it's probably not enough, no? King b5, no, or is it? No, or is it? Be, it's three pawns. It's three, but they are blocked like this. I can, can't I? Um, you want to say king c4, yes. d6, and bishop, bishop d7. d7? Yes. And in the meantime, we jump to the other Muzichu game where Anna won. Yeah, the bishop never came out. And no, uh, well, beautiful knight. located this knight on f6. Mm -hmm. Everybody would envy that one. <laughs> I believe so. They lead. Ukraine is leading one and a half half because Cosma against Buxite was a draw. On board four, we see still a time trouble move 38. Let's see what's going on here. This is the Benoni. Oh, no, it looks. Um, well, it's a pawnless, no? But the knight on c4 is not as uh, beautiful as earlier. Sorry. Well, still, it's a very strong knight. The but question rook, is, rook b8, for instance, no? If how can uh, can white uh, progress, or actually, who well, is better at uh, all, right? Well, if white can hold, <laughs> this can also be a question. No, I don't know. Uh, knight a5, maybe, but it doesn't look like. Well, uh, after knight a5, rook uh, c5, and capturing the g5, ah, so it seems like um, black is mm, having. A maybe black is white. not worse, no? Maybe black has some chances. Yeah. It's, well, it's not that it's so great, I think, oh. because now white is really defending everything. Yeah, but not, not going anywhere. Not going anywhere with white. I no, mean, uh, but yes. you go rook d3 and you're not worse either because yeah, yeah. you go rook g3 and stuff No, like but that. you remember the position looked uh, very suspicious for black, uh, the barony with the right on c4. Yes, but in this, looking at it from this perspective, it can easily be the match uh, of 2-2. Two -two yes. Because if... White can convert her advantage. So before maybe it. premature. I'm, I don't know. Maybe maybe she can hold that. But I'm not sure exactly that was correct and it, it was draw where we saw that. We have a short break and we'll come back in a minute.
Welcome, everybody. My name is Jan Pomnishi. Oh, my world chess champion. Are starting a new course here for Chessable. A very special Chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. Inspiring safety record. Strong balance sheet. World class resource assets. Groundbreaking innovation. Steady and sustainable contribution to nation's social, economical, and environmental development. NLCIL Navaratna CPSE under the administrative control of Ministry of Coal, Government of India. A corporate with a human nature, creating wealth for the well being. We have a very special guest, Pantela Hare Krishna. Uh, how are you? How do you feel today? Yeah, I feel good, thank you. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. We yeah. are enjoying your game and others as well. Yeah, today was a good game, uh, uh, or I would say uh, slightly um, strange play by my opponent. Probably he wanted to get something. Uh, some uh, unusual thing just to confuse me but in this process he damaged his uh, um, you know the king pos uh, safety uh, quite a bit um, so yeah it was a pretty interesting uh, game I mean he was trying for some tricks towards the end but uh, I managed to win well this Olympiad must be very special for you as uh, you're leading the A team of India. How is it for you? What kind of feeling when you got to know that India is going to be organizing the Olympiad just a few months ago? So of course uh, I was quite uh, quite happy that uh, it uh, you know India uh, got the chance to host uh, at the last minute also you know it was just three or four months remaining so a lot of things uh, needed to be done and with the current situation you know uh, many things but uh, I uh, am really happy the way uh, it's being organized and uh, I, I hear the same from uh, my colleagues uh, from abroad uh, so that's very nice to hear and um, uh, regarding the team um, so so far we are doing uh, fine and uh, let's uh, i'm hoping that we win today against uh, the uh, youngsters you know uzbekistan <laughs> so uh, most of them are probably half of my age <laughs> or even less <laughs> so it's it's nice to play against the youngsters and uh, very interesting battles you live in, uh, in near prague uh, for a few years already how is it for you when you come back and uh, you see the people being so enthusiastic and chess is picked up everywhere um yeah i um ac actually i'm playing in india after a really long time uh, so my last classical event was uh, in 2004 which i won in world juniors actually uh, so it's nice memories for me and uh, i really like uh, the the support and uh, the craze and attention uh, which team as well as the Olympiad is uh, uh, getting so that's very nice um, and I think uh, it would only increase uh, from here on and it's it's uh, it's really amazing feeling it's hard for me to describe uh, but uh, I'm really happy uh, that uh, chess is uh, getting so much attention uh, in India 
What do you think about the second theme of India? Because, of course, you have so many talents, right? Yes. And right here, probably you knew it from the beginning that it's not clear <laughs> which team is going to be performing. Do you have any rivalry? Actually, <laughs> if there is a chance, I think our fourth team would also be not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in fact, I think pretty good. Um, so uh, I'm um, very happy uh, to, uh, you know, to um, uh, see that the second team is full of youngsters and who is uh, very eager to uh, win every game. And uh, at the same time, you know, uh, when we are playing against each other, it is a, a competition. And um, otherwise, um, you know, I, I just see that uh, it's a tournament and uh, I see them as uh, uh, a team. And uh, we, we have to, whoever plays best with, of course, some luck, uh, will win. And uh, that's what I'm, uh, we are seeing, uh, looking forward. Well, it's very nice to see the team spirit between not only with the different A and yeah. B and C team, but generally uh, with the girls it's, and the it's boys. It's more like we are competitors, uh, but also friends, you know. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, very nice. Yeah. Can we see just for your thoughts, how was it today's game of yours? Where were the crucial moments from your perspective? I feel that the Queen B3 move was a little bit uh, strange as uh, in any case I would go for a short castle and uh, moving the Queen away from D1 gives uh, a very easy play for my Knight uh, on F6 uh, which can jump to H5 which, which is uh, my main idea anyways. Uh, and later on, he, uh, he kind of uh, underestimated my uh, knight, h, knight h5 move after d4, I think. Mm -hmm. This is probably the key. And uh, with the bishop on c4, queen on b3, knight on f3 and knight on f1, the knight on d2 can't really jump anywhere uh, useful, you know. So, uh, it's kind of strange, uh, a strange um, uh, way he put his pieces and later on I had to calculate a little bit. Uh, so do you think already at this point black yeah, is better? Yeah, I think black is already doing very so well. So one bad move going yeah. away from d1, it gives all opportunities yes. for black. Because when you play bishop g5, uh, uh, just one move uh, uh, is a lot, you know, one tempo is a lot. Uh, yeah. And uh, I mean, you can do this with the bishop on c1, it wouldn't be uh, such so a painful. big deal. But bishop on g3, <laughs> yes. Yeah, and later on, any chance? Uh, did you give any chance? Because I, I thought I think around h4 he had uh, some chance, I believe. Uh, maybe After maybe h4. rook e d2 or something like that. Uh, to, to, uh, to take hg3, knight g3 and knight hf1. Something like this. Trying to hold. Yeah, yeah, you know, position, so h2, right? h1 is uh, locked. Well, it looks uh, yeah. badly dangerous. Yes, yes. Your bishop <laughs> from this is yeah. on a7. No, no, this uh, just to sit uh, in front of this bishop on a7, it's uh, really scary. I mean, all I need is to bring that rook uh, from a8 and uh, game is over. Yeah. Of course, it's not going to be an easy task, um, but that's what I will. I will do it. Was this your first game or you played already many before? Rapid and uh, You mean against... Uh, against, uh, against uh, uh, this is my first, first game, game against him. And uh, I know he was on 5 out of 5 before yeah. the game. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't really... But you're also in good form. Uh, hopefully, yes. <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, and uh, I didn't really pay much uh, attention. Um, but I mean, he played really good games uh, here so far. Um, perhaps he was not. Uh, he was not. Uh, he he did not know the variation and the dynamics so well. I feel so. Uh, I I I worked on this, so it was a little bit easier for me. Yeah, when did you arrive to India actually before the Olympics? Um, I came uh, like uh, 10 to 12 days before. Uh, we had a training camp and I wanted to um, stay with the team to understand a little bit. Uh, um, I mean, you know the guys, but you always want to understand their uh, mindset, the mood and etc. And to take some inputs from them, uh, which is useful for me of course and uh, to give some inputs to them and uh, I think uh, that helped me for sure uh, we also have uh, trainers who are helping us um, obviously some of this preparation was um, 
done by them. <laughs> not you all the of credit them. to some other members of the yeah, team. Yeah, as well. yeah, no, no, for sure they they uh, they really worked. Uh, uh, I mean, not just this line, but uh, every day we have uh, uh, trainers working uh, working for us. Uh, obviously, you know, players have to stay uh, fresh for really long. Uh, it's a long tournament. I mean, you played so many Olympiads. Um, so it, uh, it so that we stay fresh and play uh, nice games, hopefully more. <laughs> well, I know you have some courses yourself on chessable. How much does it help your preparation? Because I know that people take it so seriously. Their openings, they are revealing some of the secrets. Yeah, I did take uh, all my courses seriously, and uh, I I have. Uh, used my uh, like when I um, when I released my first course the French against French I did play the uh, the course quite some time but the main issue is sometimes you don't remember your own course <laughs> <laughs> so some of your fans who buy your course they remember hey, and, Shachi, then, what did you do? and then uh, and then uh, uh, I anyway win let's say and then they are like, oh, but you saved something, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a small problem. But uh, now I uh, I did play um, uh, many uh, games which I have, uh, you know, made chessable courses. Uh, I think I made three, one on endgame and two on openings, uh, French and uh, Taimanov. Um, so all of the all of these uh, openings I have played uh, myself. Yeah, I think that's quite amazing that on these courses yourself, Giri, many other players, they really show the secret of their their knowledge because there are so many dynamics in the game and it's always changing from day to day. So you feel that it's uh, no problem to share it. That's wonderful. What are you going to be doing uh, on the free day? Because tomorrow it's a free day. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm going to um, look look around uh, Mahabalipuram uh, where we are currently. So I, I would like to go and see some uh, some things, um, and uh, then of course uh, rest a little bit uh, because uh, you have a lot of uh, important games uh, coming uh, in the next rounds. Well, thank you very much for visiting us in the studio, and thank good you. luck it's for my your pleasure. team. Thank, thank you. you. We are going to come back. Yeah, good. <laughs>
Hi, we are back now after having the special guest of Hare Krishna. And uh, well, let's see, dive in what is happening in the open section of the 44th Chess Olympiad here in Chennai because there are some more results what we had since then because on board one Gokesh won against Sargisyan, we had a draw with uh, uh, Adiban against Tersha Hakian, and then, no, against Sarin Nihal, I'm sorry, Malcomian, and then we have a victory, which when we left it was still going on, so Tersha Hakian won his game against Adiban, which was uh, enough to equalize the match, so it's one and a half, one and a half, and after that, we go on for the fourth game because this game is going to be deciding the match what's going to be. Uh, we thought that G4 was the best move or there was a great opportunity for White after King E4 to play for checkmate, but White decided to go Rook C4. I think King that G4 three. followed by King G3 was just, uh, just finished. Now he has to find moves. Well, uh, this it's, is still, how it's still... It's mo moving around, right? When you have the dynamic of the, the match also, that you see you're equalized and it's all on you because this is what happened, that they have uh, equalized the match and now the yes. pressure is on Hofhanisian. So Rook C1, Bishop D3, Bishop C3, Bishop E2, leaving the Rook behind on E5, but for now it's not possible to take because the D2 Rook is under attack. So the question is, after bishop e2, what happens if rook e1? King f2 still. After king f2? Oh, it's still alive. Uh, well, like it's still alive somehow. Well, of course, uh, these are the special moments of Olympiads when you have a winning position. If you win, you score the point for the team and you still have the full score. So if, Ar if uh, Armenia wins this game, then they are the sole leader of the Olympiad. If not, then everything changes, of course, because if they make a draw, then again we are going to see quite a few players, few teams being on the first spot. We haven't Maybe seen King Juan instead of Rook Juan. Of course, King Juan does not look so impressive, but... Uh King John now, maybe, no? Actually, we have this position on the board uh -uh. already. Uh -huh. So let's see what will happen. But maybe in this position, White can go Rook B1 or somewhere, where King E3 a must, because otherwise, what mm -hmm. an unexpected checkmate <laughs> on D4. Mm -hmm. So Black would, be, would have to go back to E3, still keeping an eye on the Rook, but then Rook B2 uh, attacking the Bishop, which would be... And the rook, the rook right? only five, so no? So in this position, mm -hmm. it means that if white is moving away his rook, mm -hmm. then the game is won, because yes. after king yeah. e3, rook b2, and now at the same time, both pieces are under attack. And upon d6 is still alive. But of alive. course, it's easy for us here from this yes, studio yes, to say, yes. because we see many other things. We don't have this stress. We don't have but this your, pressure. But your, your suggestion, g4 and king g3, that was so clean. Well, because I, mean, I like checkmate in the <laughs> yes, end game yes, as well. Yes. <laughs> no, here he had to go around a bit, and it is always dangerous in practice after four hours, uh, four hours of playing. Well, they are playing already. Five, uh, yeah, four. They uh, are just entering yeah, into the yeah. fifth hour of uh, play, and uh, I have the feeling that maybe White, maybe Hofhanisian, does not see this exactly because somehow he's sitting there that he's calculating, looking for the option, what is the best, but. And he knows it. He knows it that it should be winning because mm -hmm, it is mm -hmm. so close to win. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm not sure that uh, that everything is winning. Also possible that White can go Rook C1, for example. But then it's a repetition, no? Uh, was it from C1? Yeah, Rook C1, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Bishop D3, Bishop C3, Bishop E2. Exactly. Okay, but then King uh, Rook B1 makes sense because it takes the, the rook out. The problem is that if Rook C2, then Bishop, Bishop D3, D3 yes, still. Yes. So this is why it's important to go Rook E1, King F2, Rook B1 it, now. It swings the tempo, yes. Well, it's not winning. A, well, it, I mean, it I mean, puts it, the, it puts, the Rook yeah. on the better square, which it, is not white square. It, it improves the yes. Rook's placement without waste of time. This is what I want. I was yes. lazy and said that it swings the tempo. Okay. 
So rook b2, and uh, now it seems that there is no way out for black. Well, probably black would go bishop d3 anyway, actually. Okay, take, so it's uh -huh. not winning. It's maybe not winning. Maybe this is what bothers him. Because e4, black takes hmm. d6, and suddenly it's not easy at all. Hold on. That's a game. Who's better, no? Okay, so black is going to be fighting for his life, it seems. King F2. This happens when you don't uh, play the simple... Uh... Yes, but when you have several yes, options to do, it's not easy to make mm -hmm. a decision and mm -hmm. make the best move. You want mm -hmm. to keep it secure, you want to keep things... So what happens if uh, bishop e5, king e1, bishop c3? Threatening to move yes. away with the rook. I was thinking of that. Yes, rook king king there. Because if now black goes back, then uh, maybe just d7 and game. But over. bishop, I don't know. On a fun he has to go, no? Because here it would be over, yes. right? Because bishop f6 takes and then takes bishop and g5 bishop g5 or bishop a5 check. Yes. And the king is on black square, so this is why it's winning. Mm -hmm. So let's see what happens. Bishop e5, king e1, bishop c3. King if F1. black goes king f1, also let's say d7, then bishop b5. Still it seems like it's uh, some checkmate could be done, but I think it's not made because king g3, mm -hmm. give it check, king g1, and what a stable place for the king. I've seen worse. Now black is taking over, so this is not possible. Let's see what is after the move king f1. Can white win in some other way? Well, bishop takes f6 is just, uh, okay, a long torturing game. Well, bishop f6. Yeah, bishop is seven. What king, about king? playing bishop h4? Hold on. Uh, to keep uh, the mating uh, thing, no? Tugzwang. And then g5. Let's go bishop g3. H5, h5, h4. h4, h4. g4. And then white is just moving away with the rook. So it seems to be over because rook b1 is a threat. And once the bishop moves away, then already check. And, and rook f7. Yes. So let's say, is this a forced win? <coughs> well, rook d7 looks forced, no? Rook d7 is forced, and, and bishop, bishop h4. h4. Which is not the most obvious move at first, mm -hmm. but it's a neat move, because uh, we want to go rook f2 if the bishop is moving away. So it seems like this is really finishing the game. So if he mm -hmm. finds... And it's all forced. It's all forced, because after king f2, bishop e5, you cannot do anything else but taking this bishop c3 you have to first this and then yes. yes so this is uh mm -hmm. well not so obvious but if you want to win the medal yes. you have to play these moves and even yes. after that it's not sure that you win a medal mm -hmm. but for i mean those little things that if you have this winning position mm -hmm. then you mm -hmm. have to win let's go and see the others what happened with the american team Fabiano won his first game on board. I saw that one. coming, yes, and uh, he won. Um, and it means that USA won the match. Two and a half, half. Two and a half, one and a half, because on board two, Aronian made a draw, just as well as Wesley So made a draw with the white pieces. He did not really got anything with the white. We've seen the opening, which was uh, yes, yes. not very promising. The Karokan, yes. Exactly, and on board four, Dominguez also made a draw which makes USA to have 11 points by now. Well, you see, they don't impress that much, but uh, they still win uh, matches once in a while. I mean, they only dropped uh, one point. So you may argue exactly. that, that they are not the, the atomic bomb they, uh, they were supposed to, but okay, they are there, so... And we shouldn't forget that you have to play well with your team in the last three rounds. In the direct uh, matches, yes. yes. They didn't lose any match, they were in danger, but okay, they survived. So this also makes part of the class and strength to survive difficult matches. And difficult moments, and, yes, and if yes. you're not in the best shape yet. 
Yes. So let's see uh, what's going on between Spain and Cuba. We still have a game running between uh, Anton because Shirov made a draw. I see there was a perpetual check as well on board three. It was a draw. Board four as well. It was a draw. I don't know exactly what kind of games because we were following only the beginning, the opening. But we still have one game which is running and it seems like White is playing for a win. So Anton is the one who can score the point and make a victory for Spain. How but is, is it this? is it real? Well, it's a I question. Mean, rug, rug has two three, rug three, three, rug right? three, let's say no. So two pawns can be given. Ah, it's uh, two pawns. It's two pawns. It's two no, points. I thought it was uh, three versus two there. But, but it's not so easy because e easy. three is threatening. The question is how badly. Yes. Well, the only thing is that uh, the black king cannot um, join the attack. The question is whether the rook is very much out, okay, it's cutting the king, but black is extremely active with his knight on e5, rook standing very well, and really b e3 threatening. But let's see how much is it a threat. Let's say b5, e3, king e1, and if rook uh, b1, bishop d1, but maybe it's just a draw if black wants it. Just to play no, rook b2, well, I mean, okay. threatening knight d3. And no, he can also take on b5, if, but okay, of course, rook b2 is uh, simpler. Well, Once, because if he to takes take on b5, nah, then king, then king e2. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, but black is not playing for a win. That's, knight uh, g4, of course, it's possible, but uh, let's say if we look only the drawing option for now. Yes, yes. For now. But what if but king, uh, king g1? Ah, they just so, agreed to draw. Ah. Because they had a repetition of moves which we didn't see before, that bishop d1, rook d3, bishop e2, rook b3, uh -huh, and okay. they agreed to a draw. So, <coughs> Cuba, Spain is 2-2, two, two, which mm -hmm. means that they have 10 points, and Spain has only 9 points, because they were having 8 points before the game. So, for Cuba, it's a, it's a good result, I believe. Whatever you score, it's great. Let's see, what do we see? By the way, Poland seems to have problems with uh, Serbia. Yes, because they, they lost trailing. on board three, right? And Duda, if I saw it right, he's a pawn down, but he may hold. Well, the uh, Beroni, the Beroni, Serbia is leading one and a half to half, and we have two games are running. Let's say how Duda is uh, playing. Well, his, uh, the his position is... The Beroni. Uh, well, he has real uh, drawing chances, but uh, of course not more. Well, does he really have good drawing chances? I mean, the pawn can be so strong, no? Rook d4, let's say, to, to just prepare rook d6, g5. But rook b4 is coming. And if I take, and king e4. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's, uh, that's just the draw. Okay, so rook d4. Rook d4. So what happens if black goes rook b6 and rook a6? Uh, that, can be, that can be a problem. Okay. Because at first it looks like... Uh, no, 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 rook b6. Very difficult. There, is, there is no play and there is no blocking with rook a4 because there is a, a reserve pawn. B5. Yes, there yes. Are two pawns here. Two no, no, pawns. no, now you convinced me. So, okay, this well, is... Uh, this looks uh, bad. And let's see how Wojtaszek is doing. Well, he's struggling for a draw. Which is... Uh, well, he shouldn't struggle too long because it's, it's just a draw, I believe. Because black is reaching out to e5. Yeah, this is just a... Uh, I think this is a draw. Maybe even without the t4 pawn it would be a draw, no? If... if if the king reaches... Uh, but this means that uh, Poland is losing. Poland is, no, is not winning any of these games. Well, it's very clear that it's yeah, end yeah, game. Both yeah. of them, they are worse. So yeah. Serbia is uh, going to have 10 points. Serbia, we didn't talk much about this team, no. I mean... Um, but it seems like we will, because they are going to <laughs> yeah, be yes, very yes. much ahead. Yes. In the no, you, you don't know from where the surprises uh, come, no? 
In the meantime, let's go back to see how India 2 is doing because on board 4 he did not take on E5, so this is not exactly the best sign what uh, White is doing, though it's still completely winning, I believe. It was, by the way, Rook B1, King E3, Rook B2, which we thought at first that it's going to be winning. Mm -hmm. It was played, but Bishop D3 was played. I don't know if this was blundered or no, but why did not take on e5? And I think uh, smartly enough so. And rook d1 is played, so the threat is... Rook e1. Let's see what happens on rook d6. On rook d6, white goes, let's say, rook e1. King f4. Rook. Rook f2. f2. And it will or be... Or simply, let's make it by force, takes, uh -huh. takes. After that, rook okay, f2. Okay, okay, that's... Here. Rook e5, even if, e4. Even if it's no mate, okay, but it's, uh, yes, yes. So this is the easy way. I don't know if we had any mating mm -hmm. option. Mm -hmm. Did you see any mate? No, I, I uh, you know, uh, I repeat, mates can be illusory, but material is material, so. Let's see, after rook d1, what black can have in mind? Let's say black goes rook d5, what happens? Well, rook d5 is a problem the because then again the same thing and bishop f6. So it seems ah, even like bishop white f6, found yes. one of the mm -hmm. many winning options for himself. You, and, you uh, have to find in such occasions. It seems yes. like Armenia is going to be the sole leader with 12 points, the only team who is going to be 100% score and wins its their sixth match. Putting the bid for the fourth Olympic title, but of course it's early. Of course, it's, it's early because it's we, have, early. we have the Bermuda party, we have the free day, uh, and um, sometimes the free day can change a lot, but okay, if you start with six wins out of six, um, you are in the cards. Well, of course, it's very hard to say that once you start and you go, you take your first spot, and of course, it seems like Armenia will be the only team who from the very start, they are leading after round six, and there are five rounds only to go. It's very hard to keep your position. Very few occasions when you see, even in individual tournaments, that somebody takes the lead from the very beginning and it takes it all the way. Nepomniachi did it, uh, not twice, once in the candidates, because now, before that, it was... No, but he was also uh, on uh, dying after, after, after the yeah, No, actually, he was... Lead, he's leading alone and he lost to Vashier the yes, last round. Yes, but still tying for first. But after six rounds he was uh, alone on the first place. He had the one point advantage. Yes. And he lost that direct uh, game yes. with uh, Vashier. So yes. actually he had a good start. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I'm uh, yes. saying, that he was the one who showed, but it very rarely happens, mm -hmm. that you take the lead and you go all the way until the very and end. And it you're was gonna be shaky because he lost both last, round, uh, last games. Also, the the second half played after one year, he lost to Dink, yes. where it didn't count anymore. Well, but it even more rarely happens that yeah. in such a tournament you win <laughs> so much points ahead, but, but also now, in Olympiad. But, but, but now he did it. Now he did it just like this, I mean, yes. without losing, without... Yes. Yeah, but you know, I think it's... I, I feel it a bit differently in the Olympiad because... Um, you know, if it's a well-determined team and this, there is this compact uh, team spirit, it's like a mechanism. I mean, it's not like um, it's, a, it's a player who thinks of the first place. Oh, my God, no. Because they cannot think of the first place. They have to think of each match, which is uh, a mechanism of four games. So I, I don't think it's so, uh, so bad as, as bad as in uh, individual tournaments. Individually says, oh, I make a draw, I'm a champion, I make a draw, I'm a champion. But here it's not like this. Here it's, uh, you have to play because the other guys also play. So maybe it's less uh, stressful here. Let's see what has uh, been the move. Bishop C4. But I think uh, the bishop will be taken or actually, well, what is going to be the best for white? Maybe rook d2 anyway. Maybe rook d2 anyway is the best move, but rook well, d2 again, to, to prepare taking on e5 or, um, or well, to give the check. Th threatens, uh, yes. threatening the check. Mm -hmm. 
And if Bishop Ito, because we have been there. Ah, this is where we were. Uh, maybe, this is where we were. Maybe, maybe, this is no, where we were. Maybe. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> Reinventing your tricks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how should white be making this work the easiest way? It's incredible what a fighting spirit still fighting for. Well, maybe takes and the uh, rook before, no? Maybe check first. Ah, check. Also okay, possible. Check. check and rook before. Check, check because the king stands well. Okay, About check this? rook here. Okay. Also quite annoying. So what now? Bishop b3, no? Rook b4 immediately also quite uh, unexpected. Yeah, you have to work out some details, no? Okay, so this one will be a big surprise if white does not win. Let's see some of the other. What's going on? Uh, Hare Krishna won. And... Uh, Eric Gaisi made a draw, perpetual check was done, so let's see board two. Vidit is still playing a night end game, which is uh, quite interesting. Who is better here? Uh, back structure is a bit better, but White has a past, a past pawn, if we call, can call it like this. So not so clear. Now, in principle, Black may be a minute better, no? Interesting that white played a3. Black. Well, anticipating b5 before, no? I don't know what is the idea, because I was would be thinking king d4. Maybe the problem was that it's check, check. and some way it's mm -hmm. going to be taken. So maybe that's why he played a3. Of course, this match is... Uh, lot at stake here. Let's see what's going on on Shashiki Ran's game. Because there, Bokitov is uh, so black having is, uh, a very nice position here. Yeah, mathematically it looks like a win, no? almost with such a pawn on e4. Well, probably it should be objectively a win I for mean, black, yeah, right? Uh, practically it's not so simple maybe, but uh, you see the position? Yeah, the big question is in what form black is able to play f5. Mm -hmm. Can, yes. Is he going to play g6, to play rook e8, rook e7, King to support? H8. King h8, maybe, yeah. Well, yeah, the setup is question in what form he can... Uh, because even here f5, it looks extremely powerful after, let's say, king h8. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. This way, but it's even more tempting if you can make it with g6 to make f5 mm -hmm. work. So this uh, may be, even though Hare Krishna won, uh, they are in danger because though if force board lo loses, with it uh, will be the question. King e6 was played. I would be afraid with white, I think, a little bit. No, black's... Uh... King d4, let's say, uh, knight d4, king f6. And uh, like what happens if uh, black tries to go that way? Ah, c6 is no, hanging. c6 is hanging, no, no. I'm sorry, so it's uh, no, knight d4. No, I think uh, black King. has a symbolic advantage, but uh, not more. Somehow. Well, can white go back here? Yeah, that's... King e5 and somehow chasing the pawn, or black mm -hmm. going to go c5? Knight c8. Knight. Okay, now it's already... Um, and why didn't take any? Uh, black didn't take anything yet. Well, I don't know what's that. You know, takes king f4, king f4. for example. Mm -hmm. Because knight in e6 stands very well. Yes. A lot of calculation needing. King d6 was played. So what is white's pl next move? Because uh, it's also a question. Uh, it's shaky for white. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's why I asked knight f5, because if king c5, then I see this funny move, threatening with the checkmate. Mm -hmm. Oi. Yes. Very difficult position. And then we have, uh, so America won, then uh, let's see, Spain made 2-2. 
then Serbia, we said that they are uh, going to be winning. Let's say, what about Netherlands? Well, Anish won some, uh, let's see how wow. he won. So he got a piece he 26. Exchange this, uh. he simplified, and then he's ah, practically yes, giving yes, up yes, an exchange. Yes, yes, yes. Probably he's preparing his new chessable course with exchange sacrifices, and he wants some, mm. <laughs> some great examples mm. in the collection. No, that's know. nice, of course. <laughs> Rook e6, very nice way, and the knight on d5. Wow, what a beautiful one. G5, G4, Rook E1, Queen F4. He's just controlling squares. Mm -hmm. of, I mean, if you want to see a nice game, he played also nicely yesterday, also sacrificing going to exchange. Uh, though I'm not sure he played the, with the best technique uh, yesterday, but this seems to be, wow, what a fine move, G3. Yeah. Uh, just not a very difficult structure. one, yeah. but it's very no, nice. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. To beautiful, see. like not giving any no, context. This is the chance. kind of games you, you'd like to, to follow. You don't have to analyze a lot or calculate to learn something, no? And rook f4. Just <coughs> he's not going with knight f6, yes. winning the rook. No, no. He goes rook f4, simplify, and then I just take with the king, and come up after this. He probably takes this, and he goes king h3, and he com comes up and wins the game. I mean, this d5. I'm pretty sure Anish was really, really happy to. Uh, make this point. Once hopefully we are going to have him also in the studio. But I'm sure by now he left. So this was the one win and Fun Forest Jordan also won with a nice checkmate at the end, nice tactics. And uh, on board four the Netherlands lost so they are leading two to one. Let's see the game. How is it going to be end? White is the Dutchman Bok is playing, let's see what it is, because this game will decide the final result of the match. So black needs to win to equalize the score, no? To, to level the score. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly, because Holland is leading, they won in the first two boards. Can black win this game? Well, it doesn't look like he's... Um but okay, the, the position is maybe not entirely clear. I would say that White has a stable advantage, no? Well, let's <coughs> see how much, because <laughs> it's, but what, uh, what? this e4 knight is very active. And is White in some sort of Tsukzwang also? It's black to move right now. Okay. So let's see what black is up to, because uh, the queen is defending this f5 pawn. Ah, so, so there is no queen h4 anyway, even if the queen moves away. No, somehow... Um, well, probably black can somehow just uh, keep the position, right? And white can keep the position too. Well, after this knight c6 and then queen a1 is a threat. If he wants something, yes. No, uh, um, if uh, not knowing the match situation, I would say that white has a clear advantage. Um, but now I'm looking from the other perspective. Well, objectively, we have to think about it. What is because uh, that's that's not matter of what is the team team situation, right? The only thing is that black I has to win. I, I would be surprised not to win this with white in principle. Yeah? No, I mean okay, uh, not to have chances at least. Well, the thing is that it seems like black has to worsen his position. So the Tsukzwang is is uh, black Tsukzwang, not not ours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's say queen g6. It seems like this can, maybe this is the only move for black? Not to allow knight c6 from white side. Mm -hmm. Well, queen e3, but of course white is... Okay, queen e3, queen h5. And white is not going anywhere either, yeah? Now queen d1 is some sort of... Um, well, probably it's not threat. a real threat, yeah. but let's say I'm going to be simply moving with my queen to g6, mm -hmm, d1, mm -hmm. h5, and how can white improve? Now, from structural point of view, white's position is a miracle, of course, but um, concretely... Not clear what... Uh, 
You don't have king h2 to play bishop f3 because knight g4. After queen g6, what happens if white goes, let's say, queen h4, trying to take away this square from the queen? To make it a real zugzwang. Well, to try to push it back, b black's uh, If position, h6, right? you may win a pawn with queen takes h6. Maybe it's not such a bad trade to give up the... If what? Pawn. If h6, playing against zugzwang, then queen takes h6. Maybe okay, no? I'm not I mean, sure, you give because up. takes, takes, check, takes, and knight d2. Can I do that with black? Aha, uh -huh. you have a counterplay with knight d2. Bishop f1. Uh, but okay, Maybe you take knight d5. H5. Yeah, or, or take yeah, and d5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not uh, obvious, but no, I don't no, no. know what exactly I'm gaining with h6. Not getting into six one, but okay. Well, king, okay, king h2, king h2, king, king, h2, h2, king right? h2, and okay, yes, yes. I was just, just, just checking. So king e8, you, you want it? So probably we don't play h6 because it's not giving anything extra. Here. So let's say king e8. And, and now king h2. Ah, you want uh, at once, no? I don't know, king h2, king e7. And bishop f3, something like that, I thought. Okay, king goes back. And now knight c6. Now knight Is it better with, with this setup? Well, now it's dangerous for... Everybody. Black. Bishop takes e4, it may be some sort of threat now. Well, the thing is, it's hard to make a move with black, right? Because <laughs> yeah. uh, bishop h5 can also show Yes, up. yes, yes. King f8 may be the only move, no? King f8, yes. Maybe bishop take takes. On, yes, take. I was thinking of it. The question is, can uh, black take with the knight? Maybe he can. No? Check. The king goes to h6. Yeah, and there are some contingencies. Meaning we black get, meaning we, we get made it, no? <laughs> Black played king e8, so the question is what he has in mind after mm -hmm. knight c6. Knight c5, maybe? Queen a1, and the f6 Any anyway. knight is hanging. Ah, okay, so well. anyway. So I don't understand it's this. Bye bye, no? Knight c6. What Black has in mind? Well, he can go king f8. So this is possible, and after queen a1, simply queen h4, looking for, again, some counterplay there, which is quite useful. Mm -hmm. So maybe playing for a draw is a practical decision, no? because it's not easy to make progress, and you also expose yourself. But who is playing for a draw? No, maybe because white, if white makes a draw, then uh, they win the match. Yes, but so, how can uh, he play a draw? I mean, just uh, to keep the position, no? not to do anything. Yeah, but I think really good players, they know they, and they are under control of what's going on. And here maybe. he is not going to make perpetual uh, check or something. Mm -hmm. Unless he, okay, if he has a perpetual check, maybe he just makes it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But now what, he's going to play knight d4 again and going back if he sees some better move? If he sees, but it's not so easy to see them. No, I mean... If Can I say, for example, bishop e4 immediately? With the idea that if knight takes, queen a1, and on h8, there that are surprises, problem, no? and after this move, king think. h1 is possible. Mm -hmm. And queen e6 is not possible? Okay. Isn't Why not? It? It, is, it is possible. I didn't see that. That's mm -hmm. hanging. Because queen g8. Okay. So let's see. Queen a1, king e7. So now it's a big question. Is he going to come back to e1 mm -hmm. to have the strategy of making a draw? Mm -hmm. No, I, I agree that if he sees something uh, yeah. clear, yeah. uh, risk-free, he will go for, will go for it. But we have been trying and there is no such... Uh, bishop takes e4, if he doesn't win at once, you don't want to play it. Yes. Um, so let's see if he goes back to queen e1. And I think... 
She has something like 30 seconds. There is a movement, physical movement around the table. So I believe he did go back. Yes. So now provocation. And this is the moment when you may lose a game just because you try to force matters, try to look for some chances. Because he knows exactly if it's a draw, it's actually practically a loss for the team. At the same time, you don't see how is it possible to play for a win with black. So this is a very frustrating situation when you know that actually you are the one who is finishing the game last. And by this game, it's going to be not the result what you wanted for your team and for yourself. Though draw is not a bad result, generally speaking, but it is a bad result when it costs your team the, the lost. Bulmaga uh, Muziciuk uh, continues. Uh, it's, it saw some changes. Okay, let's go to the ladies for a short time. What is going on? She didn't play before because I think that after rook d3, rook takes d5. Uh, wow, this is the position. Yes. But is this a win? It should be, no. I'm not sure it's a win. Well, first of all, white has to be careful not to lose to exchange the, the white square bishop, yes, right? Yes, yes, okay. So that is already one thing. Okay, we can check this with our um, oracle, yes? Yeah, table base. Yeah, probably it should be a win. As far as I know, there are no, exception. there are no exceptions. Uh, uh, okay, so let's... I take this position. Tell, tell them not to move. Tell let's them... Let's see after bishop d5 what black is going to be playing. But there is not much chance, because it's not so easy even uh, to blunder your bishop, the white square bishop. It's not easy to... It's uh, it's losing, yes. It's losing, right? Mm. In every way. No, but I know that. No, there are some cases with knight and bishop with the pawn. a pawn. If mm. the corner is not right, then uh, there are some chances that uh, that it's a draw. So this match will be. Let's see. Uh, well, won. So it's one and a half, one and a half. If it this wins, and then we have board four. Osmak is playing with white color from Ukraine. And, well, this is pretty dry, so there is a very realistic chance that it's going to be 2-2. Yeah, white is well regrouped, but that pawn on d4 is... Um... Well, the ladies, India won. 3-1. Aha, they beat uh, Georgia, okay, that was a big result. 3-1 against Georgia. What can I say? Ah, there was this uh, Benoni, no? Which ended uh, badly. Well, this game is still a big fight. Fight in this match. Of course, uh, Maria Muzichuk is fighting hard. Because uh, every half a point counts a lot. Poland beat Serbia. Okay, they are, have three zero in the ladies. Um, ah, so it's Poland Serbia on eight boards. Oh wow! Yes, so actually the ladies are uh, taking revenge of uh, uh, Holland Georgia today on the open section. No, no, Poland. Poland, Poland sorry. You remember that the Duda is a pawn down Serbia, against yes. Serbia against yes. Indic. So um, in the ladies match is three zero for. Poland. Mm, okay. That's funny. Okay, what is there? Okay, so let's go back to the open section. But okay. before that, we have today's highlights. So let's see that quickly.
We're back to round six of the 44th Chess Olympiad in Chennai, India. And uh, it's getting more and more interesting. Of course, the tension is huge in the playing hall because every move has its great value. And after today's game, we'll see who is going to be leading. But of course, half a match point or even one is not the end of the world. And even those, ca uh, the, those uh, teams can be winning medals. But tomorrow there is going to be a free day. Tonight there will be the famous Bermuda party, which is part of the Olympiad for so many years. But now all the players who are in the playing hall, they are fighting it out. And let's see what's going on with the Indian team, how well it is doing, what happened since then. Let's see what's happening on board two. We still have this position. It seems they had some... He uh, wanted to deliver mate with knight e4 now, or...? Yes, this is what we had, that after king e6, knight d4, king d6, knight f5, check. And the first try by Jakub Boyev was king c5, which after knight g3, we were discussing this, that now there is a mate threat on e4, sorry, on e4 with the knight. Black went back king d6, now Vidit went back knight. Ah, not, he did not go back to knight, c, knight f5. Actually, he improved his king position and went king d4. Knight e6 check. And the idea is b5, so maybe the king has to stay close anyway. Well, this is also kind of a tricky situation many times when yes, you want to go back and turned. forth because probably White was not sure whether after king e5, is it so good for me? that I improve the black's king position. So I don't want to show that I want to draw, so I, I play something else, but I'm not sure if not knight f5 was the best move, because after knight d4, knight e6, let's say white is going king e4, what b5. about b5? No, this is what I mean, he has to return to c3 probably. But even then b5... But, but hold on, if after knight e6 you go back to c3, then already king e5 comes with a much bigger ah, this energy. Is what, oh, that's... Unless you go knight e2, but it looks, I don't know. Uh, on the edge, no? I mean, maybe b5. I go b5 already, and it seems that it's extremely difficult. Moves, no, you have to make... Yeah. What, what do you move? Well, the knight is holding and controlling these and two squares, king but three, once are, knight f4. Yes, or knight d4 if king b3, yes, yeah, so uh, uh, only so king d2 maybe. So probably white has to be taking on b5, but this is not going to be lead to funny things. King d2 probably, but knight d4 anyway, no? Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, this, is, uh, this looks uh, awful. So what we did after knight e6, I saw he went king e4. After king e4, I think b5 is going to be the move. King c5 is also tempting, but I would not be king, surprised. King d3, king d3 is the possibility. I think this Re is renewing, possible. Renewing the yeah, yeah, okay, so b5, idea. right? Yeah, why? After why, king e4, yes. b5. Why to waste time? This is the main idea. So let's say takes, takes, white goes f4. f5. b4, it's very few pawns on board. So yeah, this is, uh, this can save white if takes, takes, let's say f5. Yeah, knight c5, king d4. So actually we have a final result in India 2 versus Armenia. And Armenia won board 3, Armenia won board 4 finally. So we can say Armenia is the leader of the Olympiad after 6 rounds alone. Sole leader with 12 points, full score, even though on board one, Gukash scored his sixth victory, which is quite amazing. He's having the best score of the Olympiad. And still it was not enough to win the match, nor to make a draw for the team. So probably he's upset and the team as well. Though they are still there, it's uh, their lot to do still. So if they would be winning five matches, I'm pretty sure that they are still, well, most likely they would even win, right? Yes, yes. I mean, with one match point to lose, it's uh, not the end of the world. I know that you are used to, <clears throat> to high scores, like, for instance, at your first Olympiad, you only dropped half a point, I believe, no? Yes. 
But still, uh, uh, I believe that winning six games in a row, probably, I mean, at, th at this level, because not a, not a simul display is not okay. He had some opponents. No, maybe the first round was a bit easier, but uh, winning six games in a row requires a lot of you know uh, energy to keep to keep it going, to keep the desire going. Yeah, okay, it, he's only 16, right? So when true. you're 16, you have all your energy, especially if you start it well, and then it's like, you know, you just focused, you're playing, you're, you're looking for the best moves, and yes. somehow you feel the ball. You, you have to keep the, the hunger for, uh, for the result. Because especially when, when you're young, you can be satisfied very quickly. Oh, okay, see out of three, life is nice, I show them that I belong here, uh, let's relax. No. Uh, point after point. No, but Gukash is not that kind of youngster. I, know. I think <laughs> I, he he I, I wants just want really to praise him. Yes, I want to. They they really want to get the medal. I think. Of course, yes. And uh, they have a healthy rivalry between the three teams of Indian team. You see on the screen that it was Ivan Sokolov checking on his team. Let's see what is going on between Uzbekistan. It's still running on board one. Hare Krishna won against Abdul Satarov, who also had five out of five full perfect score so far, but he did one bad idea in the opening and it cost him practically the game. As Hare Krishna was explaining it here in the studio just shortly before. And uh, well, Vidit is still fighting. It's interesting well fighting uh, game is going on that king c5 was played what? and still b5 was hold back maybe b5 now ah with the knight on e6 maybe it makes with sense with the knight yes. e6 to play b5 because and there after is no c5 there is no c5 king b6 so the pawn cannot be there is pushed. no f4 and there is no c5 yes okay and knight c5 is a threat right now <clears throat> so he has to go on king c3 probably or and b5 take. is on the board very unpleasant position to play it yeah it, it changed just a bit the position but now uh, a little different of the knight yes, position a yes, yes. little different for the king's position but it's very difficult the, the karpov thing now yeah you the, go here you yes, go back yes. you go this you go that but it's, I think it's a very difficult position, uh, endgame for white. Mm -hmm. Because actually the g3 knight is not located too well. Though let's see what happens if knight e4, king b6, knight, uh, knight f6. Can white play knight g5, by the way? Mm. Maybe knight g5 if taken before, taken before, are we in time? Well, white is going to go f4, f5, right? Ah, okay. No, no, I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm in okay. time to play c5. F4, but c5. No, but you're lost. C c5, I'm too slow. Yes, but if if I don't do that, then I'm lost anyway. Yeah, I'm I'm too slow. Yeah, black is uh, slow. So king b6. Knight e4 was played, so now the question is, what about knight g5? What can black do? What should black do? Knight c5 is possible. Followed by h6 now. And let's say king d4. Yeah, but after that I was thinking to chase the pawn a little bit, mm -hmm. and then yeah, let's course. go back to centralize the knight. Mm, and it's still uh, unclear, no? And then also the pawn is ready to be... But pushed. maybe before. Before now. But we have an exchange of pawns. C takes b5. C takes b5. Mm -hmm. White is still waiting to be able to push the pawn. So what about king e3 to have the idea to push the pawn? So after b4, takes, now. takes. F4. It looks pretty much drawish, no? Less the simplification is going on. One pawn got exchanged, other one mm -hmm. exchanged. What is board four doing? Shashikiran is suffering. It's already moved 60. He has only 42 seconds and he's not going to get more time because after move 40, the players receiving extra 30 minutes. And after that, they don't get only the 30 seconds per move, which means that this is going to be a very hard time for Shashiki run in this game because black will make f5 at his best point where he thinks actually now f5 seems to be a quite convincing 
moment for that. Yeah, after F5, of course, White, uh, White took some measures against it. The Rook on G3 defends G2. Yeah, but the so big White, problem is for uh, White, the, I guess. The pawns, the no? Pawns will ah, be pushed. At once, at once, uh, I mean, yeah. Even it's possible at mm -hmm. once. Of course, mm -hmm. the, this is the pressure on Black. At mm -hmm. what point you're going to play F5? Only when he's just winning on the spot. Is there mm -hmm. any moment where it's winning on the spot? Or... Uh, but it's a huge advantage. It should be, as we talked about, it should be objective. Mathe mathe yeah. Mathematical way, no, somehow. He Which means to... that even though Hare Krishna won on board one, it can easily be the case that they are going to be losing the Indian team. And it would be a very sad day for India losing with the the team A and team B as well. Despite having two heroes, no? But why why would they lose? Uh, well, isn't it the case? But the night ending uh, should be drawn, no? Yeah. Yeah, okay. The, this, the, this is the, the question. Ending, uh, well, well, actually, now it's getting even better for White than it was because it was H5. So it, mm -hmm. there is a good chance that it's going to be a draw. I'm sorry, I apologize mm, for that. Yeah, no, okay, that was just, just some optical. Yeah, yeah, because now actually White uh, with it improved quite a bit. Mm -hmm. He's pawned to h5. I like it very much. No, it's not that he's, he's not going, in danger at all. He's not that he's going to win, but it's just, uh, no, just but a draw. Before it was worrying. Uh, it, uh, and I think yeah. before, maybe Black could play a little bit better because here now he's going to be able to capture the h6, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then of course there is no way that Black mm -hmm. can win. No, but night endings are even those uh, which are winning. They are so difficult to handle in practice. They say that night endings are uh, like pawn endings, but it's only about the evaluation. Better structure, outside pass pawn, things like that, extra pawn. But when you have to handle them, it's not that pawn endings are always easy, no, sometimes they are enormously complicated. But night endings, you know, the night is just uh, spinning around and uh, you don't understand how to stabilize the position. You can't actually. You can almost never uh, stabilize the night ending. So, but uh, this uh, was not one at all, so... Well, Vidit is focusing very much. He knows that he has to make a draw or somehow to trick the opponent and play for a win, but I think that is exaggerating already in this position. After h5, uh, what should black be doing? King c5, that's already kind of a draw first, so the only way to defend the pawn on h6 would be to go knight g5 or knight d8. So after h5, if he goes knight g5, f4, but I mean, I even like it with white more than uh, with black already. Maybe... Okay, you have to go before and uh, run with the king. Or, okay, first king c6. And then go before, I mean... Um, yeah, but it's not uh, something that uh, I would worry for white anymore. No, but... Before, you, no, it but, was uh, a moment where no. it was worry. That's another so, thing, but it's just, uh, just a draw now. So this will be 2-2, two, two, it seems, this match. And then let's see what other games we have. We have the game Duda running. It's still a draw, probably, no? Well, before we didn't think it was a draw, but maybe mm -hmm. by now it is. Mm -hmm. Because the rook the was on the side. But how did he do? Why did he, didn't he play rook b6? Uh, that was convincing what you told me. Let's see. He went king e4. Okay, and if rook... And for some reason he did not go. Rook a6. And the question is, why not? I couldn't understand that. Well, maybe white king would be coming closer. So maybe that's the kind of draw somehow to blockade in one way or another. Maybe just going king d3. Maybe mm -hmm. this is the way to do it, and if a4, just simply king c2. And uh, mm -hmm. white is going to be blockading. Mm -hmm. 
So what we have now is rook a7. So we can see how it uh, became to we came to that position. G5 takes takes. White went black went rook b1 after all. Rook d8. White went behind the pawn. As we know, it's the best way to make a draw most of the time. A3. And b5 doesn't work because uh, white's counterplay is simply too strong. Yeah. B5 and then everything. Be an immediate draw. By check on g6. g6. Yes. And uh, well, white can just give check, 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 yes, and yes, it's a draw yes. immediately. So black played a3, rook a7, and now also mm -hmm. it's going to be just a draw because after a2, white can take. Oh, but hold on, take king f8. Oh. So what what is happening? Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. White gives check, king e7, check. Many, many checks, and then and suddenly... the idea is to give it check again. And then rook king a6. Here, rook a6. And to rook make f1, a draw like g6, this. Or maybe king, king, e, king e6 is better, no? Yes. Because king g6 is lost? Oh, I would have... Why, I'm why? not sure. Isn't this losing? Hold on. Takes, takes. So g6... g6, king... Ah, g6. You, you go big. Ah, yeah, it's a draw because king f7, and after this, king g6 is the move. King g6, yes. This is how it's going to be. A and draw. you promote to a knight. If, uh, well, no, no, you, you don't have to promote to a knight. No? Okay, so this is what yes. we have on uh -huh. the board, and this is the line uh -huh. we are going to be seeing rook b7 check. So it's very important mm -hmm. to push away the king as far as possible. Yes, so yes. king d6. What about king d5, rook b5? So it's very important f to make a draw that the black king ends up on the c file because then he's too far away to win the game. So let's see if here black goes king c5, also then rook a6, and already at this point it's going to be the same draw as we've seen before. So this is a, a nice very precise, mm -hmm. nice play by Duda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously he's not happy that he has to fight for a draw. When uh, the team uh, is on minus one. To. Yeah. He makes it very precise and nicely. Because this was easy, uh, not easy, and it was well easy to blunder, what I want to say, that mm -hmm. Whitey can give checks, and only once the king is moving to the C line, only after that to go rook, C, rook A6, mm -hmm. And then with the pawn and the king will be making a draw. But his um, uh, face uh, uh, explained very very the situation. I mean, he was like, it's okay. He did everything he could. He saved the game and it's not enough. It's, it was somehow written on his face that, well, um, he cannot reproach anything to himself, but uh, the problem it is was not, not enough. The problem is that by making a draw, they are still losing the yes, match. Yes, yes. So Serbia will be 10 points and Poland stays on 8 points because they lost on board 3. This was the game. They have such a strong team, no? Uh, um, I mean, okay, we talk about the Americans that they are not really convincing, but okay, they have somehow, if this was uh, an Olympiad based on uh, game points, Things would have been different, um, but so far uh, the states have managed to win matches. Well, of course, if it's, it's uh, about board points, then yeah. they would also play differently. Uh, yes, because you yes, always, yes. Uh, you of always, course. as a sport person or as a team, you have to play the best according to, to the, the adjust rules. yourself yes. to the rules. Yes. I remember that it was such a change mm -hmm. that suddenly that. Uh, for Hungary, for example, it was better that it's match result because we were usually not winning in such a big scores. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, that was a change because it uh, made the competition a little mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for the for the Russians, I think, and for the very very good teams, it's always better to yes. have the board result because they're just scoring more points on the boards. Mm -hmm. But when it's about mm -hmm. team victory. That's a different story. What do we have between the... And for, for the Soviets, it would have been better to play on 25 boards, probably, no? <laughs> Back many years ago, yes. Yes. So this is what we have. Oh. Look, after Queen E1, there was King E8, Queen A1, King E7, Queen E1, H6. 
Because so black, black needs to win. Black needs to win. Black needs to win. So there is no choice. It, you yes. know that you're worst. You would be happy with the draw, but you cannot accept the draw because you're signing your loss for the team. Mm -hmm. So h6, queen e3. Black go king e8, queen e1. Still, it's so frustrating that you cannot repeat moves because you cannot because of the team. Knight c5, queen a1, king f8. Just trying to make moves, giving opportunity for white to go wrong. Queen h4, defending on f6, e7, check. King f7, queen a8. Well, for now, you can see that this is not possible, queen e1, king h2, and it leads nowhere for black. So black played knight e6. Maybe knight g4, is, it's, it's nothing? Well, probably it's a draw only. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Well, here, here. But as we know that he does not want ah, to okay, make okay, a draw, okay, okay, he okay. still wants to be uh, playing. I don't know if it's a draw though, but it looks Ma very... It it looks very much a like draw. a draw. No? So he cannot make a draw. Mm -hmm. So after knight queen a8, he went knight e6, struggling, fighting, bishop d5. What, what, how much it tied up? Strat is queen f8, queen e1, check, king g2, queen e2, king g1. And right now, it seems like there is not going to be more opportunity for black. No matter how much he wants to be fighting on, it will be very difficult. I guess he's going to be moving out, maybe king g7. But after king g7... Uh, okay, e8, e8, e8 for instance, knight m. Yeah. So, so you don't... It's not that we are going to win this. Yeah, it but will be very, very difficult and finally... But very... I think it's exemplary, exemplary attitude. He played h6, he avoided the repetition. He was risking he, he, the game to lose, but for them it doesn't matter because it just, it lost and drew, yes. it doesn't matter. Yes. I mean, you're going to be worried about five rating points, it's not that. Mm -hmm. And you know that white is not going to be risking anything, mm -hmm. so probably it's going to be draw anyway. Yes, uh, I mean, to play this, especially that you know that you are slightly worse, at least with black and white is very stable and still to 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 pull white into this uh, variation with e7 queen a8 and so on i mean it, it's uh, because okay you think of the team but there is also the instinct so holland won the self right holland won two and a half so they have uh, also 10 points And Georgia stayed with eight point. Let's see the others, how they are, what England was doing. Mickey Adams made a draw on board one. Then uh, board two was a draw. Havel won again. He has really the tournament <laughs> of his life, but this way England made two two. Which means. Yes, there are, few, have, there are a few players uh, from Czechia with, with a very good result. The first three boards, I believe, no? What do we have over there? Let's see. France. Uh, France won on board four, so they are two and a half. France won two and a half, which makes them also ten point. And Switzerland kept themselves only eight points. Then we have the Indian C team with Ganguly in the leadership, but uh, they lost badly to Lithuania. Because Ganguly made a draw, but then on board three, board two, board three, I oh, know they won, sorry. They won heavily three and a half. Okay, that's, that's, that's not the same. That's different, yes. They won heavily three and a half. They are 10 points and they caught up the India 2 team. And uh, what is the end Peru? of the Indian team on the first? Well, uh, actually it was finished already. So we have, let's see, Hare Krishna. They're still playing. Shashikiran is still fighting. Look at this fighting spirit. Of course, it looks 
awful this position, but we knew that it's going to be extremely hard for White to, to fight. Look at this. She He's also has, has a pawn on uh, a6. I mean, uh, yeah, but the problem thing. is that black has on e2, and there are too many rooks around the king I and know. the bishop and the queen. So it's very hard to imagine Actually, that. Actually, there should be some combination, no mating. Let's see. Well, something bishop g2 should mm. be just uh, winning. Yeah. But, uh, some kind of rook h3 stuff. What about I, I, I was f3? Think, I was thinking of rook h3, but... Uh, but I think queen f3 is maybe, uh, yeah. maybe the best. What do you think? Rook g7 <coughs> takes... But that's not serious. I mean, okay. Queen c7. King will come king g6, I believe. And after queen d6, king h5. Queen f6 is not bad either. Yeah, and after I king h5, there is no move ah, there. Ah, okay, okay. If you calculate it, okay, but queen f6 uh, was not... Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So it means that uh, India... He took on g2. ...will not win, but it's going to be a draw with Uzbekistan. Very tough Bishop game. Bishop g2 and probably it's winning, no? Queen f4... Bishop g2 is on the board. Rook g2, queen f4, is that correct? King, King h1. h1, the only move. Rook g2. Isn't rook f1 winning also? Rook g7. Oh, oh, but, but this is also okay. And checkmate in two moves, so Shashikiran had to give up the match mm -hmm. so it's 2-2 two, two. india uzbekistan both have 10 points so india one india two and india three are tying together on the second place with some other teams like cuba serbia the netherlands and uh, france with 10 points. We uh, were expecting a lot of good things from the Indian teams, but uh, such a situation with all of them tied after six rounds uh, uh, is quite surprising, no? Well, they are all very good, and uh, as uh, Hari was pointing out, if they would have a fourth team, he believes that they would be also pretty good. Mm -hmm. No, of course, uh, the, it, it has some mass, mass uh, dimension, no, just in India. So, um, maybe it's not uh, the same as uh, I said about the Soviets, but okay, we can see that they have a lot of good players. I mean, uh, okay, three teams which can compete for, uh, for the medals. It's not written. Yes. Well, before we go to the ladies section, please, uh, I invite you to watch together with us an interview with Anish Giri and also uh, with some more. everyone. Today, for my first interview, I have two girls from Mauritius, Chetana and Maritza. <laughs> you both won your match. Yes, we did. Tell us a bit about your match. Well, mine was quite straightforward because my opponent didn't come, so I won by a forfeit. <laughs> <laughs> but I really wanted to play today and it's sad. <laughs> Uh, mine was actually very tough because I usually play on board 3 and the board 2 isn't here so I played on board 2. Um, I, I won a piece at the, in the middle of the game but then uh, she could get a draw but I fought and I managed to win. <laughs> Lovely, congratulations. Um, Chitana, this is your second Olympiad mm -hmm. and for you it's first. Yeah. How is it to be in your second Olympiad in India where your family and sisters are from? <laughs> how is it to be in India? Is this your first time? How, how do you find uh, the organization and the overall um, everything here? <laughs> Well, uh, I feel like India is one of the most welcoming countries. So um, I was very happy to see uh, the, the organization and how big it became uh, at the national and international level. So yeah, we, were, we really felt special to uh, being here. 
Well, it's my first Olympiad, so the experience is really uh, amazing. I don't think I have anything to compare with. Uh, I'm just really, really happy to be here. And uh, the organization was really, really great. And we appreciate the fact that we have different countries at our hotel, which enables us to mingle with all of the countries. And it's really nice. Uh, yeah, and we were able to have a look at board at the whole one where all of the biggest players are playing. And you know, when you're just a player, you're really <laughs> oh fan of, of all of them. So. So uh, it was really, really nice to see them as well. Lovely. What are the plans for the party, Bermuda party tonight? I bought a dress for the occasion. I went shopping and I literally uh, bought a dress, I bought heels and everything. I'm so ready for tonight. <laughs> yeah, the same thing. Uh, I bought my dress in Mauritius though, unlike her. And uh, we already have our outfit ready for tonight. Yeah, we're so, so ready. <laughs> so excited. Tonight. Lovely. Have a ball tonight, girls. Have fun. Thank you so Thank much you. and good luck for the tournament. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So I'm joined by Anish Gidi, top elite player from the Netherlands team. Congratulations on your win today. A very good game, interesting game. Did you prepare the, ex the exchange sacrifice at home or was it something you found on the board? No, he played a very um, uh, rare sideline, so uh, I didn't look at this variation very much. So I was uh, out of book uh, very early on. Okay, but it seemed very clear, very concise. I saw you were discussing after the game with Badur, different lines. Was there any better defense for him? Well, we thought, um, I mean, I assumed his idea was to play differently early on, like he could have gotten the knight on e5 instead of knight on g7, which looks much better than the game. And uh, he also said that that was his original idea, he should have done it. There I thought I'm slightly better, but uh, uh, no, no, nothing as dramatic as the game. And in the game, I think exchange sack is just, uh, I don't know, it looks like winning to me. Okay, so the team was doing well, then you had an unfortunate result with Israel, but you bounced back yesterday defeating 4-0 Canada. How are things looking for the match after your win now? The other three games, did you get a chance to check them? Yeah, I think we're doing uh, bad on the last board. I, I don't like it at all. And uh, I think, well, on board two, at least it looked really good the whole time, but uh, maybe some things became uh, unclear. I don't know, but I hope he's going to win. And uh, I hope board three is not going to lose. And then we are there. I also noticed that you ha your score is three and a half out of four, although you missed the first two games. Presumably because you were in, in Delhi doing the event with, uh, with Vidit? No, you've got everything wrong. It was Sorry. in Mumbai and oh. uh, that was done uh, already. No, I've arrived here in time, but uh, oh. um, it was a combination of my team uh, not needing me as much in the first two rounds okay. and me needing a little bit of rest. Okay. Cheers. Welcome back to the sixth round of the Olympiad here in Chennai, India. And there are very tough results because not only in the open section, but also in the women's section. So let's jump right there because we have some prizes there. You see on the screen the game of the Ukrainian versus Romania and White was winning. And this is the game where we were watching the game very closely, how it's going to be developing between Bulmaga and Musichuk, Maria on board one. And this actually cost for Romania the, not the victory because it would be only equal to two, but Bulmaga was not able to win her very clearly winning position before it was two bishop, three pawns versus a bishop and the rook. And then later on, they were simplifying it to two bishop and the a pawn, pass pawn against the rook. We were looking and watching with the 
uh, database, the table base online that, uh, well, maybe we can see which was the point. These positions are winning still for white, A4. though it's not easy. A4 was the mistake. And at some point, the table base showed move number of winning, you can guess, it's uh, 124 moves if everybody, both players are playing precisely, so that's kind of tricky. But the, the final mistake by White was done in this position, but I think she misplayed it already quite a bit because the Black King became extremely active. Yes, some, some 10 moves earlier, I think it was winning in 80. <laughs> and now it was winning in a lot. So, well, no, you have good to, defense is very important. Yes, and because you, you, you have to coordinate yourself. With opponent A2, okay, you can keep the bishop on B3 and there is no threat of uh, taking, but you have to coordinate your pieces and then advance the pawn, but it's not so easy. The rook is very mobile, so maybe I never had this uh, with white. Well, I mean, with uh, the two bishops, but uh, I assume it's not easy. It's well, when we saw that it arise this position with two bishop and the pawn, we said uh, you were convinced and you were completely right in that, that the position is uh, absolutely winning. But when you have to convert your victory from a winning position with a theoretical position, of course, when you're entering to the sixth hour of play, it is something uh, very, very difficult. And also here, I'm sure, Bulmaga knew exactly that it's not so easy to win because you have to watch out. And of course, from the pawn on a2, it's still very far away from queening on a8. Yes, because uh, if they say winning, winning in 127 moves, it's not like uh, there is the 50 move rule. Because if you play a3 or a4, it's already, it starts again. So um, it's still something realistic. Yes, and after a4, the reason is that it was becoming a draw so fast because the black played rook a3, and after bishop e1, the easy solution, rook a2, king d1, rook c2, and it's a dead draw because already black can reach to back, going back to a8, and the white bishop is on black square, so this is a draw. Well, she made it a bit simpler with bishop e1, but anyway, uh, let's say because uh, it allowed the pinning move. But anyway, even if, if she goes rook, uh, bishop d1, then rook, uh, rook a1. Well, probably white, black is just chasing yes, yes, the bishops. Yes, yes, so, yes. It, so it, it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any difference. Explain, yes. it, was, uh, it was a draw. So this was a fantastic save by Maria because she had a very difficult opening herself because uh, at the move 26 or 27, she was thinking already a lot of time, while the white player, Bumaga, was not spending more than 10, 15 minutes. I think that move 29 was still, uh, uh, was still part of the analysis. I remember, well, we, we, know, uh, we uh, remember that moment. Yeah, you can see the playing hole. There are not many people are still playing, but let's see who are playing there. But let's say... Uh, Let's see what are the results between the ladies. India won against Georgia. If I see correctly, Hampi also won, so it's 3-1. Quite a convincing result for Very. round six. Absolutely. Then uh, Romania, Ukraine, we have... Oh, Lehach won. We, we forgot that there was that game going. Uh, you know the Benoni? Oh, Lehachuan, we, we assumed that was a draw, but uh, it eventually, uh, so, okay. okay Which so, uh, match is that? Uh, the same match, Romania, Ukraine. Ukraine. It was the Benoni, you know, difficult Benoni, then uh, some oh, equal yeah. ending, yes. We this completely forgot, we assumed that that game would end in a draw, and uh, forgot that actually there was, a, it was... Well, that's that, why uh, they won. That's the reason they won, right? Oh no! No, no, so it's, it's, it's two, equal. Two. No, no. Uh, if Pulmaga ah, had won, okay, okay, okay. If she okay, had won, yes. then they would have won the match. Wow! Yes. So Ukraine against Romania, it's two-two. So it's still a good result for Romania. Absolutely. It still remains one of the main surprises of uh, this first Abdul half. Abdul Malik made a draw, draw, and then uh, Azerbaijan won against Kazakhstan. Uh, okay, on the last boards. Yeah, last two we boards. We have a 4-0. So, 
So that's where we see on the screen Romania, Ukraine 2-2. Okay. Then let's see the other results. Azerbaijan 3-1 against Kazakhstan. In the women's section, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan. Poland won 4-0 against Serbia. This is very seldomly happens something like that in round six. It's almost, Impossible. I'm not sure I, I heard something like this because there are big clashes already. Okay, so this was 4-0. Netherlands against France, 3-1. That's a good score. Also a clear result. Very good score. Israel beat Germany 3-1 on the second and third boards. We have England. They're still playing, and Armenia is leading 3-0, so they won already the match clearly. Let's see what we have. Czech Republic against India 2 in the women's section. It's 2-2. And let's see further. Hungary lost to Vietnam. This is an unfortunate match for the Hungarian ladies. And Bulgaria is leading against Peru 2-1. Still one to go. Let's see what we have still in the open section. Let's see those results as well. And uh, in the open section, most of the top games has been finished. But there is, I think, I think there is only one game running, which I try to find. Do you see, Mihail? I, I, which, uh, which I am game? Uh, searching for it. Is still playing because I'm somehow. Scrolling here. Aha, Italy. Okay, so with uh, Germany, there is still a game going on. So again, Germany is. Germany, Italy, yes, it's written that um, yeah. it's well, over, but which game is on? Ah, the Queen. Okay, so the we qu see now the results on the screen. Netherlands, Georgia, two and a half, one and a half. Anish won a very convincing game. Then England, Austria, 2-2. Switzerland lost to France on board four. India, three, crushed Lithuania, we can say, because three and a half half is a fantastic result in round six. Usually, it's very difficult to score such a huge number of points in a Especially match. Especially against a reasonably strong team. Exactly. Peru won against Croatia. Then let's see further. Kazakhstan won against Czech Republic. Navarre is playing pretty well, but on the first board he was able to make a draw only, and then on the second, third, fourth board, Kazakhstan was better. Two and a half, one and a half. Philippines against Israel, 2-2. Two, two. Two decisive games, and Australia beat Norway. Oh, my God. Even though Carlson won again with black? Well, it seems it's, uh, it's not going the Norway way. The, the reason they came here, it's not happening. Maybe after the tonight's Bermuda party, it will be different. I don't know. Let's see further. Slovakia lost to Azerbaijan. There was a big score by Azerbaijan, 3-1. And let's see further. Let's see, they are still playing. But uh, maybe we can have a closer look at that. To identify, identify the. Let's see, it's a. Swan, Swan again. No, now, now it's correct. Uh, Svane against. Uh, Lodic against Svane. So, oh, Lodic is uh, playing for a win, no? It's a queen. Uh, Ending. So there is still is a chance for the Italians to equalize. So we have the position which is still running the game. They are having 10 minutes for black and 11 for the white side. Well, this is a tough end game. We can be here for another two hours. <laughs> if they and, and, and Bulmaga and uh, Maria Muzjuk are not here to accompany them. 
because there were there seemed to be set off for a very long game too. Well, exactly. It, it, it ended somehow abruptly. Exactly. Probably they are already maybe the last one. Though I think in the in the women's section we have uh, still some games running over there, which uh, we can take a look. But it's already more. But I see that also the ladies finished their game. There is one or two game is still going on right there. But let's stay here to see this end game. Objectively, what is this? It should be a completely draw, isn't it? Yes, the king is well placed. In the somewhere B2, there, it, A1, it has somewhere to stay here. somewhere there. Yes. Maybe we can follow the. Ah, okay. You mean the our table base? What it says because I believe that it's uh, it's very drawish, and um, just ask them not to move for. Uh, there is a good chance that half a minute. Uh, will be also a draw. Of course it's possible to try and, and I would do it the same that you will be playing, 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 going around with the king, queen and so it is white to move, yes. White to move, yes. It's uh, queen c four was the last move oh, okay. and now it's white to move. So it's a draw. But we can follow move by move to because of course it's not easy to um, to analyze it uh, while the game is on. So we have to resort to the table bases. Yes, the problem of uh, whether the king should stay is uh, quite common in these uh, kind of endings. Uh, meaning that it has to stay somewhere far from... So after king h7, let's say, black has no check. What is his move? Queen d3 or queen c2? So you want to go king h7. What puzzles me is that even a move like uh, queen a4 is a draw. And queen what is the idea of no. g7? No, I mean, I mean, even queen a4 is a draw, so uh, it's not that it's written so much. g7, and now you have to go queen c2, okay, that's obvious. Queen c2, check. And after king h6? Uh, king h6 we want to go. Queen h2, I guess. Okay. King h6, queen d2, queen h2. Yeah, king g6. So, queen h2, king g6, queen g2, for instance. We have some update on the position. Okay. I think they made some moves. Oops. See queen c4. Oh, I see on the board. I see different position then. It is also useful to know that if we shift the position to the left by one file to the left, it's a win. If it would be f7. Yes, because the king has more space uh, somehow. So I see we had some moves played. Oh, do we? Okay, uh, I, I don't see them on... Uh... Then we have a closer look of the game. Then we see that the pawn okay, is standing okay. already on G7, oh. as far as I see. Uh -huh, no update on um, here, okay. So the king is on H7 already. Let's see, king so on B1. King on... Okay, king on b1. I don't see exactly what has happened. Or on so g7, so the queen is... we can follow it on I the think screen only. The queen is on, on uh, c7, is it? Yes, c7, the, the black queen is on... Black queen on c7. Where is the white the queen? The white queen on e6. And the black king on b1 standing. Who is to move? And it's uh, white to move. It's a win in 38. Wow. If it is the position. Well, Actually, almost anything, everything wins. Queen e4, um, 
is the favorite the shortest king h7 let's say king b1 i don't know exactly how the game went but okay we are just trying to put the position what we have and now queen e4 six but it's white to move ah, it was white to move and he played the uh, queen e4 no queen e4 is winning is one of the wins but he played queen e4 ah, he played queen e4 okay so we, we can So this is the position we see on the board. Okay, so... Um, Probably King A1 will happen on the board. King A2 This is wants. so difficult, so difficult to hold of a course. position like this. And, and you can't blame humans not to make a draw in this position. It's almost impossible with this time control. You know that you're going down in time, and uh, eventually you're going to have only seconds. But it's, you know, the problem is and that... And you can play for endless. Now you don't win with a king move. You have, still have to prepare it. So, uh, what is it, queen, queen f5? Queen, there are several queen moves. Queen d4 is uh, the shortest well, queen, let's say. We did talk about it, how important it is for a queen to make it centralized, how it can be dominating the whole board and how useful it can be. But it's interesting that queen d4 is one of the yes, okay. best moves. Queen d4 defends the pawn and prepares the king's evacuation. And so I assume it will that be the, coming back, the, uh, right? The king is going to attack... To h1. King comes to h1. To, to h1 is the plan, yes. To h1 or to, a, to the a file? Maybe to h1, no? I would go to h1, to h1. because on, uh, on a2 yes. the king will yes, receive yes. some at, queen at, g1 at some and at, queen g2. Yes, at some point it will be uh, like this, yes, okay. So what do we see here? Queen e... But queen d4 is the best way to prepare it. But he did not play queen d4. He played? Or he did. The queen is queen on the d5, king a1. Aha, uh -huh, okay. So maybe now queen d4. I think uh, it makes no big difference. So king b1 he made, uh, he played? King a1. Ah, king a1. King a1 is there. So why this thinking? So queen d4, okay, now queen d4 um, is the same thing, you know. Yeah, you have to defend the pawn. Um, But he went, he went king g6, which draws. Why didn't he? No, because oh. def defending the pawn is something. Sorry uh, about that. Okay, so we are back here. King a2, queen d5, king a1, right? And now he went, uh, he came out. But you have to come out with a pawn defended, no? Uh, did he go? King, king g6, g6, I believe, no? Well, it looks. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's already win because f6 no, it's, it's is a draw. The no, no, it's a draw now. Now it's a draw. With queen but g3 okay, only. When we have the table base with us, we know it's a draw. No, when we, you are we at the board, we know, have you even understood what queen d4 means. But during the game, nobody. You have to. No, but actually, this is something that we should remember and know, right? That what are the winning patterns once. Yes. You yes. win. The, you have the winning position, mm -hmm. at least to know that what are you playing for, right? Yes. Because, uh, well, still it's extremely difficult to make a draw here, just because objectively it is a draw. It is. Queen G3, but Queen G3 is an obvious move. The only draw move. I think that's. Uh, and he played Queen G3, no? Queen G3 the queen is on is the there. board. Yes. Yes. I remember when I was a kid, this is what I knew. Okay, if you want to make a draw, and of course you, you try to make a draw in this position with the G pawn, you put your king on A1, A2 somewhere, completely in the corner, and that's the only way to make a draw. But of course it's by far not so easy to know only the fact that you have to put your king on A1 or A2. Yeah. King F6, Queen F4. Which is still a draw. This will be a miracle if black is keeping the draw. But maybe now it's getting easier, no? And uh, maybe we can check what is actually the situation match-wise between plus Germany one, and Italy. One, uh, the Tennessee pan one. Which means that if uh, this game... Lodic, Lorenzo Lodic means, needs to win to, to level the score. 
Okay, so it is stressful no, quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, it is, it is. If we're going to see from close up the position, where so queen on g4, I think king g6, queen g4, king f7. King but this looks, uh, isn't this winning? Queen f4 still a draw. And queen enough, f4, enough well, okay, there is no other check, so it is no. not, <laughs> not yeah. difficult to find it. Yeah. Well, it is extremely stressful for the players as it will decide what will be the final result in this match between Germany and Italy. Italy. It means a lot because at this stage, of course, it does matter a lot whether your uh, Germany, if they win, they have 10 points. And basically with 10 points, you are in the third league of points because Armenia is leading with 12 points. Six matches they won, so they have 100% full score. India, no, sorry, I'm sorry. Armenia is with 12, so they are leading. While USA with 11 points, they are number two. And after that, we have on the third pl place together several teams like Uzbekistan, India, three Indian one, teams, three Indian teams <laughs> Cuba, Serbia, the Netherlands, and, uh, and then France also, Kazakhstan also has 10 points. So, of course, it makes a huge difference. Every half a point you drop as a team, it makes more and more difference in the final uh, in the standings after round six and then of course the way we are progressing in the Olympiad of course every half a point counts the double Queen f4 King e8 we have on the board so black is going to play Queen b8 I guess and I guessed it correctly I guess it's still it's still a draw. draw yes so white is going to play King e7 I believe and uh, I'm afraid yes. for white, probably he cannot escape fro with the king. Because the pawn is not defended, he cannot go anywhere. No, at least we learned something. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, the reason we were talking be previously, to have the queen on the Central e4. and defending the pawn. Defending the pawn, so the king can come back to h1. I'm not sure, maybe we, uh, we should, I don't know whether, is it winning that the king goes back to h1? That, that's really uh, the win? Do you want me to abandon this uh, and then later you tell me what happens, yes? Uh, in this game, so let's say, no, oh, not, this is... Maybe you can just open another tab. Queen b8, I already king ro e7. Ro it, it now, okay. So... Uh, king e7. Well, of course, uh, well, white has only two minutes left. Yes, indeed, uh, I have a position with the king on h1 and the uh, black queen on g5. And that's uh, winning. With the queen, yes, and yeah. uh, it's, uh, that's the place to go, h1. Okay, now hold on, because I try to get back my position. Queen f4, king e7, queen c7. So this is what we have right now. So the king is on e7, the queen is on d7. And the on d5. Now queen d7 played. Okay, and the king is on a1. So it is black to move. And it's a draw. Well, the time is very tense. White is under a minute. Black has 2 minutes and 15 seconds. So it is a nerve-wracking finish for the teams between Germany and Italy. Yeah, now you cannot escape so well. King f8. Queen f6 check? No. Probably Queen f4, right? Many. Queen f6 is one of the draws. Queen f6 is going to be in his hand. Though I'm not sure after that he's going to f4, be. No, queen he f4. Can, he can, I think uh, Queen f4. Yes, Queen f4. Which yeah, is to correct. have a little uh, more distance. The amplitude. And after the King g8. Back. So after King g8, Queen c4 would be there to make. 
Now, chess is simple after uh, they explain it to you, no? I mean, this queen d4 and king h1. Yeah, but actually I knew it by chance. No, the king h1, yes, yeah, you know, king but, H1. But, but queen d4, yeah. uh, okay, P probably yeah. you think, you come up with it. Uh, no, after you told queen d4, yes, it yes, was, yes, uh, yes. I got it, y that yes. it's on the second rank, yes. which has to be winning. Okay, but uh, how many thousands of hours uh, have you invested in... Uh, end games. Yeah. Also, I was look, looking uh, quite uh, enough of uh, queen endings, but of course that was not the ending I worked most. No, it's it's also for me. I mean, I know a lot of about rook, about knight, bishop endings. Um, uh, with um, pawn endings, okay, I know. Uh, King G8. Yes. But with queen endings, yes. And we are reaching out to move 100 just now after King G8. It's funny that even King B1 is now a draw. Because well, that is not going to be the move what Black no, is playing. No, the problem is that uh, White doesn't have Queen D4. Yeah. The centralizing move Queen D4. No, just as a curiosity. Yeah, but it's interesting, for example, that this is something you can remember, right? That if Black White key pawn is on G7, you just have to put your king on the corner, mm -hmm. and you have to make sure to avoid that the White Queen can centralize yes. and defend it the on pawn. G7. Queen C4. Move 100, King h7, black has 2 minutes and 38 seconds, white has less than a minute. Now black has to think how to continue, whether is he going to be playing queen c2 check Correct. or queen h4. Correct. Also Both are queen. draw, right? And queen e4 too. And queen e4. So all the checks are drawn, but he cannot know this. And he goes queen h4. It goes by intuition the way you play. The center is blacks, and uh, he's uh, keeping checking. That is now. Um, yeah, so the center is something that you, you either have or not. Uh, well, it's uh, of course it's uh, it is very difficult to to think that, and black for sure he's not hundred percent that it's a draw, or even if he believes that it's a draw, he's not hundred percent that he's going to make a. Uh, draw himself because of course of because of the short time king h5 so white king tries to get back somewhere to h1 but uh, it's not the to same h1 thing. to e1 i don't know where he's heading to but definitely he's trying to create some chances and i think he's not going to give this up before 100 move 50. Yeah, <laughs> probably. before the end of the, and, the uh, party well, if uh, he wins, probably they make a visit with the Italian team. But you never know because uh, the teams know that they have only one free day and they have to spend it the best way they can to have energy for the final five rounds of the Olympiad. As uh, it is going to get tougher and tougher and it's clear that every little energy is needed in those rounds. King so G4. there are two possible checks, both of them are correct. Queen E4 or Queen E2, both are drawn. So Queen E4, now probably Black feels already that uh, he has great chances to make a draw. The players had already much lower time, but as the players are receiving 30 seconds per move, you can see the clocks that uh, white has a little bit less than two minutes now, black has nearly three minutes because he gained time by giving checks very fast. This is the reason why I'm claiming that we can uh, watch this endgame for quite a bit more until the moment white wants to be trying. And of course we have to see how many checks was given so when was played the g7 move when was the last pawn move we can see that the g7 move was played in uh, 60 well i'm checking when was the when was g7 played it was move 88 So, move to uh, 138 will be a draw. And now it's... it's 
<laughs> Sorry, it's only 105. <laughs> so what do we have there? King h5, queen e5, king h4, and now black is hesitating where to give a check because he has an option to give a check. e4, f6, f4, h2. Suddenly, quite suddenly, queen, queen b8 is also a draw. I'm not saying that this will be the move. No, that will be not the move. By the way, it's very unexpected because after queen b8, queen d4 is possible. So why is it a draw? Mm. Okay, so queen b8. Mm. King sorry, h5, sorry. king That was my five. mistake, no. Queen b8 loses, yes. King uh, h4, queen e1. And then white is hesitating where to go. White has less and less chances because, of course, the more he's just going around with his king, black is chasing with the checks. I mean, for white, it would be important to have some strategy because otherwise black is going to be playing and giving the right checks. Like now, I believe queen e2 would be losing, right? Because no, of queen g4. Or no, is it queen, still queen a draw? Is the draw. Because queen g4 is probably not... Uh, not the right square for not, the queen. Um, central enough. But so probably he will avoid that. Queen e5 or... After. Even queen a5, which doesn't look so natural. Uh, is no, not at all. Queen. I think they are showing moves. Ah, no, he please. says that queen e5 is going to be the third... Ah, repetition. Repetition. Ah. So the clock is stopped because at this point the arbiter comes and they are checking whether is it really threefold repetition. <coughs> is it? But it means that probably it was uh, at some point uh, in different stages of the game. Yes, yes. You know, I would be surprised. I don't remember that we had When I saw this. the finger, uh, I thought it was already analysis. But of course, it's not. And I remember the funny situation. I played some team uh, games uh, in France uh, with my friend's team, the second league. And um, the match was going, and um, at some point, my teammate, the grandmaster, uh, he asked somebody how the situation is, and he knew that uh, on a certain board there, there had been a draw. He ended up the playing hall, he saw the guys sitting, and uh, he said, okay, they are analyzing. And then he sees a bomb break, and then he suggests a move. And it turned out that the game was on. <laughs> oh. And okay, he, he apologized, and actually the move, was it? Okay, it seems like it's not a threefold repetition. Sorry to interrupt. So he gets some uh, some penalties. It's strange because actually, if once it's rejected, then the other player should get two minutes. Yes, but is it so uh, bad? No, but I don't see the arbiter doing this uh, action. Ah, okay, so, it was, so it, was. it was, and uh, okay, so it means that uh, let's see the final results, just the top boards, and then let's see the standings. So the standing is, Armenia is leading 12 points with a full score, even though Sargisyan lost against the great talent of Gukesh, who has a full score on board one, six out of six, but the Armenian team scored two victories, which means that they have lead, they're leading 12 points. India has only 10 points, but before actually USA is number two, so we have Armenia 12, USA 11, uh, and after that quite a few teams, India 1, 2, 3, Uzbekistan, then we have Cuba, Serbia, the Netherlands, Germany. Uh, Germany won now, after all? Yes, Germany they won. won. They won if and won. then yes, France won. also, and Peru, Kazakhstan. 
they are joining with 10 points. If I understand it well, uh, Armenia f- uh, plays tomorrow uh, after tomorrow against the States. Well, so probably there is the one big natural question arising now. Whether Aronian is going to be playing against Armenia or not, this is going to be the big question. Do we know the results of the ladies, how we are standing? Because India, Georgia and Romania was standing on the first spot. So now India... India is leading so with 12 points. They are the only full scorers, right? Yes, because they beat Georgia and Romania made a draw, an equal yeah. match. So they are leading in the women's section. And uh, okay, but uh, I, I assume that Azerbaijan uh, also joined and Poland, no? Uh, well, le- India is leading, so they are extremely happy, I'm sure, before the free day. And we finished just now round six of the Olympiad in Chennai, India. Tonight, the players may go to visit the Bermuda party. And tomorrow, they have a free day. I'm sure many of the players will have time to visit around the area, uh, to rest, to enjoy the nice food, the nice hotels they have, and recharge their batteries for the last five rounds. Thank you for being with us, watching, and please Share your thoughts, your questions, and uh, which game do you like the best from round six on hashtag Best Chess Olympiad 2022. Thank you very much. Thank you, and goodbye. Goodbye. See you day after tomorrow. Happy Bermuda party. Inspiring safety record, strong balance sheet, world class resource assets, groundbreaking innovation, steady and sustainable contribution to nation's social, economical, and environmental development. NLCIL Navaratna CPSE under the administrative control of Ministry of Coal, Government of India, a corporate with a human nature, creating wealth for the well being. Welcome everybody. My name is Jan Nipomnishi, former world chess champion. Are starting a new course here for Chessable, a very special Chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot.